you know, we're Gangites, and Gangites, my father's tough gong. So we are his children, we're Gangites, you know? <laughs> we follow after our dad. When we come to Jamaica, you just feel like this energy, you know? Get this special energy where you walk a certain way, you talk a certain way, you live a certain way, and you just do things different here, you know what I mean? And everything's always iron, everything's always good. You, know, you feel at home here, you feel comfortable within yourself, you, you're happy, you know, you smile when you see people, it's like in the morning time, you're smiling, you wake up smiling here, you know? So Jamaica is just filled with light and energy, and it's like the, the place where the elements matter most and the material things, you know? The fresh air, you know, the ocean, the people, the, the food, you know, the, the love that people put into things they do here. It's just beautiful that you get a chance to taste that. And when I'm here, the minute I step off the plane, it's in the air, it's in the atmosphere. It's like Jamaica, you can't, I mean, <laughs> it's the biggest smile I make. <laughs> when I step off the plane, it's like I feel Jamaica right then and there. As I'm landing in Kingston, let's get acquainted with one of my friends, Marlon. He's been a part of my extended family for over 30 years, and we usually roll together when I come back home to Jamaica. Yeah, my name is Marlon Stewart again, and they call me the artist M, because I'm also a recording artist and songwriter, music producer. I also run a tour company in Kingston called Vibes and Tours. Going around Jamaica is what I do, I like to do, you know? Well, Ron Marley is a good friend of mine. Known him some 30 odd years. Real cool guy. We've been friends since, you know what I mean? I'm actually looking forward to meeting new people in Jamaica because, you know, you can't know everyone. And I'm told that I'll be seeing some places that I haven't seen before, which will be hard, but um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Eating food, meeting the people, experiencing new places in our wonderful island, Jamaica, you know? It's the most fabulous place for you to visit in the Caribbean. Everywhere has sea and sand, but our people are second to none. Well, right now we're, we're on our way to the Norman Manley International Airport to pick up Brother Rowan, you know? We're on the Palisades pit. After I pick up Rowan, we're gonna head up to the villa up in Skyline Drive. He and I have this ongoing feud about my driving and his driving and who is the better driver and you know you're gonna hear a lot about that driving abilities. We're approaching now my Manly International Airport now, final run, pick up my bridge in Rowan. Can't wait to see him. It's been a while, you know? It's gonna be big fun. Yeah! <laughs> I just touched down. I'm gonna feel good already. Rastafari. Come on, yeah. we'll go before them park him, yeah, and you know them stay with the sitting. Ah, his majesty. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we are trench down and we are seeing um, I'm gonna show them bread. Man, Wonder what he's bringing. Trench down by. Yeah. Bless, bless. <laughs> Jamaica, Jamaica, welcome to Jam Rock. The place you love to be, our home. Rastafari. <laughs> Thank you, Marlon, for picking me up. Hope your, hope your driving skills are up to par again. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jamaica, Jamaica. And yeah, this is what's like in Jamaica. You know, we get escorted in. <laughs> Kingston is the capital and the biggest city of Jamaica. Our beautiful island is divided into 14 parishes, like counties, and Kingston is located on the southeastern coast in St. Andrew Parish. So what's the deal with these bikers? This is part of Jamaica bike life. Bike life is a part of Jamaican culture. That feeling you get while riding our bikes under the sun is so unique. These are sizzlers bikers. You get together, practice stunts, listen to music, and have fun. You get to see more of that tonight. Pure vibes. If 
thanks to the Almighty for giving us a place like Jamaica where we can come and feel at home, wherever we touch down. This is a part of the live and the life of Jamaica, you know, and the people that love this culture and all the culture, the people that make up the kind of this country, the people that make this country breathe, you know. It's these people who are people, we people. The energy you get from our people when you walk through the streets, it's so powerful. Even when it's raining, like right now. <laughs> Drive into Skyline Drive on Kingston Hike to the Reggae Legends Villa where my big sister Sadella and I used to live. The villa will be our home for this journey. Yeah. Oh, the sweet home, baby. Yeah. Uh, we talk about living in uh, paradise. This is Jamaica. This is what Jamaica is all about. Paradise, beauty, astonishing. Uh, oh, you still got a lot more energy? Gonna go off anything? <laughs> okay, now that we have reached the villa and you got to know Marlon. It's time for I to introduce you to the rest of the crew that's going to be rolling with me on this trip, starting with my spiritual brother. A lot of people know Mr. Marley as, you know, Bob Marley's son. A lot of people know Mr. Marley as, you know, an athlete. A lot of people know him as an entrepreneur. For myself, as a humanitarian, I know Mr. Marley us traveling Ethiopia, living there for six months. We're traveling together, we're on a pilgrimage together. And while I'm here, you know, I'm known as Holy Swag, Joseph I, fashion king, fashion god. You know, your greatest stylist will tell you, you know. So when it comes to traveling, you know, make sure that the royal attire and things are laid out. It's not just fashion, it's lifestyle. Then cornbread, often in the shadows, but always here to make sure things are airy. He run through his brothers. Playing football is, is like one of the roughest Marley you can ever think of. Rugged. <laughs> Ron is a bit calmer than back in the days, but he's a very jovial person. Real jokeify, give a lot of trouble, spanking the head back, stuff like that. Yeah, that's Ron, real jovial person, but nice person. Last but not least, my brother from Wild the seaside, man. Wildman. Yeah, man of the Wildman from Wildland, that is I, man. In case I never heard of I, man, well, yeah, you see, Ron, I'm a dad from Lang, from your liquor one, you see it? Mm -hmm. As a youth growing up on the beach, yeah, we call it Bob Marley Beach, you see? Just through the history of the whole beach, Gabby Dredd, the man that carry Bob Marley come off on the beach, you see it? Violence. Yeah, from Trench Town, you know? Yeah. We are through the history, you know? We get the beach that name there, Bob Marley Beach, you see? It? This is the dream team, Lion Order. You'll also meet my good friend Roger Chang oh, brother, later on brother. in the show. Best of love, brother. Good to see you. So y'all ready? Yeah. yeah. This journey is going to be a beautiful journey, you know? We get to see some beautiful people, invite ones into our lives that we have never known before, and really try and um, showcase the island, you know what I mean, to the rest of the world. And just from East Coast to West Coast, North and South, we get a beautiful perspective of what the future of Jamaica shall be. You'll also get to know Viva along the road. He's the Ital chef and the juice man, and he's been around the family for many years. Yeah, we got steam fish here, natural steam fish that's called over the sea, fresh doctor fish, snapper, and parrot. So we have three different oil within the fish, because it's just seasoned and water. No oil, no butter. Scallion thyme, onion, garlic, okra, you don't know, okra slime, and cucumber makes another energy within the juice for the fish. I don't create sickness within myself. I just keep healthy and strong. But that's the way to go. Oh, just get myself together, you know, get settled at home. <laughs> One of the most important things that we do when we come to Jamaica, we have to go to 56 Hope Road, my dad's home, you know? That's where we all raised us, you know what I mean? And today is a special event celebrating Smile Jamaica. So we're just looking forward to that. Yeah. Smile Jamaica is um, very special to us because it's a concert that my father performed two days after being shot. When he was shot in the shoulder, when they tried to assassinate him, you know, he went up to stay in the Strawberry Hills. He came down and pe performed in front of 80,000 people with still the bullet lodged in his arm. And just the day after that, he went into exile to London, and that's where he started to make songs like Could You Be Love, Is This Love, because my father wanted to change the temperament. Things were getting too vile, and he wanted to calm the people down. And, you know, we look up to our father because he was so strong, even going through things that meant so much to himself, 
Jamaica and the people, you know. He didn't want to let the people down, so he performed anyway. So we as his children, we just keep to keep that spirit alive, and we always celebrate on this day. You know, if you know what the lion represents, you know, <laughs> nothing can get in the lion's way. When we set our mind to do something, we're going to do it. And my father, he instilled that spirit in us. 56 Hope Road is our home, and we step into that place. It's like a mecca to us as his children. So we just love it there, you know. And now it's the Bar Mali Museum, and today we're going to go and celebrate. After the break, taking you where it all began, trench down. We're back in Kingston, and I'm taking you to the first stop of our journey, where everything started, the birthplace of reggae, Trenchtown. Trenchtown Rocky. Hey guys, how are you going, brother? I'm meeting my brother Kimani there. Trenchtown. And we're taking you to where my father yeah, used to live. So, yeah, live and direct, fully, fully, fully colored. We're in Trenchtown. This is the Trenchtown experience. There's 1st Street, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street, 5th Street, 6th Street, 7th Street, and Love Street. <laughs> so we're in Trenchtown. This is where all the things began, you know what I mean? This is our father's place. This is where Ziggy, Ziggy, our older brother, is born here, so. Welcome to the Trenchtown Culture Yard, home of Jamaica's legacies. Home of Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs> home of Jamaica's legacy. Come on. This was one of the original government yards. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what does that mean when you say government yard? Government yard, because the government owned the land. Owned the land. The government yeah. built the town, and the people had was to pay rent to the government. And it is also what they call the tenement yard. T tenement yard. A tenement yard is a big space, consists of many rooms. For this yard, it has 16. Many families, different 16 families. 16 rooms, 16 different families. 16 rooms, 16, 16 different, different families. families. The rooms were very expensive. It was 12 shillings monthly. 12 shillings monthly. Around what year was that? And this was 1940. 1940, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh. Persons were overwhelmed to come and live here. See. Si. Right, even Mother Booker when I, she came. Yeah, so this is your grandma come first? Right. Went, not this year, she went to Second Street. Second Street? Yeah. OK. So, but oh. your dad came here because of Mr. Ford. Mr. Ford. Tata. Tata. Vincent Ford, AKA Tata, used to run a little soup shop in Trenchtown. He was a close friend of my father and helped the music and helped people to rise from the ghetto. Uh, That's how he ended up in this yard. Yeah, see. So he ended up here when he came back from, um, his mom went to Delaware. She yes. sent from, spent four months in Delaware, he came back. When he came, the room that he had on Second Street was already taken. Mm -hmm. So that's when Tata oh, gave him he, the kitchen. We were over by his mother's yard was yeah. already taken. <laughs> yeah, so Tata gave him the kitchen Give right him here. the kitchen? The kitchen. See there. <laughs> I don't know Tata did that. What are thoughts? That was Bob's first little room for himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this is the kitchen. Rastafari. And Ooh. the bed we have in there was given to Bob by Mr. Ford, Tata. Wow. That's the original bed as well. It now have much, much rest, but we tried to keep I. it. This is actually my first time, I mean, in this room when it was set up like the original way. Wow, amazing. So we're still trying to keep it. You can see the chimney is up there, the counter is there. Yeah. Right, so this is the kitchen where Ziggy was conceived. <laughs> we, we got that from yeah. Miss Rita. Yeah, well, she knows. She told us that. <laughs> more around, more around, yeah, you know. <laughs> right. So many things happen in this kitchen. <laughs> many things. <laughs> Lots of music. Lots of things happen in the kitchen. Lots of music was made in that kitchen. So this is the bus, and the reason why it is like this, just to say, but want it to remain the same. This is what the wheelers drove around right. uh, Jamaica. Yeah, and he gave it to so many persons at it. Yeah, he actually gave it to Tata. Oh, this is this is original. Original, live and let others live. Live and, and let, let others, others live. live. You must. And the other part is saying, catch the knowledge. Catch the, the knowledge. knowledge. Rastafari. <laughs> so that's the reason why we have to keep it like this for all of these. Oh, right, just Yeah, it's a message. Yeah, it's a truthful, message. Truthful, truthful. And the yard is authentic, so See, we have to keep the bus no. authentic. Wow. This is what Bob Marley learned from. Oh. And Mr. Ford was a person that taught him. Taught, taught. taught, taught this taught is the guitar? Him. Yeah, so this is it. Oh, wow. Oh, really? What a foremost prized position that we hold. Oh, beautiful. Must be alarm on this door somewhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's protected by the people. I I true true. Give thanks. Oh, so this is the bus. Oh, that's the bus there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bus. And those photos are photos of Bob back in 1972 around the back of this yard. I kinda I kinda have the same type of I'm, I'm, give me another few months. 
I'm gonna have same like, ear. Yeah, I'm gonna have like the same setup. Watch. Yeah. <laughs> The government yards were built in clusters around central courtyards with shared facilities. Even though the rooms were small, these spaces were designed so that people from the yard could gather as one to share their love, strength, and knowledge. Giving birth to many talents, social activists, amazing musicians, and birth in the reggae along the way. <laughs> Just get off the planes. Good to see you, though. always here, man. You know what? Yeah, yeah, I come to Jamaica, yeah. Jenstown, and a nice little stop in. And you're there too? Oh, you mean? Oh, oh we. Think good? Oh, that's all right. Oh, yeah. Trenchtown is a must see when you visit Jamaica and an inevitable step to understand my father's and Reggae's humble beginnings. This unique community will forever stay close to our heart, and I am working closely with the people living here, developing charities and programs for the youth to give back and uplift Trenchtown. Coming up, I'm taking you to 56 Hope Road. Easy, simple thing, you know. After visiting Trenchtown with my brother Kimani, yeah. I'm taking you to Bob Marley Museum at 56 Hope Road, the first ever night tour, and to celebrate Smile Jamaica. tour here at the Bob Marley Museum at 56 Hope Road. Give it up one more time for them, my man. <laughs> so I want to tell you a little story, carry on a journey about a survivor, a man born February the 6th, 1945 in Nine Miles, St. Anne. Moved to Trenchtown at the age of 10, and it was there in Trenchtown that he developed a passion for music, a passion fueled by the voices and the stories in of the community in Trench Town. And then we know him to be who? Bob Marley. On the left, sir. Mr. Marley, what's going on? The second information, sir. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? Good? Oh, this is the first night tour? Yes, it is, sir. Is it OK I join you? Not a problem. Yeah. It would be an honor to have you on yeah. this night tour. Beautiful. Let's make our way inside. So nice, the first night tour. How you doing, sir? Where are you from, sir, may I ask? I'm Tunisia. Tunisia, Rastafari. Hi. This used to be my dad's. This room was in the beginning. This was where the operator stood, you know? And then this place, now it's beautiful pictures, but originally we used to have a timetable here of who's going to book the studio, when, what time, what artist, and so on. So this is the original, I would say, the secretary room. Oh, <laughs> please, sorry. I want to take over my job, no, 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 no. No, but this it, is perfect because you're giving the real information. That's fine. About the it's house. OK. That's fine. I please. Have but no give, them your, give them your tour thing. No problem. <laughs> I have no problem if you want to add on a little bit as we go through, all no, right? No. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. <laughs> So as he was saying, this room was once a living room, which has now been remodeled to be the awards room. And then in the back right here is his triple platinum award for his legendary album, Legend. <laughs> now, Bob received that award because that Legend album sold over 900,000 copies. But to date, the Legend album has sold over 50 million copies, Ooh. and the numbers are still rising. Now over here we can see a list of all of his albums. The Exodus album released in 1977 is also really big for two special reasons. So one, Time Magazine named this album Album of the Century. <laughs> and if you think it couldn't get any bigger than that, <laughs> BBC gave the title track on this album the title Song of the Millennium. Wow. So Song of the Millennium is no song other than One Love. Exactly. <laughs> Which makes sense, right? Because no matter where you go in the world, everybody knows One Love. Everyone in this room knows One Love, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, pardon the interruption. There's seven brothers. <laughs> And there's two that don't sing. I fall on the two side. <laughs> so please, if you know the song, sing the song. Let, let's support him, right? Can you sing it with us? One love, <laughs> one heart. Let's get together and feel all right. 
<laughs> As I say, singing is not one of my talents. And then in the center right here is his Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, which Bob received in 2001, and his wife Rita Marley collected it on his behalf. And this isn't a replica. What you watch on TV, this is the real thing. So this is probably the closest any of us will come to touching a Grammy, right? I'm going to let Caleb finish the tour and step out of the museum to inaugurate a tribute mural to Mama Rita, made by Charles Baker. When we talk about Mama Rita, we talk about Rita Marley, Bob's wife, I trees, mother of all mothers, and for me especially, a mother representative that always been there for me, has always given me guidance and direction throughout my life. It's a very important event for we as it creates a platform for music where roots and youth are praised together. This evening is also a blessing, allowing us to give back a part of the proceeds of this concert to fund music rooms for schools keeping smiles alive. Now that we give thanks and praises for the Smile Jamaica event, let me show you what a party with the Mali look like. Massive vibes. One big party, girl, me a white pambaka. Two bag of weed, some papers, and grab a make we get high. One build your spliff bonnet and push it into the sky. We get high. We get high. We get high. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, so come follow me. Cause I'm in the girls in my brain. All the time I'm not no more to live. Make them know so we're not starting. And the shot of them, they are both. Give me some beats on me and I'm a sense. And you know me for the plenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me for the plenty. We get high, we get high, yeah, yeah. Ooh, so come follow me. Yeah, nobody trying to leave until we time tonight. No fuss, no fight. We come get high. Ja, Rastafar I. It's a new dawn, a new day. And I'm feeling blessed to share this journey with you. Yesterday, after meeting my friends, I took you to Trenchtown, the birthplace of reggae, and I gave you a quick glimpse of the Bob Marley Museum. This morning, I'm taking you back to 56 Hope Road, my father's house. Yeah, this is 56 Hope Road, my father's house, which is now the Bob Marley Museum. Every time we come to Jamaica, we must come here. So we're going to go see Marie Bruce, who's in charge now, see? Hey, Marie. Hey, Rowan. <laughs> What's happening? Everything as usual. Yeah, yeah? A whole heap. Lovely. Coming here every day is a joy. Yes. It is, it's actually even more than a job. It's a life experience. Sure. And I give thanks for the magic and the opportunity to, to be here. We've known you all our lives, you know. It's not like, um, <laughs> you're not a stranger to us. So for you to be in charge here of our father's home, it's special to us because best friends with my sister growing up. So it's just nice that now as we get older, you're now into the family business and you administrate for us. And this is our home. And we wouldn't want to entrust it with anyone but you because you, we trust you. We love you. You're a sister as well, you know? So Thank we love you. that. So in the first night tour, it reminds me of my father working in the studio okay. at night. They only work at night. When I'm here, it's like the daytime was just office work. But at night is when it comes alive, you know? I just want to be clear that this museum, when it first started out, was actually a living museum. While there was tours going on, my brothers were still using the studio. We were in and out, like, where I'm sitting right now is my dad's favorite spot, one of his favorite spots. He sits everywhere, but at day, we're always sitting here, and tours used to go by and walk through us, you know, because we're in the studio operating. But before it became a museum, this was my dad's base, you know, this was the original Tough Gong. Mm -hmm. So there's office, there's living, there's life, this is the football field. This is where everything happens, all the interviews with my father. Then again, around the back, there's another record shop. Over there was the kitchen. The accounting was on that side. So this is actually my father's first entrepreneurial experience to really bring everything that he ever thought he wanted to do, not just a musician, but as an independent musician that controlled his own destiny, started right here in this house. So, you know, I mean, we just 
figured it would be nice to like open that up and invite people in. So I want people to know that this place is our home and we're truly, truly connected to it. I mean, you know, if it wasn't for Sadella, we would still be living in the house, <laughs> you know, <laughs> while so the tours true. were happening. And of course, she wanted to keep the upkeep and, you know, leave it up to us. <laughs> and it's true. And you know what, Rowan? Even more so than being a museum and an office space and a place of business, this place has an energy that um, it's like holy ground. So people make a mecca when they come here, and you sure. see it in the emotion. I mean, yeah, in the guests that come. We feel it too because, like, like you said, it's a it's for us. It's a spiritual place. Mm -hmm. It's like the only place in Jamaica I know that everything is always copacetic here. It's always calm. There's never any trouble here. If anyone is out in danger, they come here. So this yeah. yard was always that safe keep for everyone in Jamaica. I mean, everyone came through those gates. The good, the bad, the ugly, indifferent, aristocrats, just regular normal people, everyone came through that gate. And they still did up until the time when my brothers really, you know, handed over as really now the Bob Marley Museum. So, I mean, when they, my brothers are in town, it's still that vibe. We had to even take residency next door because we're so attached to the place and break the wall out mm -hmm. so we can just enter through this gate because we're, we're just, we're connected mm -hmm. from day one. So this will just always be home for us. And let's step inside for a very personal tour of our home. Well, you know what? To my recollection, this is the enterprise where everything was, I mean, father's house is family house, but children were never, we, were, we never actually, lived here because we had to go to school. This was more like the, the HQ for the record company. My father's just, this is his headquarters, just was like studio, office, his bedroom, office again. Uh, my dad's an entrepreneur, so it's a live workspace. The children, we never really lived here on the weekends and things would come and play, then you have to go home. But I was one that never went home. <laughs> I would sleep here sometimes. When my father moved into this house from Trenchtown, he brought the ghetto uptown, focusing on uplifting the community by sharing love and knowledge with everyone. There's something too funny about the purpose of this property. Bob was being interviewed by a member of the press, and they asked, you know, how did you come to get the opportunity to buy such a prestigious home in a prestigious neighborhood? And forgive my Jamaican accent, um, lady. I come for bring the ghetto up top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was a profound, a great statement. Well, of course, yeah. you know, my father come from Trenchtown, <laughs> yeah. and then just a block away, there's the King's house, and then Bob is just up the street, so it's <laughs> the two paradigms, you know, here's Bob Molly, Rastafari, and then you have King's house, who's the total the opposite of that, and we come from Trenchtown. So my father says, Bob, how come, how, you, how come now why Rasta man turn uptown man? He says, no, we just bring the ghetto uptown, so <laughs> Rastafari uptown now. <laughs> <laughs> Once I walk in this place, the first thing is you always know your father's up there. You're always, it's like a feeling, it's like, and you always feel that presence. You never, it's your father's house. It's not like I don't come in here and look at all the memorabilia and stuff. No, I come in here and I see the energy go upstairs. I look up there, you see, I see my father laying over the bar on the banister, I see Ziggy up there, I see Steven running through the place. Mama, I see everything, the whole, uh, it's, like it, it, it's like it's still functioning the way I knew it. Not as a museum, but the way I knew it as a kid and throughout life. So it's still a functioning place. The scent hasn't changed. And that scent brings back such vivid memories of our family in this house. Wow. And I give thanks to Marie for keeping them alive. The challenge for me is the balance of modern day technology, preservation of artifacts, Trying to find a balance to keep Bob the memory that Rowan described, but preserve the artifact. So it's a balancing act. It's truly an amazing experience to sit in my office every day and look out the window and see buses and buses of people that come every day from across the world to see this man. It's amazing. And, you know, ever since the Obama visit, that was like a huge tweet to the world. So it's really an honor being here. My father once said that the greatness of a man is not how much wealth he acquires, but in his integrity and his ability to affect those around him positively. He taught us that lesson when we were kids. We were standing at the gate, and the guys that they wash the windscreen wipers, they don't only wash windscreens, they're also acrobats. You know, they come during the weekend, do a lot of flips and stuff. So they came to the gate one Sunday, and Stephen and I was like, you know what? It's not your day today, it's our day. You can't come in. But if you go upstairs, like Marie told you about our father's office, he has a window that you can see directly to the gates. So you open that window, Stephen, 
Rohan, come upstairs. We come upstairs, and he says, um, you see those boys at the gate? Let them in. And he gave us some money, and there's like a little ice cream guy, ice cream biker in the yard. He says, here's some money. Go and buy them ice cream and watch them eat. So we realized, like, oh, come, what kind of, what is that? We realized that our father was trying to tell us that, listen, you're here with me. You're inside the house with me. I open the fridge, you can open the fridge. You have the same access that I have. Father, brother, whatever it is, you're inside. I, that's not my purpose. <laughs> we're, we're, our, our purpose is those people, the ones that don't have. So from a little boy, I tried to comprehend that all throughout my life. And I finally got it, you know, that it's for the, the lesser fortunate, you know, the things that we do. Yes, you provide for your immediate family. You have a house, you have shelter, you have food, you have this. But how much bananas can you eat? How much orange can you have? How much this can you eat, you know? So there's got to be a point when you have to, when you have to reach share and you have you have to be a point when you have so much in abundance that you have to share and that's what father taught us is that for all who is given much is expected off you know let's resume our tour shall we so now, <laughs> this is this is marie our normal people takes the step but my father when he takes a step he you ready for this i watch you now when my father takes these steps he's like this So here's the office, my dad's original desk. <laughs> At one point, this had windows. We have changed it around a little bit. But the tree wasn't so tall. And this is the window my dad, he was like this. <laughs> and at the time, it had like blinds here. Steven, Rohan, come upstairs. <laughs> and for your eyes only, and even though filming is forbidden in the museum, let's take a little peep at the studio. So this is kind of, um, this is top secret, and you know, you only, you can, you can't really film inside, but you know, so this is my dad's side. So, this is where my dad record. If you look at the wall, that's where, this is my where my dad sat right there. This is the studio. This is where he did all this music. The song was made here, <laughs> right? So that's good. No. Coming up, <laughs> Underwater Paradise. Bongo! We're still at Hope Road, and after giving you a private tour of our house and our memories, I could not leave without introducing you to another reggae legend from Trenchtown that have shaped reggae with his hands. Bongo Herman. You talk about Rastafari. When you say Rastafari, you talk about the one, two, which is the Naya Bingi. The Nyabingi is the oldest Rastafari movement. Even though the name comes from a legendary Ugandan Rwandan tribe queen who fought the British Empire, we do not believe in violence and we pledge love to all human beings. The drumming rhythm of our chant became one of the main influence of ska, rocksteady and reggae. So we needed a way to find out how can we translate that to the, the normal population, you know? So we took the Nyabingi and incorporated the Nyabingi into the percussion. So the percussion became a part of all the bands, the wheelers, just every band has a percussion player. If you say percussion, you have to mention Bongo Herman, who is not only a percussionist, but he's a vocalist that plays the drums, not a percussionist, as he likes to call himself. Bongo, make the drums sing now. The funde, the repeater, and the bass. <laughs> so this would be considered the repeater. Repeat it, Bunga. That's the repeater. Now funde. That's the funde. Hold the one, two. Get them drop the bass there. <laughs> yeah, repeater now. Funde. Aye, aye, big up Bonga. 
It's now time to get ready for tonight. As every time I come back home, I invite all my friends, extended family, to a cookout. I can't wait to full joy some fresh Jamaican fish. Since diving is not such my thing, I'm going to stay here and get everything else ready so Black Fire can do the diving part. <laughs> Black Fire is taking you off the coast of Portmore, a bit south of Kingston Airport, where I landed yesterday. Bless the most time, that's the far right. Bless all of those going out on the sea right now. It's a world by itself. Bless the diver. Right on, son. For many people on this island, diving is more than a job, it's a way of life, see it? It's more than my work. You see me? I eat feed me. And I eat feed the people and the land. I will feed off our fish and bread and drink wine and have fun and share the love to each and every one who run us. Like we're black brothers and sisters. Cause it's not oppressor, don't oppressor. Not even black or the white. You see me? Yeah, real Rasta man. Vibration. Dream work, man. The dream work. Yeah. So right now we are gonna make it work. No man is an island, no man stand alone. No. Time to catch some fish, Fire. setting up the rest so stay tuned because after the break it's party time remember when i said that we were so attached to my father's house that we had to take residence next door well this is it the guest house here's something you need to know about myself i'm 60 percent vegan 10 percent raw and 30 percent pescatarian but i only eat fish when i'm here in jamaica and everything needs to be ital rastafari style meaning no processed food there are additives because, as we say, ITAL is vital. Roast, steam, and fine paper. Steam oh. roast. Lime it in some lime water to get it the rawness away. Then we have the seasoning gonna garlic, pepper, fish seasoning, skelly and thyme. Okra, okay. pumpkin, carrot, wow. Irish, plantain, plantain, right, plantain. Cook up in our pot, stew down, stew, throw on the fish and then we roast them. They are come cook for the kingdom. Highly blessed. Bossy, we're there, you know. For sure, man. And when they're done with it, yeah. nice. Nice, this thing. Yeah, I'm mean, the realest chef. The realest. There's a lot of bridges here tonight. Close friends of mine, almost like brothers. I can't introduce you to them all, but don't worry, because you'll meet them later on in the show. I want to set the fish up so we can eat together as brothers. Baby G, got foot to eye. So my brother Kimani is getting pretty inside. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that one, eh? The boggy gun, you see me? Yeah, one special. Yeah. By the next 10 minutes, Ready. You know, Kimani, my brother. Family again. Family. So he. <laughs> uh, this one is a angel. Yeah. Angel. Okay. This is the man who actually fish caught these yeah, fish for us. Fish killer, man. Him tell me. No, no, no. Fish hunter. Fish hunter. All right. Oh my word. Which one? That? Yeah, yeah. It's a market gun. Margaret Grant. Yeah, Margaret Grant. I have to say, these first two days were amazing. The first steps of our journey around the island, my island, 
I wanted to make you understand how everything started and where I came from, and I wanted to give you a taste of our beautiful Jamaica. I look forward to you discovering our culture, our people, our food. Blessed love. Well, as you can imagine, my brother Kamani being around, we could not finish this beautiful day without a family jam. You know what I love about you? You're ever ready. Yeah. You're ever present. Ever ready, ever and present. as my little brother, oh, come on, you know, it's love. As my little bro, you know, yeah. I love your inspiration, you know? I love how you take things from your own experience, yeah, from your own heart, and you deliver this energy. Yeah. You know, because remember, you know, you, Kimani, yeah. you're a lone ranger. <laughs> Yeah, You've yeah. always been a lone yeah, ranger, right. you know. But what we love the most about you, I and I, your older brothers, you know. You return to your community. You take on to the youths. Yeah. You show them a way. Yeah. You show them that there's possibilities that, that they can become more than they are today, you know. Absolutely. You give them a way, and we love that you created Falmon FC, you see? Yeah. <laughs> That's the fun. <laughs> Falmon Football yeah, Club. Yeah. Yeah. And you that, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, see? Yeah, man, so, love that. You remember that? Up and the gunning. Let's keep on jamming because, gunning. you know. Yeah, man, your time, though. Friends, it's the end of this episode, but it's just the beginning of our journey together. And I can't wait to show you more of my country, my people, my culture. So tune in, because you won't want to miss a thing. Just me. We left Kingston and headed north up into the mountains to St. Anne's Parish. Chris was there to greet us, and the first thing he asked me was to take my shoes off. <laughs> Going earthfully calls it, connecting with the land, one with the earth. Going earthful. You and I to go earthful too? Yeah, man. Well, so okay. what I'll do, man, I'll give you a little like this first. Yeah. Just rub it on your foot because okay. your foot might not be used to the rocks. Brotherly love, you know? Yes, I. See how you feel? Feel awesome. Feel awesome. So right now you're tuned into the currents of the earth. Well then. <laughs> as, well, we, as we talk about tuned into the currents of the earth. It's right on point. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Tuned into the currents. So it's like you're plugged in now. Yes. So we're ready to roll? Yeah, man. Marlon. Right, come in. Marlon. <laughs> the session of the Yes, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Welcome. Thank you, respect. Welcome to the barn. I, I don't feel like I don't want to take over everything. <laughs> but I just walked up and got a welcome, a beautiful welcome, you know. What the, what the, Your name is missing. <laughs> Wild man is here. <laughs> Joseph. Okay. Jo Joseph is here. He's, a, he's always in the background filming. As long as you get good pictures, it's all good. <laughs> exactly. And this is Marlon. Marlon. Yes, I met Marlon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Marlon. Bless up again. So, do it, Stush. Yeah. Let's do it, Stush. Let's do it, Stush. Wow. Yeah, I even get the heart. <laughs> wow, well, Stout likes it. Stout loves it. Yeah, Stout, Stout likes, likes it. it. Come on in. Thanks. So we have a couple things.
things today, yes, this is right? Beautiful. Yeah, it's wow. a really great space, isn't it? Chris has been doing quite a lot of different things. Both love wood, yes. right? So he's always trying to do a couple different cutting boards, risers, interesting things for me to use, especially on the table for dining and everything else. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 Love us. Love us. Yes, sir. Our cheers. pleasure. You know what I love about the place? I'm walking around and I feel the sustainability, you know? Christopher was telling me that the water that we're utilizing is yeah. the rainwater. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we have a 34,000 gallon tank and we're all on solar with a backup generator for it because of these kinds of days. But it's nice being off the grid and it's nice not being beholden to anyone. Wow. You amazing. know? Yeah. Let me ask this again. You're fully self-sustained then, off the grid. Mm -hmm. Reservoirs, cisterns, solar panels. Mm -hmm. I don't think many people understand that's a part of sustainability also, yeah. mm -hmm. that you well, can that you can really gather harvest, wa that. harvest yeah, the water. Yeah, there's a guy that has a whole system sure. for harvest. We need that down here. I mean, sure. it's just common sense. And, and I think that's the future of Jamaica. If Jamaica really want to survive, they have to look towards the sustainability movement. It here. was what happened in the Green Revolution, when the end of food was no longer nutritional, it was money. Mm -hmm. Man was not growing something to feed your mind, your body, and your soul. He was growing it because it was an economic mm -hmm. venture, mm -hmm. right? So that means before you even get the food even get to your table, it's been poisoned three times. Yeah. The herbicide that sprays the grass, mm -hmm. the fungicide that's supposed to kill the fungus, the pesticide that's supposed to kill the pest, and then they, they top that off with a synthetic fertilizer. And it doesn't end with iron iron. It runs back into the water. It runs back into the earth and it goes right back up into the oats. So you're not just poisoning. Cycle. It's a cycle of death, my brother. Mm -hmm. Every time we say we plant a seed, it's an act of revolution. Every time you harvest rainwater, it's an act of revolution. Mm -hmm. Every time you teach somebody something they don't know that can equip them to deal with what's going on around us, because make sure you have a BS in Okada. I'll cut off the food supply. Remember? Speaking of food, mm. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about what we have here. Yes, ma'am. These are mingling plates. Your glass fits into the slot. <laughs> Very stush. Yes. Oh. Roy, many you times, laugh at me, but many times. many times you go to a party and, and you can't find no, and you food. have to find some place <laughs> to put down your plate so you can't eat. And you yeah. spill your wine or your cigarette. Right, juice, and, uh, right. They're fabulous, I've right? never, <laughs> ever seen this in my life. <laughs> People love them. Magical. People love them. People that's, love that's them. Stush. That's yeah, man. <laughs> that's what it's all about. You know what? Is that made in Jamaica? It is. Wow. These are actually done by a friend of ours who comes down and does pottery. She did a little bit with David Pinto. It's inspiring to see Chris and Lisa living by their own rules. We really do try to be sustainable, local, all of those things in food preparation. Sometimes you can't always. So we've kind of made this commitment not to eat oily food, anything brought in via diesel. This is a plantain ceviche. Yes. So you know like when you do a ceviche for fish? Yes. And it's raw. So this plantain is raw, same way. And it has a little sweet red pepper, and then it has lime, salt. So it's almost like the plantain is cooked in the lime and salt. So it sort of becomes a little softer, but it's really bright. It's very citrusy. It's great with so many things. Even on its own, it's really great. So this is blow fire in this blow pot fire. here. Blow fire is our pepper sauce that we make. Farm fresh green peppers. It has coconut oil and cider vinegar. It also has garlic and ginger, and it has a little touch of cilantro as well for flavor. And it has a little cracked pepper and pink salt, and it is blended down. So it's almost like a pepper pesto. This next one is also something we make. It's called tomato marmalade. And it's made from tomatoes with civil orange and sweet orange and a little bit of lime juice. It has brown sugar. It's stewed down to where it sort of like comes together and all the flavors kind of marry up and then it gets a little fresh basil swirled on the inside. This is like ketchup stushed up to <laughs> tent volume. It's just really nice. Yeah. Stushed yeah. real cherry tomatoes all yeah. cooked down and then yeah. that hint of um, fresh basil. Mm -hmm. I mean, fresh herbs. Just take your food to another level. Whole sure. nother level. Yes. We use it right here on farm because we grow the fresh herbs. Yes. So that's the whole point. When you come to a farm to table experience, the experience is really <laughs> all about from farm sure, to right. table, right? <laughs> what Rowan right. knows all about that. Yes, he does. Sure. <laughs> from, from beans right? to jar. Yes. 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 Bean to cup. Bean to cup. Bean to cup. Yes. Yeah. Right. You guys know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I overdo.
overdosed on this the first time she made it. Oh, yeah. it, was just, it was too good. It was too good. Man, too if good. only you guys could <laughs> smell this food. Now it's my turn to dig in. You got it good. <laughs> I am. I say that every day. I'm grateful. No, man. But not everyone yeah. has a. As a mistush, you know? <laughs> no, no. So that part is Cause definitely the, big. Because the stush part is where it becomes a delicacy now. Definitely. But it starts with an appreciation for food. Mm -hmm. Good food, good flavors. He's got to be the luckiest human being. <laughs> 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 no, man, I'm listening, but my God. <laughs> wow. Nice. Give thanks. Good Lord. I mean. I'm glad you enjoy it, man. Uh, and fresh ingredients is our next thing. Right, so you get a chance to do a little farming, mm -hmm. and then we'll do a little cooking, Perfect. and then we'll sit down and eat. Oh my gosh, Thanks. Thanks. such a special dish. That's the word. Coming up, Chris and I are going to work the land a little, followed by Miss Dush showing I a thing or two in the kitchen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stushing the bush is a special place, but to get the full experience, you need to get your hands dirty a little. So Chris and I went to do a little planting, a little reaping, and we'll do a little tasting along the way. That is rosemary. Rosemary, yeah. So besides the fact that it's a herb you can use in cooking, mm -hmm. rosemary, they call it rose memory. Rose memory. Because it's good for you. Memory. Memory. And all them say all you have to do is just put a stick of it behind your ear. Okay. Well, we're going to have to do that. Total recall. Oh, Smell really? Nice. Things you don't even want to remember, you start remembering. Oh! oh. So, I, all, I, right. I, I, oh. all right. You know what it was? The rocks. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Don't blame me because in New York, I wouldn't want to walk around those streets barefoot. barefoot. No. Wow. wow. Oh, man, I love this, man. Beauty, man. We call out here, so full sun. Full sun. I get the yeah. full sun right now. Yeah, man. It's either early in the day or early in the evening. All right. This is another bush. For that same purpose, it's one named Strongback. Oh, that's Strongback. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to go and eat the Strongback. With strength in our back. Strength in the back. <laughs> Instant. <laughs> this is Miss June. Miss June. Miss Vadney. Miss Vadney. I'm going to pull it right up out. Oh, wow. What well, this is called watermelon radish. We get all our seeds from a company in Vermont initially. So your seeds are all they're certified organic. Once you get a set of seeds, you become self sufficient. Somewhat, right? Gotcha. So this is the watermelon radish. Watermelon radish. And it's called watermelon radish yeah. because it. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Let me see that. Right. Ooh, beautiful. You can put oh, your tongue. You smell it. It smells good. It has a very kind of like a spicy flavor, but that spiciness is normally concentrated okay. in the skin. Can I share something with you? Yeah, man, please do. Do you know that I'm 60% vegan, 10% raw, and 30% pescatarian? Mm -hmm. So this, this fits within my lineage. Yeah. When I'm done here, yeah. I should be more raw. Give thanks. When I leave this farm, yeah. I, I, my percentage should be up. My job is done. <laughs> all right. Plus, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. All I need to hear, Rastafari. Rastafari. That's right what now. we want. Cool. Yes, yes. give thanks. Cool. This one, very fruity. But if you have it with the skin now, and you'll get the difference in the flavor. Try a little piece of the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, oh. so wait. Mm -hmm. So this is the one, like, you go to a sushi bar. Yeah, I'm going to give you something that's even closer to wasabi. Oh, it's similar to wasabi. Mm -hmm. This now, this is uh, called green wave mustard. Wild man. Yeah. Green wave mustard. mustard. Want to try a little piece? Uh, yeah, let, let wild man try that piece. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So it starts out here. And our hands up here. Wait. Open up your heavens. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I like that little feeling right there. To tell you, there's nothing like tasting freshly picked right. organic the produce straight from the land. So, yes. That's a little quick plant. Okay, good. All right. So you want Next, you want to do a little harvesting? Let's harvest. All right. Some stuff. So, we're going to go dig some yam. Oh, you, you, you know what? You see, you've done this before. You, why? You would have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait that's wait. how far down we got to go? Yeah, that's... See, that's why, that's why Hussein Boat runs so fast. Yeah, come from yam. Right country. to his feet, this thing goes. Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> so, we did some. Yes. Planting. We did some planting, yes. We did some reaping. Did some reaping. No, I'm gonna grab a sugar cane and we we'll do a little heating. Eating. Ah. Yes, so. Rasta man, vibration, right. yeah, yeah. Positive. I am man. Vibration, yeah, positive. 
You know, my time spent with Chris on the farm brought me back to when I started my plantation and why one day I plan to retire on my land. Positive vibes. <laughs> There's nothing quite like living off the earth except maybe eating and tasting the fruits of our labor. And that's what's coming up next. I'm cooking for the boys with Lisa. Lisa and Chris own and run Stush in the Bush. It's their home, their farm, and their business. I had a great time farming with Chris. Now I'm really looking forward to cooking with Lisa. First off, Lisa's special, an ackee and tomato quiche. So we're gonna do an ackee quiche. You gonna prick? Prick. Prick the base of the pie. Yes, yeah, uh, you don't want it to kind of bubble up, sure, right? Sure. I'm yeah. freaking good. <laughs> you know, most pie crust generally has butter. So we don't use butter, we use cold pressed coconut. Okay. And it gives you the same kind of buttery flakiness, sure. consistency and everything, which is really nice. This is Jamaican national dish without sausage. <laughs> right. Aki looks like eggs, but it's actually a fruit that goes everywhere on the island. Trust me, we Jamaicans love our ackee and saltfish in the morning. So this is ackee with tomato, yes. and it has a little scallion, and it has thyme and all that good stuff, yes. right? Yes. And no saltfish. Yes. Right? Do you want to try it first? In yes. the kitchen, you know you're tasting your hands. Well, I've been learning this this whole trip. I mean, true. You can also use tasting spoons and stuff like that, but you know, mm. when you're really cooking and, and you're the enzyme, all in, well, you, you know, just... also the enzymes from your hands, the chemical reaction from the food to your hands, mm -hmm. it's a perfect way because no one wants to. No, you're not gonna taste it that way right, right, exactly. with the metal. Yeah. Sure. So this now we're gonna fill. Hey. So you get to fill. You guys like that? Yeah. yeah they like. They like that. A little food science. <laughs> I've probably never win Master Chef, but I still know what I'm talking don't about. Press <laughs> don't press down. Yeah. Do not now, put. Now, most quiche, yes, you know, right. has egg that you kind of put around sure, it, but sure. the ackee in and of itself sort of simulates yes, that whole process yes, of an egg, so you don't necessarily need <laughs> to. Let me get my, 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 <laughs> your skills off. Yeah, let me just start moving around like I know that I'm doing it. Yeah! Okay. You, you miss what I'm doing over here. What? Check yes. this out. Making. Mm, another yeah. <laughs> We're gonna sprinkle a little scallion. Yes. Just because, you know, you eat with your eyes first. Sure. And all of the colors of Rastafari. 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 Red, good, and you. Ites. Ites, ites. And we're gonna put a touch of coconut can bacon. I, can, yeah? Let's um, Stacy? <laughs> Stacy, please, Stacy, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm good with, um, it's the, I had um the thing in the ear. So my memory is like, I'm, I'm high on memory right now. But you don't remember the name of what you have. I don't remember. <laughs> the rosemary behind the ears is always a good thing. Rosemary. So we're going to bake this in the oven. Yes. Right? And we'll do some pizza. Oh, lovely. Oh, I'm and looking we'll forward to that. And then we'll have lunch. So our pizza dough, we make ourselves as well. There's uh -huh. no purchasing going on here, right? <laughs> so that's the whole point when you come to Stitch in the Bush that you get to kind of make it yourself, right? Sure. Yeah. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. This is our tomato sauce that we use. Yes. Make. So bright and nice. It doesn't have any preservatives and extra salt and all those things that you get from canned stuff. Uh -huh. And so we're just gonna take that and paint a little. Paint a little. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good, huh? Uh -huh. I think so too. Perfect. Okay, so this is a cashew cheese. You should try a little. Oh, try a little. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. I can do it all day. <laughs> cashew cheese. <laughs> All right, so now we have toppings. Yes. So I sort of lay out my plantain. I think about how I'm gonna cut my pizza. And then a little red onion. Uh -huh. And I kind of drizzle Spread it that, yes. all over. Then, last but not least, is the coconut bacon. It has aminos and smoked paprika, maple syrup, <laughs> some liquid smoke, and then it goes into the oven. It toasts up. Okay, beautiful. Because, you know, Rasta don't need bacon. But nope. what is this? Coconut, coconut. bacon. Rasta <laughs> and I'm bacon. This out. Coconut bacon. Just make sure y'all remember that. So it has like this really nice smoky flavor. Yeah, yeah ooh, I'm yeah. looking forward. Yeah. All right, so yeah. we're gonna head over to the grill now. Head over to the grill, guys. Oh, do you want a little walnut sandwich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, what a pizza, that little fetish. <laughs> Pretty good at drums. Not so good at driving. <laughs> well, 
salad is the centerpiece of our meal. Sure. So most people that eat in the first world nowadays, centerpiece of the meal is the meat, the mm -hmm. protein. So when you see a big ham or a big <laughs> turkey on the table, it's usually beautifully dressed, well flavored, it's very attractive. It's what everybody's salivating over in the meal. Mm -hmm. Salad is that for us. Right. So you're getting the flavors of arugula, piquant, spicy, very texturful. Some people say a little nutty. You're getting some mustard greens, like the ones that we had before, a little bit of that wasabi. Right? Mm. You have some soft stuff as well, just to balance things off. Uh -huh. And then Lady Stush loves a very <laughs> sexy salad. So she's got some cranberries in there. Mm. She's mm. got some fresh, what we call them, the tangerine caviar. What do you call it? The pulp. It is the pulp. Oh, the tangerine. tangerine. Yeah. But it's very similar over. to like a rose. So we yeah. decided to do like a rose. Like Here's a cash of fire. I'd like you to try it. It's my sister Sidella's um, sauce. And it's made in Jamaica. And it's one it's of my Jamaican favorite products. albums. I need to show you. Yeah. I got cash <laughs> of fire on LP. Oh, amazing. This is fire. original. Original Catch of Fire with the flame. And that's first album, boys. The flame is because of, there's a lighter it's color. shaped like a zipper. <laughs> so this is the other part. Man, you know what's even cool? <laughs> the scent. <laughs> like the, you, when you smell. Like yeah. <laughs> Listen to the words of my father's song, Slave Driver. I think there's a connection between them and Chris and Lisa Liberty creating a stush in the bush, a fully self-sufficient and sustainable place, free from woes of modern society. I don't think anybody ride one bigger than that one day. <laughs> yeah, man, give time. Jamaica is known all around the world for its incredible beaches. And who says beaches? Says surfing. There's a small but growing surf scene here on the island, actually dubbed a hidden gem by international surfers in the know. So I got in touch with the family at the center of it all, the Wilmots. Today, myself, Joseph I, and a wild man are heading to Jamnesia, the heart and soul of the surf culture in Jamaica. Why, I'm a surf out of my father back. I'm a surf going on my mother. <laughs> and the surf round in on my mother for about nine months. <laughs> and then the surf come out. Yeah. And when we reach dry land, we start crying. Yeah. <laughs> right away, when we start crying. This is Billy Wilmot, AKA Billy Mystic. Not only is he the leader of the Mystic Revealers, but he's also the pioneer of the surf culture here in Jamaica. And this is Jamnesia. It's a surf school, a hostel, a restaurant, and a music venue. Many established artists started off playing here, like Chronix, Janine, Protege. It's also the only surf school in Jamaica with an all-girl class taught by Billy's daughter, Aimani. Jamnesia is really our home. Like, we all grew up here. My dad grew up here. He raised us here. We've opened our home to people who want to experience like a real authentic Jamaica. Not the Jamaica that you stay in a hotel and everything is planned out, but where you can spend the least amount of money possible to stay as long as possible. You know, our rooms are minimal, just enough that you're sleeping comfortably and you feel safe and you can go out and, you know, not just surfing, you know, we do music as well, live music. Um, we have like skateboarding, you know, like it's just a home for creativity and expression in any kind of form. Yes. Yes. So Billy, 10 years ago, I heard that during Hurricane Ivan, yeah. you surfed one of the biggest waves that ever came through Jamaica. Is that true? Well, some big waves come through, and maybe bigger than that wave come through, you know, but 
I don't think anybody ride one bigger than that one day. You know what I mean? Yeah, if that's you in that picture, God bless you, man. Yeah, man, give <laughs> That's a big wave, man. Yeah, man. So this is where everything happened. This yeah. is... All right, you see them little tiny waves where you see just barely rolling in here? This is where you learn, man. You know? Right. And them little waves that we teach somebody how to get acquainted with them surfboard and develop a relationship with the surfboard. And as them get better, then head down to the bigger waves. Yeah, I'm thinking of taking lessons. Yeah, my yeah. daughter is an instructor. I know. I'm thinking. Don't of... get the idea. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Spending time with Billy, I'm really interested in finding out more about the roots of surfing in Jamaica, but also how important it is for him to get the kids involved. How many children have access to a surfboard? Have access to the example of what good surfing is. If it's not for the Jamaica Surfing Association, Jamnesia, and the little surfers that travel around the island and allow kids to see it and maybe give them an opportunity to try it on them surfboard, nobody's not exposed to it. But it's a very small community and it's very unique and it, it bears nothing in resemblance to established surfing communities anywhere else in the world. Jamaican surfing, different, it's a vibe. In, in the rest of the world, it's crowded. You want to find some secret place <laughs> where nobody can find you, where you can go surf alone. In Jamaica, there's no crowd. So the culture is wake up in the morning, take up your phone, call your friend, where you going to surf? Because everybody wants to go surf the same place so they yeah. surf together. Right, right. It's not, I want to be alone. No, sure. it's too lonely alone. Yeah. You want to surf with your brethren. So that build a different type of surf culture. It's a much more warm and accepting and inviting and easygoing surf culture than many other places. So then how did, how did surf come about in Jamaica? The first generation of Jamaican surfers, early to mid-60s. So some guys from Kingston, one of them was able to travel. I think they brought a surfboard from Miami and somewhere. And the other guys used the refrigerator foam and fiberglass cloth and the boat resin. And yeah, people in Jamaica don't know about surfing because surfing is not something that takes place on a basketball court or a football field or a cricket pitch. There's waves you can ride right there, but there's none right there. And so you have to go find it. Yeah, and you have to be there. And it <laughs> might not be in the middle of a community. Everybody exposed to football. A match are going on the field, you know. Everybody go down on the field and watch the match. And you say, boy, them you that ride go surfing out way up so down one lane through the bush back walk half mile up the beach, out in the water. You know what I mean? Not yeah, going. so it's not, in the, it's not in the eyesight of the right, people. Right, So, Millie, what's your favorite tune to hit the waves? If it's like life and death, you go in a different frame of mind. You want something that like vibes up for the face, the real <laughs> challenge. But if it's just like a fun day, nice, and you're anxious to get out there, you might want something more light-hearted, you know what I mean? Yeah. And if it's like really, really tiny, <laughs> depressing waves, <laughs> and you have to try to get some energy up. You might need a different type of thing to kind of say, sure. come on, man. You know? yeah, sure. <laughs> so it depends. You don't really have a specific. Yeah, so tell me about that now. What is your one? You have a, you have a song? Yeah, well, after, after that explanation. After what then. you just said to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need a wave. Yeah, I tell you. Song, I'm, you know? I'm going to sing this song called Take It Easy. <laughs> Coming up. Joseph Wildman and I are not taking it so easy as you prepare for our first surfing lesson. Trust me, you guys don't want to miss this. Yeah, you know, today we're at Jamnesia, and I can't come to Jamnesia and not surf. So I'm here with Aymani, the great daughter of Billy Mystic, and today she's going to teach us how to surf. Wiley? Yeah? You're a fisherman, so I want to see you surf. <laughs> yeah, no, Joseph. Was... My name is Aymani Wilmot. Well, today, Rowan is here to experience what Jamnesia means. <laughs> Gangai! Gangai! <laughs> so we're gonna take him out surfing, we're gonna have him eat some good food, and I'm sure he's gonna just love it. So, any of you have any experience? Joseph I has a lot of experience. Yeah. He's from San Diego. 120 pounds ago, <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, I don't think it counts. It's not like a bicycle, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's better than a bicycle, because when you fall off, you land splash, you know, yeah. land crash, boom. <laughs> All right. Skip is a fish. I'm not okay, without a leash. I got a leash. Sissy, can we get some wax? Yeah, Do this. sure. These guys ask you know, you're going to slip. Am I? Yeah. What does the wax do? Make sure you don't fall off. Make sure you don't fall off? Yeah. Your dad told me it's all about balance. Yeah, and so, wax. And wax. You know? And wax. <laughs> At Jamnesia, you can say that I run this joint. You know, I'm the boss around here. But I'm also a surf instructor, a surf coach. 
And I'm actually a surf judge too. And I teach a class for girls, a camp called Surf Like a Girl. It's a nurturing environment. It's calm, it's peaceful, it's focused on their development and creating a bond between the girl surfers to try and increase the population of girl surfers here. And you know how you stand up already, right? He knows everything already? Everything I'll, I'll be back, already. I'll be backhanded <laughs> on this. Joseph I has been talking a lot about how he's going to school us at surfing. But now, it's almost like he's looking for excuses to skip the lesson. So they've been killing me the whole show. It's like greatest fat losers. Yeah, they set me up, like run a race against them, quick feed and all this. This ain't a redemption. I'm 100 pounds heavier and right. I'm 45 years old. I'm not. They don't treat you that nice, so. They've been tearing me up the whole show. Sorry, you know what? I'm going to purposely put them on some waves that they can't handle, all right? I have nothing to say. <laughs> no right. comment. Right. It's pretty good. Oh, right. lion. You want to keep this stuff like, like that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, lion. Right. If you feel like you're going to fall off, yeah. it's probably because you didn't bend your knees enough. The quicker you can do it, the better. You want to give it a try? That was good. Give it a try. One more. Joseph, I think you got this one. Yeah. Let me be very specific. Yeah. If you, after you catch your wave, you paddle on your board all the way back out to me in the water. Oh, I catch it by myself. Wow. Side. Then That's, wow. you get the four point. If I, I have to leave my spot yeah. Yeah. and swim and help you back out, so yeah. can we can, can I get a current, a current? Um, like, is there a channel? <laughs> They're making jokes. Joseph, come on. Man. This is your it's day. not my day. My day is if I could throw on some nice fashion and no. come to the dance. Remember, you said this is your one. No, I never said this is one. You guys convinced I me. I should have recorded that. Nah, you guys set me up again. No, bro. Setting up yourself. <laughs> You guys are so competitive. I teach girls who are more badass than you guys. Come oh, on. don't say that. Yes! I have a class tomorrow with like seven girls coming out to surf, but these guys, they're kind of whiny. Like, my girls are way tougher than this. They'd be in the water already, like, let's go. They're worrying about, oh, my nipples are going to be waxy. They're good. Take, take, off the... take off the chain, Joe. Oh, it's all right. I mean, it's all right. Take off the chain. Yeah, man, I want to see you with that. <laughs> Get it, get it, boy. Okay, okay. We may sound a little intense because we like to bicker, but being competitive is a part of who we are. It's in our own Jamaican blood. Don't get me wrong, though. I love my brethren. I just want to let them know I'm better than them, way, way better than them. Tender walking in on these rocks at the end. Woo! Man. Fat man splash. Coming up, the Gymnasia Cup, a competition you won't want to miss. And the grand prize of the day, a beach cookout with the boys and the family. So our competition is over, and now it's time to crown the winner. And Manny being the judge, I know she won't pull any punches. Hopefully, she won't hurt my self-esteem or bruise my ego too much. <laughs> One more, Wildie. So, Imani, how was our first lesson, coach? So, you all did well. <laughs> and I would have to say that Wildman won the competition. Uh, he did. He caught the most uh, waves. Yes, At the end of the yep, day, I win that one. Oh, you, know what? You, know, <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? And right. you, you were a, a good third place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now that we know who is your best surfer out of all of you, yeah. I'm going to put your best surfer yeah. up against my best surfer. Wow. No, man. No way. No way. Eh -eh. No, yeah. I'm not into that. Hey, no way. Joseph can go. 
<laughs> you put me against a baby, my little daughter. Baby? No way. One wave. Yeah. Ride it all the way to the beach. Nobody can help you. You catch a wave by yourself, ride it all the way to the beach. No falling off. Perfect. You can do that? <laughs> what? She do that before she born. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful day today at Bull Bay Beach with our finals. McKenna against Wildman. Wildman, 6'2, 15 pounds. I'm kidding, 130 pounds. <laughs> I'm going McKenna with the princess since I was cheated. <laughs> McKenna, seven years old, maybe 40 pounds, and here we go. Somebody have to take our boat. I'm cheering for the princess. Oh. We're approaching about that time when I believe, you know, Wildman's wave will come. Like I said, he's a wave an hour, so be patient. They can catch the peak before the wave breaks and then be in the middle. And so it's, we're at a point, so it's going to break to your left. So if you catch it coming down the break, it will not be like a perfect wave, being able to catch it all the way down. Were you able to catch your perfect wave? I actually was able to catch the wave well, all the way to the beach. As you can see, it's amateur day. <laughs> <laughs> she might be seven years old. She's hungry. Definitely. She's the future of Bay Beach. Can we get a close up on Wildman? What is he doing? Here he goes. Here's the attempt. Here's the attempt. Here's the attempt. Now look, at, look at how he looks. Look like a cat on a board. <laughs> look, 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 look. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Wildman says. I figured he's warming up. Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Come on, Wildy. Never a winner. You're going too well. We're never ready. We're just warming up. McKenna, how does it feel being the champion? She feels great. Congratulations. Yeah, you're good. As the day comes to a close, there's only one thing left to do. Eat. And trust I, after all that surfing, swimming, and chasing after that board, I was starving. When it comes to preparing a real Jamaican beach cookout, everyone's got to pitch in, even the kids. But clearly not Joseph I, who somehow found the energy to go surfing again. He really needs to practice, though, so that's all good. <laughs> all right, here we just have some seasoning, onions, tomato, sweet pepper, or bell pepper, as they call it, some callaloo, salt and pepper, thyme, garlic, and scallion. Yeah, man, it's going to be tasty. <laughs> Fresh fish. Everything on the beach, you know, catch on the beach, scale on the beach, cook on the beach, you know? Eat by the beach, everything. Real island vibes, you know? Different way of a catch fish. Yeah, just like you see, the bread I'm on this one, set him net. And catch the fish coming down the beach in the current, you know? Some people go, they have a couple boats down there. You know, them head out in the mornings and hit up the beach and then come back with them catch and sell it to people on the beach or in town, so. You know, it's a real like a fishing village kind of vibe, a modern fishing village, you know? Yes, man. Oh my God! How can you were doing that for the poor fish? Scally <laughs> on. It's all right, next time. Flip. That is little girl already catching it on the train, you know. And that's like a team effort, and everybody pitching right in time. It's the sun dipping. Yeah, yeah man. Real so we do it at Jamnesia all the time, you know. Time. Real beach vibes. Real friends come out help, and then you know, know the big beach flex and. Feasted. Fish ready? Fish sure? No, like, I'm saying like. Come here, catch that special, you know. the cold too. Yeah, man. Wow. See it, I appreciate it.
Look at that, my guy, Joseph there. Oh, that's the guy that I saw the board. Look him chasing down the board. I saw the guy running there. I'm like, whose board is that? It's got to be Joseph. So, bro, I've been here all day, and I've been yeah. looking forward to this. Yeah. But this is old school, though, because yeah. we're cooking on coal right here. Yeah. And not only are we cooking on coal, we are on the on beach. The beach. You know what, you live a good life. Yeah, man. Not only do you go and fish for your own food, we get to cook it right here on yeah. the beach. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, what do you want yeah, more than this? Yeah, this is Ita. Yeah. Ita city. city <laughs> bro, let me ask you something. Why is it that you're a chef? Because I'm the big brother, you know? You're big bro? Yeah, big brother. So from early on, I was the one cooking for everybody. Because you don't know daddy on the road touring. Yeah. Mommy, I have the full responsibility, you know, here yeah. taking care of the family while daddy is out, you know? Daddy. You son have to step up and from early, you know? Man, you know what? Key point, man. I wish that more families would, would operate this way because when father's away working and the big brother's there, it's great that you know that you stepped it up, man, because families support each other, yeah. man. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, man. So who's here right now? Let me see who's oh. here. All right, so this is my niece. This is your niece. Naya. Naya. Hi, Naya. Yeah. This is my son. Yeah. Hello, Hello yeah, son. Mom. What's your name? Mikaias. Mikaias. Give me five. Give me five. Yeah. And what's your name? This is Menaka. So where do you get all the recipes? Like, did you learn it from grandma? Where do you Learned get? Learned some from grandma, some from grandpa, some yeah. from daddy, some from mommy. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Everybody. And then eventually, you know, when I get older now, my parents say, you need to go to college. I figure, well, I love cooking, so. Right. Might as well just go to cooking school, so, you You, know, you yeah. went to cooking school as well? Yeah. In Canada, too, of all places. Oh, <laughs> um, are you kidding me? No, man. So that's what we call roast fish on the beach. Still steaming. Jeez. Original style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, inside is packed with the goodness. Yeah, give me another piece. <laughs> When you're having fresh fish on the beach, what more can you ask for? Mm -hmm. At sunset. Yeah. At sunset. <laughs> yeah. This is the video I was talking to you about right here. Now look at this. This is Jamaica. Yeah, he just went over the top. He saw Billy. Here we go. Here comes the wave. Hey, catch that. Here's the big one. <laughs> See here, he gets wow. on. Yes, Billy. Wow. Yes, wow. Billy. Wow. 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 Yes, Billy. Wow. Wow. Yes, Billy. Wow. 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 Yes, Billy. Wow. 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 See the board there, and the board there too, you know. That's how the surfboard is. This one? Yeah, man, I hate that. Legend! <laughs> wow. And we said, yeah, that will be a better way, you know? Ah, you find, say, in this world, love is the greatest thing, you see what I'm saying? I know that I'd love to see a world of love and a world of peace. So if you look at us, you know, see where I'm going, where I said, yeah, that will be a better way. It's gonna be a better way than this hypocritical system. There's gotta be a better way than this. This hypocritical system. So there's gotta be a better way. Because people are always a victim. They set our wages and they set the prices. This wicked system with its its evil devices. They took the chains off our ankles And now they got them by our pocket They got a new type of slavery Running it like a rocket Well, it's gotta be a better way Than this This hypocritical system Well, it's gotta be a better way Because people are always a victim Victim As I am full joined the sun setting on this beautiful journey that took me from the mountain to the sea, I reminisce over Chris and Lisa full sustainable lifestyle and vacation to her land and over a question I asked Billy earlier about his legacy. How do you feel to see the children carry on the legacy? 
I wish they had gotten into something like trading stocks <laughs> on Wall Street and making millions, you know. No, seriously, no, man, I feel good because what I love about it is them, them consciousness. Even in them own music where them take on, even within them own day-to-day -day life, the way them carry themselves, that is what I'm most proud of, even more than, because them could have done anything. Sure. It's not really what them pick up to do. It's because when you pick something up, you believe in that you feel it's really a part of you. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it forms the substance of that which you need to, to feel fulfilled. And when you can be true to that yeah. feeling of this is the right thing for me to do, and it turned out the way I hoped it would turn out, yes. you know what I mean? Then that is the greatest reward you can get. That's better than money. Right. Do you know this tree? Yeah. It's called a guangu, yeah, yeah, or a yeah, rain tree. Yeah. But it's called a rain tree because when it rains, the leaves fold up so all the leaves at the bottom can get some love. Oh, really? That's yeah. crazy. Let me ask you a question. Is it always rain tree? Uh, not always. I'm meeting Cherise Cohen, a young entrepreneur, to discuss her new venture, turning her family land into an organic kitchen, garden, and table. <laughs> She recently started the project, so she brought some coconuts, planting. Well, it's just a planting thrown in fire. <laughs> but there's some berry berry on it, so Ethiopian season. Yes, it's kind of spicy. And the organic vegetables to prepare a delicious meal for the crew, the boys and I. The boys were more like Marlon, my high school friend, because as usual, George Devine and Wyman are over there goofing around. How deep is it? So I can jump. I guess I brought something you to your land. <laughs> so, Sharice. Yes, sir. Let the world know what you're all about because this is amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm a chef. I own a company called Sipping Life. Uh -huh. And now I'm a farmer. Yes. Um, so, they kind of feel like the same sometimes. But Sipping Life has graduated to a farm to table, our first official location and it would be called Sipping Live Garden. Mm -hmm. This is the garden. We've been working on it for the past two months or so. Sure. So the first step in sustainability is respecting the space. Sure. Um, the first principle of permaculture is to observe. Mm -hmm. So there are people who do permaculture that sit on their land for a whole year before they even touch anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you come and you observe the direction of the breeze, you observe the birds, you <laughs> observe the bugs, you Seriously. observe everything. And it just helps you to start on a good foot of just maintaining how the space was before. Well, firstly, I want to do something stimulating. So I'm sure. always going to have a way to invite people into the space who want to learn. Mm -hmm. um, so apart from the farm table, we want people to come and learn about farming so that it can spread around the community. Also, want to have parties. <laughs> want to have some camping parties. Sure. But as you can see, it's on a contour. So we've just been doing a lot of contour mapping um, just to ensure that on days like these, everything doesn't get washed out. The land was completely forested, so we've salvaged a lot of material and we've been using it in some of the beds. That's a Hugo culture bed that we have here. Perfect. Um, and perfect I love the rainfall. Weather. I, love the, I love the weather. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into farming? Um, well, I was a chef first, as I told you. Right. And I did a bit of traveling. I went on tour with Chronix. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. We toured North America, and it was just a lot of work. Right. Like, I've done cooking, but not like that. Just moving around. I mean, it was magnificent. And after that, it made me a little discouraged. And I was there venting and saying, I don't know what I'm going to do about sipping life. And then they said, why don't you farm? So I'm like, yeah. I like that farm. So would you call yourself you now a sustainable farmer? What kind of farmer are you doing? Well, I like to say I'm a gardener. A gardener. Because I think the gardeners don't get much respect. Sure. It's like farmer but gardener. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm a gardener. You're a gardener. Own area. Can I look at what's going on here? Sure. We're two months old, so there are uh -huh. lots of seeds but not many plants. Rastafari. I'm amazed by Sharice's principles. It's deeper than just the soil, the seed, and the plants. It's about closing the loop, creating a full circle of life. 
a perfect harmony between the earth and everyone and everything living off of it. So Sharice, as a farmer, Jamaican, being a sustainable farmer, what do you think is the future for our country in regards to agriculture and sustainability? Um, you want the good or the bad news first? I want both. OK, let's start with <laughs> the bad news. Okay. <laughs> um, I think the amount of damage that we're doing, we're behaving as if we, have, we don't need a future. The level of damage needs a drastic movement, not a slow, steady campaign, Instagram ads kind of movement. But the good part is there is a movement, sure. even if it's really, really small. So the future, if we start to operate in a very drastic way, which I'm not seeing right now, mm -hmm. it will exist a future, but at the moment, we're a little bit too slow. It's still kind of like a uptown thing or a higher class thing. <laughs> it is important to be able to be sustainable because people are poor. There are people who are poor who need to be able to feed themselves and it's a very simple way to feed yourself if you just shake your mind up a little bit and change things up. So I think if more of us take on an individual responsibility to maybe spread the word or even act upon these hashtags, I think we'll have somewhat of a future, but right now, as it stands, I think we're moving way too slowly. Sure. Yeah. You mentioned Source Farm. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to go there later, but I feel like that's a great starting point. Yeah, what I would call Source Farm is like a resource hub. Resource I think hub. it's the real hub of organic farming in Jamaica, the movement of organic farming. And also, Source Farm gives you a broad perspective of how to naturally just become a natural farmer because after that experience, you just live differently, you sure. do things differently. So it's a good place to start, definitely. I, I don't know where else I would start <laughs> if I wanted to start somewhere in Jamaica, honestly. That's good. After the break, I'm taking you to Source Farm, but first, yoga with Janine. Namaste. We're now back in Kingston, ready to align our chakras in Janine's yoga class. Good. Feet don't move. Moving with the breath. Only the neck moves. Engaging the thighs. Opening the chest. Both hands. Good. Inhale and exhale. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center. Beautiful. And this is the place where we give thanks. We say namaste, which means the light in you recognizes the light in me. Janine is a music artist with a chilling voice and a rootsy coolness. She travels the world with her music and has been heavily involved in community and youth development here in Jamaica. You know, we just had a little time today, yeah, so I wanted sure. to at least let you see what a moving meditation is. It was nice because I was feeling the energy, so I'm sweating and good. You know, it was good. Thank good, you. Good, good. Respect. Yes, Viva, the original juice man. Every time I'm in Jamaica, he always has new concoctions for me to try. Juicing is caring. <laughs> Viva. You have juice? Yep. Ah! Oh, <laughs> Irish mash. Made with? Irish mash. Honey. Honey? Yes. Gummer a bit, ice and glass, and linseed. Uh, and this one? I, say that one uh, again. Say that. Gummer a bit, ice and glass, and linseed. Gummer rabbit. Gummer a bit. No, that's not a. Gummer a bit. It's, a, it's, it's like a gum from, from. It's not. Yeah, it's the right gum, from? gum from the tree. Yeah, the, you, oh, know the, you know the gum. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. yeah, so that, and they grind it up. Yeah. What do you mean? Irish moss? I use Irish moss every day. Irish moss is a species of the seaweed with many benefits for your body. Doctor, Dick. you have to hear this story. Are you familiar with no, Irish moss? I'm not. Oh, I'm just listening to what he's saying. Just, sea just moss. drink. <laughs> Trust me, doc. Now, doctor. Yes. There's certain things they don't tell you about where you come from. But where we come from, we know it all. Here in Jamaica, we have the best of it. This Irish mash, this put the, Irish the glamity. The, 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 you know when the... <laughs> Billy your back. Billy that, that's what they would say in Jamaica. Billy, it's, it's for your back. back. When, 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 for the ladies. Yes. <laughs> Give her the gumption. Ah, okay. And she, this, now I get it. She get, she get the <laughs> medicine. It, it. It's, you notice the texture of it, so it's yes. good for your joints. It pulls mucus out of your body as well. And you know that things that are good for you tend to but be good But the most for important it. one... For a Jamaican man! <laughs> Irish moss. Lovely. No, this is cosmic. Oi. It's a new one. Okay, okay, okay. So surprise. This one is cosmic. Doctor, nice. hear the name of this one. This one is cosmic. I give it name of a Ziggy Marley. Cosmic. Oh, I thought you said costly. Cosmic. Cosmic. Yeah, when you drink cosmic, it makes you feel it. 
Mm. It's sorrel, like Jamaican sorrel. Yeah. Christmas time Christmas now. Christmas time is number one Ukrainian. juice for everybody who is into their home. Oh, but we, other people use rum or wine, but mm -hmm. Rasta use roots. Mm -hmm. Roots. So we use roots in our so, sorrel. Some right? use little wine and rum too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As I say, yeah. you say we our culture now. Sure, Rasta not culture, normally, we, normally, we, but we, don't we, let nobody fool you. Yeah, yeah. So we we straight do our thing straight up. Sorrel is a type of hibiscus. The heart of the flower is boiled to make a red and sweet juice. The class was very, very good. I was inspired. It took me, it took me someplace, you know? Because, mm -hmm. you and know... And you did well. I'm yeah, I like to connect. That's why I'm back in Jamaica. <laughs> no. But you know, right, later, so... Yes, sir. I tell vibration, Listen positive. Love. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that wasn't acting. That was real life. I wasn't acting. I wasn't playing around out there. You I, did good. Thank you, because I was sweating my... You did good. You should do this more often. You know what? I have a serious knee injury. Every morning, I have to sit for 20 minutes yeah. in a pose called Barasna to open the knee joint. And wow. I have to take my time and release slowly onto it. And if I do that for like 15, 20 minutes, then I can feel my knee again. Oh, good. We need to probably hang out more often, I think. <laughs> you feel good, because you're done, though. Viva's Juice was the perfect way to end our yoga session with Janai. It's time to touch the road going east to the beautiful parish of St. Thomas. From Kingston, the journey along the coast is amazing. And since it takes around two hours to reach, we stopped along the way to chill and feel a little bit of the vibe. Oi, 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 oi. Yo, you know what Tim said? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo. We don't eat chicken, but watch this. You don't boil it first before you cook no. it, right? All right, you're not put the big fire underneath it. You right. just have timely fire and just take time to see yeah. it out. Yeah. And take time to turn it, turn it. And you know, have the sauce in my mouth right. now. Right, so just dip it. it dip it and in on the sauce and you put it back. So you dip it in the sauce and put it back. But, that, but you're saying that your fire is low? Low. So you get a better... Slow maybe. Cook. Is yeah, it ready it's now? Ready. No, it's not ready yet. What do you mean it's not ready? It's brown? It's not too long. Like, yeah, it's brown, no, but it's not cooked yet. Oh, and that's why we're not getting raw. See that thing? You see it? Ah, <laughs> I was testing you. Because you look brown as cooked. I was testing you. All right, here we are. Wait, what is this place called? It's Yo. Easy Corner. Yo, you want to wish for weed right now? Yeah. Easy, easy corner. corner. Yeah. The best jerk chicken in a Jamaica. We yeah. have St. Thomas and John's Road. Johnstown Road, uh, Johnstown Crossing. Remember that, Mala? Remember that? Corner shops are everywhere around the island. They're like liquor markets or delis, where you can find anything from jerk chicken, fresh fish, to fruits, and even beer and juices. Oh, hold on. So we, we, cousins or sisters? Friends. Friends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mom to the seabed. Yeah, yeah, Bob Marley is my father. He told you, you know Bob Marley? Yes! Wait, sing a Bob Marley song first. Sing that. One heart, let's get together and be all right. <laughs> nice. Funny can not sing though, <laughs> like birds. <laughs> Coming up, we're taking you to the first eco-village of Jamaica. In this episode, I'm taking you on a journey through time, exploring foundations of our land and our people, making you discover how new generations of Jamaica are currently building a sustainable future. Source Farm is the first eco-village of Jamaica, but more than that, it's a fully self-sustainable and ever-growing community, developing farming, housing principles, and techniques that are then taught in its learning center. <laughs> wait, you, wait. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, oh, oh. I gotta make bubbles, you see that? <laughs> no, you don't. Whoa, whoa, we got, hey, hey, hey. Joe, Joe, did you, were you at yoga today, Joe? Did you do yoga today? You should have been able to get up there. It's a family project started in 2005 by the Shirley family and being greeted by their youth, we're now driving down to meet one of the founder's daughter. Nicola Shirley Phillips. She runs the farm and she'll walk us through the community and its liberty. Hey, buddy. Hey, how'd you get here? Asher. Asher, where are you going? How'd you get here? I thought he was alone. He beat us. He's a big farmer, you know, he has to do some clock time. We're jumping out. Oh. 
because I'm trying to still wrap my head around permaculture. Yeah, permaculture is a design system, so it's permanent agriculture. Right. So we're looking at a whole system design, not just you take one little piece of organic farming, a little piece of other sustainable thing, but we put the whole thing together. Yes. And what we do here at the source is really a village mm -hmm. demonstrating those practices. All right. right so we're living yeah. it, working it, we're talking it, we're eating, we're creating a whole thing. Thank you for bringing us to this beautiful place. Where do we go to? Yeah, then let's go take a look. We say, you know, we don't want to be. We want to be off the grid. We don't want to have to worry about paying no demand, no money every month for things. So we made sure we had solar. We made sure that our houses catch all the water wow. and store. So I keep telling people the only bill I have is we don't pay a water bill and we don't pay a light bill for the most part. The only thing I'm trying to figure out how to do the cell phone thing. So. Right? <laughs> so we live a very sustainable. We grow a lot of the food. Yeah. Yeah. You see yeah. here. Yeah. Telepathy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, we're here. So oh. this is one of this is oh, a, the beautiful. farm. Oh, my brother my Dwight is a, is a farmer here. Sir Dwight. Is a you, farmer. We right? actually, you wanna know something funny? <laughs> so I played football at the University of Miami. Right. The white played for Boston College and we both played at the you same time. time. We played against each, each other. other. This is crazy. Small world. That's why you have to be and, yourself. Yeah, we have to be yourself. <laughs> and now we're back in farming, right? <laughs> crazy that we meet again after 25 years. The white is Nicole's brother and he's developing the housing system for the community. After playing against each other during our college years, we're now walking together on the same path, building a better future for our children, more life. You know, Dwight has a green thumb with all kinds of growing of all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's one team. Yeah, no. One team from a culture. So what's here now? What we have? So what we're doing here is Jamaica. We don't have a lot of access to flatlands. So yeah. it's very important for us to use the hillsides that we have. So we are creating terraces and doing hugo culture and showing how you can work on this landscape because all our resources in Jamaica is in the soil. So by us creating these terraces and the hugo culture beds and showing and demonstrating, not just talking about, but showing, wow. we're actually now creating um, for the next generation some best practices that exactly. they can follow. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's what we're doing. That is sustainability. Then this garden itself is a permaculture garden mm -hmm. and agroforestry. So we don't just plant you know, a monocrop thing. Because when you do that now, the bugs are just know to just attack. It's like you just one, open up a yeah, buffet yeah, for, for everything, right? Yeah, right, 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 right. buffet right. that. So, one, so they can't really come here and survive off of one tree. I mean, yeah, like, hey, where, where, where is the that? other one? Where is that? See, so see, see. Of that, we always have something else going Got on. Got you. Perfect. I love so, it. You know what's great, though? Space. It's great to meet people like yourselves and your family. And, you know, like Gen 9 and... Sorry, Gen 9, dude. I need to just... I just want to refer you. But like, like, you know, yourself, Jana and Cherise, mm -hmm. and this movement about sustainability, mm -hmm. community development, and togetherness, because it is a still the teaching of I and I as God, God people, God yeah. consciousness, Rastafari, Christianity, Muslim, Judaism, anything you want to be. But it's the same principle of life and sustainability yep. Yep. and how to give back to people and give back to the earth and so we can benefit from each other and yep. support each other. Nicola's mother created this project to pursue her dreams, to heal, teach, live, learn, and love. And I can feel her legacy all over Source Farm. This place is a blessing. So you're telling me that these two over here, Sharice and Janine, they took the course? Well, no, I haven't done my intake as yet. Yes. You haven't? What she, might, she might be with you. Well, why, why, <laughs> she you. why I wanted you all to come to this place sure. is because I was so inspired. It wasn't eight years, it was five, oh, five. about five, five or six years, years ago, ago okay. that I first came here mm -hmm. with two friends of mine from Rasta Village. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen it in practice before. And it wasn't a big organization with a set up. It was just these people and their community and they're just doing it. So mm. it means that everybody can do it this, can sure. you know? I have your show, probably people who have money, I got to your show. Them need to know, say, yeah, you can come to Jamaica, but make sure you're doing sustainable practices. Mm -hmm. because, and not you just know? with farming, with your life. Exactly. Because a very big concept with permaculture that I learned is to apply it to life. It's not just gardening. I'm usually very quiet in the mornings mm -hmm. and here during the course there are a lot of mindfulness practices. It's not really just farming like you don't sure. just go to the farm or books or whatever right. like you talk about <laughs> 
how you feeling today? Yeah. Each person goes around and says, well, you know what's challenging for me? Because it was very important throughout the day if we're all living together to know that maybe you're having a bad day. So yeah. if you're going to scream at me, I'm not going to be like, he hates me. Or if, you know, somebody's not feeling well and they're not working on the farm, you're not going to be like, why are you lazy? Yeah. And then, I mean, for the first two, first week yeah. or so, it was just like, I don't know, I have to tell them, tell them how I feel again. <laughs> I have to tell them what bother me. And then so one day... teaching you how to build community. And exactly. one day, That's one day, you... I literally was sure, like, sure. you know what's challenging? To talk about how I'm feeling all the time. <laughs> you know, but eventually it just really became right. natural and I was just like... And then the, the practices, you leading practices, whether yoga or teaching Oh, I taught or... a wow. yoga class yeah. wow. twice. Wow. We do that I know you're laughing in the here. mornings. <laughs> because one of the things we're trying to get our farmers to realize that they, before they go attack and do this heavy work sometimes, it's they need to stretch yeah, sure. their body sure, 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 sure. because they don't want to hurt it because they'll be doing this for a good portion of their life, hopefully, yeah, yeah. and so we want to make sure that they understand they need to warm up their body before they just jump into stuff. So what else do we see? Should we see some more students? Right. Yeah, so yeah. We, you want to you go to... The living facilities, you definitely. <laughs> yeah. right, Overstanding permaculture made me realize that all the elements of the land need to be balanced for it to grow. Just like in a community, everyone needs to vibe on the same frequency and yoga is the perfect way to connect your inner self and let it resonate within your circle. What do you got? Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait. You got fennel, wow, your absolute wow. favorite. Well, here we are you again with my oh. favorite tomato. You know what I'm gonna do? Do I make a She's little... She's you all that to wrap together What's and this eat thing? together. Oh, you're gonna be so healthy. Should I just go? Yeah. For now, I'm gonna save it for scent purposes. Thank you so much. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta catch it to everyone else. Come on. Gotcha. I'll catch you. When we came here, we had to figure out about housing. So we knew we couldn't afford block and steel. Right. So one of our members mentioned about earth bag. And so we started to do these earth bag houses. And then Dwight came and he didn't have any money. <laughs> They're poor. And so he, <laughs> money. so he had to do research and say, you can't even afford an earth bag house. You know, if I could come up with something else. So he started to do research and he came up with this monolithic dome. He was able to use that technology and build, and it was a much cheaper building solution. Because that's one of the things, everybody wants a structure. And especially out here in St. Thomas, where we get so many hurricanes, any storm system is going to come through, we're going to get it first. Mm -hmm. And so we have to build appropriate houses for our environment. Can we see? Yeah, man, let's take a look over. That's what wow. you see this coming together. Now, this is amazing. <laughs> I don't think I'll be on my rooftop all the time. Yoga on it. Here's what I'm realizing, right? Most of the beautiful properties, everyone wants to gather in the cities, you know? But everyone forgets this nature and the beauty of the land and what we truly have, you know what I mean? Because we have this beautiful, luscious green place. Oh man, I want to live here too. The oxygen, come on. Give thanks, sister. Much respect. Yes, sir. Yes. And welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> much peace. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Coming up, Sharice and I will take you to Kingston's very own farmer's market. Earlier on, Janine and Sharice introduced me to Nicola, co-founder of Source Farm, a fully self-sustainable community in Johnstown. And now that we understand how Mother Earth works, it's time to go back to Kingston to prepare for tonight's vegan cookout. You know where we're going, bro? We're going to the Source Farm, like, kind of farmer's market that... Nicola put this together. Ujima Market is the only fully organic farmer's market in Jamaica. Here, everything is naturally grown. It was created by Nicola to develop and unify the farming community of this island. It's an ideal paradise where you can find everything from fresh fruits and vegetables to honey, juices, and many more. I'm excited to meet the people and taste their products, and I want to find out what Cherise has in mind for tonight's cookout. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah,
I just wanted to little drink the bag juice to sing that song. <laughs> Man, I drink bag, bag juice, juice from base. Base. <laughs> But this is no, but That's these natural. are natural. This are... is the bag juice we drink from base. Yeah, those are the like the, the pharaoh bag juice. Yeah. 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 Where's Where's we lost the sample. It's all good vibes on the set. Are you seeing this? This is market day. We try everything. No, oh, not Cersei. Don't give me no Cersei oh thing. <laughs> this might make me like Cersei again. Right. The little orange, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm falling in love again. <laughs> you want some? You want to try it? <laughs> what are we having today? Okay, well, we're going to have raw tacos, which was recently raw named tacos. Rocco's. Rocco's? Yeah. <laughs> Can we call them Rocco's? Like Rohan, Rocco's? Rocco's. <laughs> and then we're we'll everything. <laughs> Rocco's it is then. While well, Chef Cherise is getting the chart to make our taco shell, I'm going to see my friends Dwight and Nicola to get fresh basil for our lemonade. Mmm. Sir Dwight, what did you bring About this basil? This six o'clock this morning. Six a.m. this morning. So, so Nicola, still live food. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the place. Lo I love the setup. So, how you come out to get this started? Well, I mean, it really came out of a need because we wanted to be able to have access to other produce, not just the stuff that we grew ourselves, so other farmers. We kind of got together. It started with about five farmers, and we got together and just set up a little market. And then it's grown. We have over 40 vendors. And a lot of farmers here, we've been training farmers. Like, for instance, see that young lady over there, we trained her. She was in Charisse's class as well. Right, right, right. And so we've been doing workshops and a program. We keep working with the farmers. So where are most of the farmers from? Are they from your area? There is, this is the only organic or naturally grown market in on the entire island. So people are coming from Trelawney, St. Anne, from actually from Portland. So this is the only place. Every Saturday we just kind of converge a big family and they come. Amazing, amazing. After dinner yesterday, I had to come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to see it. Crushing the party. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 plant their own food, understanding that if what you reap is what you sow, you know? So it's, it's beautiful to, to know that the children now are believing the natural way of life and giving back in community. And they can teach us as growing us because they've started at such a young age. It is beautiful, I love it. Hey, buddy, I was just talking about you. Hey, I was just talking about you, huh? Paul needs you? This is Sarah. Hi. She was my roommate at Source Farm, my baby girl, little sister. Oh, nice. Respect, respect. Sarah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what is, what are you, since what you were telling me, you were telling me about the brain food. Is grandma? No. Oh, well, she's a great she, saleswoman. She's a salesperson for the whole market. Oh, that's why you're so healthy. Can, should I try this? Is this a sample? Okay, I'm gonna try your sample. Beautiful. Right. If health is wealth, here's a million bucks. <laughs> what right. is this one? This is sorrel, and it is raw, meaning that there is no um, sugar, no processing, no You just water. blended it instead of yes. boiling it. Yes, okay. and it has pimento. Wow. Pimenta and ginger. Wow. Anyone else wants to try? Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. No, that's People really... need to stop boiling it. No, no, yeah, you need to stop yeah. boiling it. I'm just interested in about what's this, tamarind? No, no, this is turmeric and ginger. And this is for inflammations and infections. Wow. Right? You gotta, it has got to have a room. Now, this keeps dealing with the infections and inflammation you know what? for four I want... hours. Can I have a bottle of this? And this must be immune yeah. boosting, too, yeah, right? Let's move on. Let's we move want on. this, though. I'm taking okay. this one with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is for life. Our... <laughs> Can I take. Yeah, 
Yeah, Sherry, yeah, we need this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 this no, is for life. Are yeah. you kidding me? These are all formulas. This one took me 15 years to come up with. Are these your own formulas? Oh, no, my formulas. Uh, I have to have one of these too. Wow. We, we're taking this with us. No, we, 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 you want to just come with us? <laughs> I can. Are you kidding me? Health is well. I spend a lot of Health time is on well. that product. Okay, me. Yeah. What is this one? This is my power shake. It's a milkshake. It has coconut milk, almond milk, cocoa, banana, avocado. Oh, and my milk. word. So it has all the nutrients. It's a meal replacement. Wow. And it tastes like pistachio ice cream. <laughs> You this know what? So you know what? Let's come with us. You see, wait a minute. You see that little girl? Yeah. You see little my yeah. little friend there? Yeah. That she came over there and tapped me and said, I need to come here. It's almost like she knew my inner self. Yes. She brought and we to need healing. this. She brought you to healing. Oh this we is so need good. Oh my yes, you so know, I'm here every week. I got this one and this one. It's one a one shot right vibes. Because that's how it's formulated. All and right. it keeps the blood levels up for four hours. Perfect. And the perfect time to take this, morning, noon, Anytime. or night. Anytime. Because this is food. All right. It's not medicine that you have to have something in the stomach you know, or other. You know something? Yeah. You know what? Natural ah, meaning. I like Simple this. Shit. I really, it feels good to see some amazing people sharing their knowledge and their craft with everyone. Now that we have everything for tonight, Sheree says that I have one more special person to meet, her friend, Jason. Every time she comes to the market, she stops by a stand to grab a vegan bite and some food for thought. Hey, Aight. Aight. Hey, Aight. Jason. Yeah, what's up? You okay? I'm good. What you get? What you having, Jay? Growing up in Jamaica, you're forced to be creative. That's all. Even when you're young, you create your toys, them, and, and everything. I call this the right bite. So the bread is made from grounded walnut. So this is how I do the burger. Sometimes I call it a banana burger because there's no gluten in it to, to hold it together. Then I bless it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm from I'm from Saint Mary, way up in the country, you know. So to be in Kingston doing this, it's a blessing. So I act that way, you know. That was amazing. Jason's idea of mixing a little banana in the crust, a little aki in the spread, gives this burger a fresh and original flavor. I give thanks to the fullness of this right bite. So it's really for the people who don't like vegan, who think it tastes bad the young people them and, and make it as well because positive thing should be in, you know? All the negative, the gangster thing, all of that is in. Why can't these things be in? So that's the concept behind it. I don't know where it come from that vegan supposed to not taste good mm. and the chemical taste better, you know? So that's what I try to bring out. Thank you. It's like you, bless you, bless you, guys. Yeah, man, give thanks. And I really appreciate this Master moment. Master you know? I love. Upright. Bless you. Yeah, man. Vital is vital, man. That's you right. You know, this is the new way, man. Yes. This is the future of this land. If we want to live together and love each other, yeah. we have to first start taking care of the earth. Yes. We start blessing one another. Like this place here is a blessing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's so right. nice, yeah, man. man. That, wow. That's that, that good for me, ego, you know? Very <laughs> encouraging, you know? <laughs> me give you the, the physical food here, give me soul food. <laughs> soul food. You yeah, man. Straight from one, the father, you know? One together, yeah, brother. Yeah, man. We need each other, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> After the break, the cookout. Well, more like the raw out. <laughs> I love to watch everybody cook. Today we're in Kingston. After going to Yajima Market with Cherise to pick up some fresh and organic products, we're back at the villa getting ready for tonight's cookout. I was inspired by Janine's vision today and I invited her to join our circle and she brought along her friend Kumar Bent, leader of Raging Fire. Kumar is not only resonating on an international level with his band, earning a Grammy nomination in 2016, but also locally in Jamaica, creating the Wiki Wacky Festival. It's a blessing to have all these young and bright minds gathered together. I can't wait to explore Jamaica's future with them. I want to know what inspired you to start the Wiki Wacky Music Festival. The inspiration to start a live event in Jamaica as a band seven years ago came from not having the opportunity to play on shows in Jamaica because we never had a platform, you know? We just make a stage for ourselves and invite a bridge in them, we sister them. Yeah. And you know, when it just started 2010, we had five people watching. 
And in 2014, we had 3,000. Five people on the train? No way. No, 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 no. no. No, you know why I laugh? Before there was the Ziggy Marley Melody Makers, they were the Melody Makers. And I remember going to the first ever show they ever did. It was way, way up in the mountains in like, I don't know where, St. Mary. And it was a big concert. It was about 20 people. So the reason I laugh is because when you said 2014, how you had how many thousands? About 2,000. Right. It's, it's because... It's not about the people, you know? It's not about the five people. It's about the passion and the love of music. Because, yeah, it's not like, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. I just want to play. You want to come listen? Come listen, you know? So that's why I laugh, you know what I mean? Because I, I feel a passion, yeah, for music, you know? Not true. Yeah, man. I mean, Kumar and Raging Fire did something really revolutionary. Like, a apart from Uncle Billy, who yeah, is out by Jamnesia and every other week them play music with the family. Like, Raging Fire was out by Wiki Wacky Beach every Sunday night. Not every Sunday yeah, night? Every Sunday for a year. Every Sunday for Free. a year. And this is why when you see the youth they get nominated for Grammy, I say, yeah, man, they put in them work. Yeah. Every night. When it was a little bit of people till it grew and it became a part of the culture. And it was happening at the same time when many of the youths were kind of falling in line and falling into place and seeing the thing as a calling and a mission and a togetherness and all of these things were framing it at the same time. So it's like, for their festival to come on now, it's almost like patriotic to support. Like, you have to go out there, you know? It's a great vibe, man. We get a lot of support, so we can't complain, so we give thanks. <laughs> and it's still happening. Foundation. Yeah. Time for food. Sharice is a raw vegan chef, so we're doing her version of tacos, the rockers. We're gonna use it for the tacos. It's going into a oh, salsa. Oh, we're making tacos? Yeah, what? Oh, sorry. Rockers. Oh, <laughs> I got cilantro for the tomato salsa. Come on, darling. You know anything about a fire? <laughs> of course, he's a lion. <laughs> oh. Go on. What's gonna happen over there is going to be magic. In this recipe, we're gonna mock meat using organic walnuts and Mexican seasoning. Mm. Somebody, I get show up. What? what do you mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Lion work. He's whoa, whoa. doing All right. the lion work here. Knife nice skills. Are you seeing that? Knife nice skills. Kamar is preparing avocado topping guacamole style. I love to watch everybody cook. I'm going to enjoy the food at the end of this all. What's your fondest musical memory? Oh, great. Of your father. All right. So. Like, when I was a young boy, one particular time my father had a concert for the youths, like a, a developing like a, some youth organization. Okay. And my father sent a message that he wanted me to come to the show, and it was at um, the stadium there. That's kind of a, I'm a little bit in trouble, so <laughs> I'm kind of afraid of my dad a little bit. <laughs> so he was very serious? Yeah, he was very stern. serious, very stern. So I'm standing on the side of the stage and I'm dancing kind of a little bit. And it came to the point where it was like the time when I need to go on the stage, you know? So I went on the stage. I remember, you know, I stand next to my father and I was skanking. And I remember looking, I remember him on the mic looking over him and I was like, ah, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't have came on the stage. <laughs> and I just remember that he walked off the stage, I'm standing there dancing alone. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was my one experience on the stage with my father. Thank you. Janine is traveling the world with her music. I'm curious to know what she likes about touring. And that's testament to the culture too. Like I think that every single person that comes to me is somebody that I need to learn something from. Even if them come to learn something from me, like everybody is my teacher. When I travel, I try to connect with the women around the world just to learn, you know, and to see how are we different? How do our challenges and our cultures make us different, make us similar, make us stronger, create a limitation, you know? So those conversations are so important now. And here in Jamaica, I, I see more and more of the females gathering in that kind of healing way. And it's a powerful thing. It's really about saying, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go into my phone book and invite all the women that I, kind of like or maybe even have an issue with to just be a part of a group and we just start having an open and then conversation. And don't have issues with each other anymore. No, and then <laughs> and then the issues get a chance to work out otherwise it's so easy for us to ignore each other and yeah, sometimes like, but ignore I like you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why community is so crucial now because the work that needs to be done 
by the sisterhood, you can't do it without each other. Like, you can't go around it, so it's not even for personal goals. All right, time to make the rockers and share them with the community. See? Okay, first you must use the char to do the taco shell. Walnut meat, Mexican style. The tomato salsa. The avocado topping. Then Cherise adds my favorite cashew cheese. Whoa. Hemp seeds. And their ita touched with edible flowers. Bon appetit. There you go. There you go. Rocco. Can I try it? Go ahead. It's on the counter. It's a sprinkle thing. Okay, thank you. All fresh and natural. That's right. Here you go, bro. Take it. Right. Taking what I'm doing, because I'm calling this for the mile and double wrap special where you do this like this, like. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, okay. Excellent. I'm so happy. Everybody this is a live. This is a live. Coming up, the Wiki Wacky Festival. This part of our journey was amazing. I felt blessed to make you discover the liberty of our land and our people. Visiting Source Farm was a life-changing experience. I'm inspired by how Nicola and Dwight are developing a sustainable future for Mother Earth and our community, sharing their knowledge and helping people grow along the way. In Cherise Rockers, I could taste all of her principles. The way her raw and living food brings balance to the body makes I think of her permaculture project and now every element is important in the circle of life. I can see a bright future for Kamar's musical career. I give thanks for his action, supporting the artists of our island. Janine's ideas are still echoing within our circle. Her strong feminine voice makes her a true icon and a role model for empresses all over this world. Our future lays is in their vision, their hands, and their voice. Blessed love. And I think more people need to be more creative and, and, and that will help the world as well. Because in creativity, there's no competition. Because you create your own thing and you have a signature thing and nobody else have that. So that's what I do. Yeah man, so it's all natural and nice, you know, so it's a blessing to be in a place like this, you know? Yeah, so that's how I do my food every time. It's a blessing feeling, you know? Good morning, Ja. I and I give thanks for this blessed day. May all the land be touched by your presence, beauty, and power. Keep I and I protected from Babylon tricks and adversity. Give I and I strength to survive another day in Babylon. Bless I and I that I may maintain a positive, loving, caring, and cheering spirit as I serve you, Ja, on this blessed day. Rastafar, I and I and I. Meet Balram Baswani, a.k.a. Bali, a close friend of the family and co-founder of Mali Coffee. I met him through my brother Kimani, but actually, he went to school with my youngest brother, Damien. Now, Bali is a natural-born entrepreneur and a really savvy businessman, just like I. <laughs> so years ago, when the idea for Mali Coffee first came about, he was the first person I reached out to. You know, I think people don't realize I don't think they realize how I even get, got into what I'm doing today, you know what I mean? I played football at Miami. 
after Miami, I went into the CFL Canadian Football League. I did that one year, but I started to get in touch with myself, you know, in a way that I couldn't find the energy anymore to really create that contact, right? So in the evenings, after my football practice, I go play soccer with my Jamaican friends in Ottawa. And then one day, man, I just decided that was it, you know, no more football. But I still didn't have a purpose. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. This is 1995. I jumped on the road with my brothers. I became a roadie. I started to do that, you know. And then I met a beautiful young lady, you know. I remember. <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Hill. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she's amazing. I remember. <laughs> but the thing about it was that, you know, when we started out together, she was just getting ready to do her first album. And I myself didn't know what I was doing. She was already a part of a big group, the Fugees. So I didn't know what I was doing with my own life, you know? This time I'm living in New Jersey because Lauren is on the road. And I'm like a house husband. All I do is take care of the kids. I'm like a chauffeur at the time. You know what I mean? That's yeah. which is a great job of her doing. Looking after family is not a problem. It's a great, I had a great job, great yeah. gig, <laughs> but it just wasn't doing enough. So she kind of said to me one day, you know, what do you do? I'm like, what do you mean, what do I do? I take care of these kids, what do you mean? <laughs> She's well, like, no, 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 no. You look no. after your brothers each day, you're you know, with them every day, you but, just left a but, but she was more being more like, like, come on, you have so much potential. And be true to yourself. I knew I had a lot to offer to the world. I guess I was just waiting for a sign. And that's when a friend of mine told me about some land for sale in the mountains. So, a virgin said to me, man, it's a beautiful farm. And at the time, right, I just received $200,000 from dad's publishing. Mm. So I'm like, how much is the land? He says, $200,000. I said, I got $200,000. <laughs> I'm like, I can entertain this. So I said, okay, I want to take a trip to Jamaica. So I walk on the property. The first thing I noticed on the property was all the fruit trees, pineapple, I saw the, all of the apple trees on the ground, all the seedlings. I'm like, wow, maybe I can create a pineapple juice. Wow, maybe I can do this damn um, apple butter, this and that. I'm like, wow, I don't have to spend any money because the, the, the seedlings are all there. But obviously, I don't know anything about farming. So I asked the community, let me ask you something. What is the community known for? They said, coffee. I said, coffee? Coffee like oil? They said, yes, Mr. Marley, man. Coffee. I said, let me ask you something. What's on my property? He said, coffee. Blue Mountain coffee. You know anything about coffee? Yes, Mr. Marley. We've been farming coffee all our lives. I stuck my hand out. He yeah. said, all right, we're in the coffee business. And that's the story behind Marley Coffee. Well, at least the beginning of the story. Now that you know how it started, let me show you my farm on the north side of the Blue Mountain of Chepstow. This is the coconut from my land, which is a young coconut, it's beautiful. Not because of size makes it old, but it's young. Cut this into, brother. Let me eat the jelly. These are the community, brother. This is Painter. Painter's my right-hand man. He was born and raised here in Chepstow. He knows everything about this place. He's the farm supervisor, so when I'm away, I know the property's in good hands. He's the man I shook hands with years ago when all this started. Now, if you guys are in the area, feel free to stop and ask for Painter. He'll show you around. That's how he is. So this is where I'm gonna build my house. And I'm gonna live happily ever after right here in this jungle, in this community, by myself, alone. I don't wanna see anyone. <laughs> the Blue Mountains are the longest mountain range in Jamaica, producing some of the best coffee in the world. Only beans harvested between 3,000 and 5,000 feet. And from the parishes of St. Andrews, St. Thomas, Portland, and St. Mary can be certified Blue Mountain coffee. The combination of the cool, misty climate and the high average rainfall and rich soil makes it ideal for growing coffee. The thing is, all the picking has to be done by hand because the terrain is so steep and rugged that machinery can't really be used around here. So the process goes like this. First the picking, when the fruit goes from green to bright red, like a cherry, that's when it's ripe for picking. What we really want is the bean that's inside the fruit. So from there begins the pulping process, which can be done manually or by using a pulper. After that, the beans are dried, then hulled, and finally roasted. All that's left to do is to grind and grow that delicious cup of Blue Mountain coffee. So, Pinta, 
So you know the reason I buy this place. If it wasn't for the community, oh my G. Oh my G. That's what sustainability is about. Look at the beauty, man. See, this is what I appreciate, love. This is beauty to me. I love it. This is beautiful. Where's my phone? I need to film something. Look at this. This is part of the reason I bought this land. But there's more to it. One of the things I like most about my land is definitely the river and its waterfall. It's like a ritual. Every time I come here, I have to jump in for a swim. It's like jumping into the universe, tuning in with Mother Earth. Actually, the inspiration for this series came from this waterfall. I was reflecting about its beauty when I felt the urge to unveil the unknown wonders of Jamaica to the world. Coming up, I'll give you my secret recipe for the perfect cup of coffee. Add a tinch of salt. <laughs> salt. My dream of becoming uh, a fashion guy, make clothes and sell clothes, that failed. My dream to become a football player, that failed. My dream to play a soccer team, be on the soccer team in Jamaica, that failed. But all that changed when I partnered up with Bally and the Sharp Brothers. I thank God for you, because you know why I thank God for you? Because when we started out in 1999, yeah. When I understood nothing about business in Jamaica and how to really take this farm on and I brought you into my life, dude, to really help me to become, like, become my business partner. This is Clifton Mount Estate. It's the oldest continually functioning coffee estate in Jamaica. At 4,300 feet above sea level, it produces some of the finest Blue Mountain coffee. The property belongs to Richard and Jason Sharp, two of my business partners in Mali Coffee. We're right now on the Juniper Peak, yeah. probably fetched from the most expensive Blue Mountain coffee. The coffee from this area, yeah. you know, is sent to Japan, uh -huh. roasted and put into champagne bottles. No way. Small batches. What? Talk about coffee. Oh, look at these trees, look at these leaves, bro. No, no, healthy. Everything healthy. is healthy. This is a healthy crop. Yeah, healthy, very healthy. This is where you planted one of your first trees. <laughs> Yeah, they think it's a joke, Bally. What does it say, Balram Vaswani? January 15, 2013. 2013. I'm proud of myself. Look, and Bally, what, is you see? what do you see here? That's the Rainforest Certified Seal. I think our future is bright, bro. Look at our beans, man. Look, look, we're here at Clifton Mount Estates, the birthplace of Blue Mountain Molly Coffee. This, this has to be our birthplace, I mean. And then to tie back into just the history of this place and the people, the community, man. I get chills when I talk about this stuff. No. Sustainability is extremely important to I, and Marley Coffee had to reflect that. As a Rainforest Alliance certified company, we take pride in knowing that through our business, we help to protect the environment, the wildlife, and the people that live off the land. So is that helping the community? Are they getting more yielding? What, well, I what's mean, the change? I, well, I think the first thing is that, I mean, what we're doing for the land and what we're leaving behind first. I mean, the community is one, but if we keep taking out the land, we're not going to have anything left. Sure. So what we're doing is creating a balance within the land first. The communities itself help because, I mean, if we're using water management practices by not putting our wash and acid water into the rivers and people can still use that water for cooking and eating and stuff like that, and we're cleaning it through, you know, taking it through our plants and our flowers, that's a great practice of working within the community. So you're telling me coffee is actually really helping communities like yeah no if we have to take it and we look on it i mean when we first started we were paying 2500 dollars for a box of coffee right you know last year a box of coffee in the same region fell between 10 and 12 thousand dollars wow so the livelihood i mean wow. like it's, you know really that is better for the farmer why is that because of the coffee became a scarcity well, we had what two, happened we had two we had first of all we had sandy that kind of came through although it didn't hit directly yeah it shook up the whole farms it shaked everything back everybody had to cut back to get the trees then you're looking right after that you know we're having a time of drought we never really had that system of going through a whole year of drought and so mm -hmm. the demand has just been so high and the supply just you know had gone down but what this did though it put everybody to work and re rehabilitate so many old farms mm. that were sitting getting back in and because you know, of the price increase I was happy to hear that we have a positive impact on the people around us. It's a real blessing. Fair treatment, good working conditions go hand in hand with our principles as Rastafari. And it's important for I to know that the communities are being taken care of. 
These workers are the backbone of our country. Around here, coffee's not just a drink. It's a livelihood. It's food on the table. It's clothes on your back. And it's a responsibility to make sure future generation can benefit from what we are doing. Bali and I see eye to eye on a lot of things, but we don't really agree on what makes the perfect cup of coffee. Let me ask you something. Be honest. Mm. What's the perfect cup of coffee? Give me your interpretation because we have battled a few times. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, definitely between the morning and the evening cup. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but my perfect cup yeah. especially has to be Blue Mountain Coffee. Not only because that this is where we're here, we've watched it growing and how it's it natural. feels, but it's such a balanced cup. When you can have that balanced taste and you get those sweet notes of those cherries and a little nutmeg and those flavors around and you, you know and more and more you get to appreciate this coffee is you know for me more than a rush is something that you take your time to enjoy you know it's like reading a good book. So Ro, what's your perfect cup of coffee? My perfect cup of coffee. Well, obviously, I didn't grow up a coffee drinker. You know, when I went to Ethiopia. I realized that Ethiopia coffee was a part of the culture. And at noon, everyone was in a coffee shop. So I started to dibble and dabble in coffee, but it was kind of the, a little short shot, and I really, it was like very, it's too strong for me. So when I came back to California, I started to make my own concoction. And this is my favorite cup of coffee. Use a French press, get the Blue Mountain coffee, add a tinch of salt. Salt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little nutmeg, a little nutmeg. Then I add a little bit of vanilla. You know, I don't, I don't eat meat and I don't like dairy so much. So it was like almond milk at the time. And a little bit of agave. And a little type of vanilla. <laughs> but I've since grown into now like in black coffee after all those years because it takes too long to make my perfect cup. So I found another perfect cup. I have two perfect cups. <laughs> my other perfect cup is a straight black coffee with a little tap of cane sugar. I know the coffee guys are going to be like, oh, no sugar, but you know, I'm Jamaican, got sugar cane, a little tap of cane sugar in my coffee. I get a perfect cup out of that too. <laughs> Sounds nice, man. Don't judge me, guys. <laughs> Everyone is free to have it his way. When we come back, old friend of my father reminiscing about the days when my father used to beat them at soccer. <laughs> the guys are now headed to another special place in the Blue Mountains called It's Cafe. It's a unique farm-to-table restaurant where everything they serve is organic and grown on location in the mountains. It's also a guest house and a music venue. When in the region, stop by and ask for Michael or Robin. If you're looking for an inspiring place to chill, hang out and feel the energy of the Blue Mountains, this is it. Massive vibes. We used to play football with Bob Marley at Police Officers Club. I'm a little boy then. And we've come from Uptown, Cherry Gardens and Norbrook. Bob Marley come from Trenchtown. But we always beat him up. We, uh, he couldn't, his football team couldn't beat us. No, no, no. But I don't believe that, though. I don't believe that story. 100. Yeah, right, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> we warming up something here. Once it warm up, yeah. we brush it. What's this? Pot cover. I want you some. Rasta, can you eat that? Can you eat them things that fire? Are the big, <laughs> are the big fish this? I like, I like Dr. Fish Hour. Pot cover. Outer dark fish? Yeah, man. How this Bob used to eat? The Wenchman. Yeah. yeah. How this Bob eat? Yeah, we love Wenchman. I don't... There's no word to describe my dad. I mean, he is a character. He's a hard-working man, fun-loving. He gives a lot of trouble, <laughs> but he's great. He's really... He's good vibes. I'm Robin Fox, co-owner of 17 Mile Post, home of Mount Edge Guest House, Eats Cafe and Restaurant, and Food Basket Farms. My dad loves entertaining, and he'd always cook up lots of food and share and invite people in. It really just ironically just became bed and breakfast, and he kind of expanded slowly. I studied hospitality, and I've always had a love for tourism and um, showcasing Jamaica, and real Jamaica. 
because a lot of people think Jamaica is sand, sun and sea, but it's more than that. Even more so now with the Blue Mountains being a heritage site, it's even more recognized. We needed a cafe, you know, to feed our guests as the guest house expanded. And then the farm to table concept is just something me and dad both love and just wanted to incorporate because it's nice to be able to pick your salads, herbs, produce fresh from the garden and cook right away and get the real true flavor. This is remarkable, seeing a community coming together, being able to farm, to run a restaurant and a guest house here in the Blue Mountains. Man, it requires a lot of resilience. I love it. So then, I've been hearing wonderful things about everything, the food, how your dad started this place. Now I need to see the farm. All right, let's so, go check it out. Lead the way. I always love the idea of being self-sufficient and growing your own food. You know what? Farming is one of the things that really represents my principles to the fullest. This one? Yeah. Well, all right. Rasta food. Oh, it's spinach. What's the name of this one? Red Malabar spinach. Red Malabar spinach. Oh, yeah, this is organic. What's this? This is black mint, just like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that? Mmm. Anyone have any liquor? This is the item mojito. <laughs> <laughs> so what else are you growing? You're growing... Garlic see, chives. Garlic chives. And what else? Select. Mixed greens. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's the garlic. Garlic chives I like. Yes. Oh, you're right. You're so right. Mm -hmm. Flavorful. Are we going to have this in our meal today? Yes. Yeah, Blue Mountain is a nice place. It's a special place where everybody hear about and they like to come about and to see it and see what it's like. Wait, come on. Let's do one more. One more, my Robin. I asked for food. Give me the snow, please. Come on. Give me the snow. Ah, oh, the snow, please. I said I was hungry. You could eat the skin too. Oh, I could eat the skin too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Seasoning. My chives. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing, you know. But this is life, you know what I mean? And so this is Ita life and mm -hmm. Ita living. So one should eat life, you know. We're living beings and we should put life in life. So, you know, I'm laughing, I'm smiling because I'm happy. Yeah. Let me feel the energy from the food, you know, from, from the hand and to my hand and to my mouth. I mean, from the earth, actually, you know. So it's the life force that why I'm so happy. You know I mean, I love the life force and yeah. the energy because I eat this, it's like, it's like give me tingles. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Straight to the bloodstream. <laughs> when you collect gold from the earth with a bare hands and a loving heart, nothing tastes as harmonious and lively. I'm not kidding. Please go to your local farmer market, meet the people, taste their products, and enjoy the fullness of your soil. I'm so grateful that Robin and her crew take such good care of us. Coming up, I'll be in the kitchen with Joy, find the potato croquettes, and myself. Oh, yeah. I used to burn me up. We're at It's Cafe in the Blue Mountain, a farm, a guest house, a music venue owned by Robin and her father. Who would have thought the Blue Mountains could have gave us this love? <laughs> this is better than coffee. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sorry. I'm not here to fool and come back. I'm just trying. Don't try it. Don't go away, man. Let's not try it. Oh, hi. You're here? What are we having? Lots Any? of goodies. Lovely. Let's see. Let's see. Salad. Oh, Lord. Hi. Hi. I'm Joy. I start working here on the farm and from the farm to the kitchen. Yeah, I put nice dishes. I'm the top chef. She's a small <laughs> training her and mania. Yeah, like when I have a lot of people, yeah, come and help. We love the Blue Mountain. It's very nice up here, but at night, very cold. And you can leave your house, go and come back. Nothing missing. You have good people up here. What do you want me to try? What is this one? This is the potato croquettes. Oh, the potato puppets. Croquettes. <laughs> <laughs> you crush the potato, cut up the parsley, put it in, salt, and you do it like this. And what else? Now remember, I was always really skilled when it came on to putting on a helmet and going on a football field. 
but not so much when it was time to put on an apron and step into the kitchen. But I guarantee you, by the end of this trip, I'll be the kitchen's MVP. Nervous of oil. Okay, got it. You know, Joy, mine's broke. But it's okay. Whoa, Joy, I'm a little afraid of the oil. I went as a kid when I used to fry like chicken fat. Yeah. I used to burn me up the chicken fat when I was a little boy. You know, I wasn't always a vegan, Joy. Yeah. Back in the day, I used to have to buy chicken back. You know them things that? Yes. Thank you, Joy. You're welcome, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any sauce to go with this, Joy? Yeah, I'm going to show you the sauce. I, had now, these, I remember the these. Joy, I remember these from earlier. This is yeah. from the farm. Yeah. I'm going to show you how to do the pesto now, the olive oil. So, this is parsley? Parsley, walnuts. Walnuts, yes. Olive oil. Yes. Okay. Just a little okay. salt. Joy, Joy you're scared. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Joy, you don't have to cover your... Oh, okay, okay. So who would be the sous chef, Joy? Who? You're the sous chef? <laughs> Good, thank you. All right, and then we are the... Top chef. Top chef. And this is the pesto. This is the pesto. That looks good. Yummy. Delish. Oh, man. All right, food is ready. Time to eat. Oh, what a kiss. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. That was delicious. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> wow. Like, you know what? Before I sit down, let me just, like, look in the mountains and... There's no other place in the world like Jamaica. No. Like, I tell you, and I mean, in the Blue Mountains, there's not a place like this. I mean, look at this. Wow, it's hard to even turn my back to this place. <laughs> oh, thank you, Viva. The good old Irish moss on the go. But this is one of my father's favorite drinks. Irish yeah? Moss, yeah? And again, the best place to get this is Jamaica, because most people, they don't even know the the essence in the Irish moss, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of my little things I like. <laughs> so what are we having? We're gonna have mixed green salad. Yes. And uh, herb pesto as yes. a dressing. And then for the main course, we're gonna have some wait, roast fish. Wait, wait, hold on, Robin. Now, this is our national bird right there. Right, Robin? Yeah. And he came to see us. But, okay. <laughs> I, you know what? The bird distracted me a little bit and the, everything else behind us. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. You're welcome. Lovely. Oh, such a beautiful presentation. So that's the mixed green salad. There's some premium salad leaves in there too, which are those spicy ones. Right. What challenges do you find trying to run your business here? Like, how difficult is it? Well, in Jamaica, per se. In Jamaica, it's a little difficult. I think I have an advantage living up here in the mountains with the community and family and helping each other. But in terms of um, just in general running a business here, it's, it's usually about the time, the turnover time. Everything takes a lot of time. It's challenging. Right. Well, I'm sure like you being here with your dad, that has to like make mm -hmm. things a little easier, no? Yeah, yeah. Because you said family, so I was, you know. Yeah, you know. and my dad has a lot of experience, sure. so I learn a lot from him, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I've been learning a lot from him, too. <laughs> you know, growing up, right, and of course your father, Rastaman, eat a certain way, you know? Yeah. Calabash, beetroot, ital, every, everything ital. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then when I went to America, I went to my grandmother's house, and I opened up her, her bread thing and I saw sliced bread. Mm -hmm. I opened up the fridge, she had sliced turkey meat, this and that, and the third, you know, lovely. I <laughs> started eating that thing. So about five months into moving to Miami, my grandmother did like stop everything. Like we were growing our own sprouts in the, in the, in the kitchen. Nice. She just went totally, totally vegan. Mm -hmm. No fish, no nothing. So I was like, wow. So for me, as a, as a young boy, it wasn't a punishment, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was a drastic change. And after college, I find myself getting more conscious in my own well-being and having more knowledge about how I want to prolong my life right. as a human being, you know? Yeah. So I said, you know what? If it's life we're dealing, we have to eat life for us mm -hmm. because, you know, the digestive system and so on. So I started picking up on those little small details 
And I'm like, you know what? It's time to return to being an ITEL. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> I got the doctor fish. Even though I'm vegan 70% of the time, mm -hmm. I love a nice roast fish. Because when I come to Jamaica, I have to have the you fish. Have it's the fish, best yeah. fish in the world. Where, where did we get this fish, you know? It's got to be seaside. Yeah, for sure, seaside. <laughs> <Like> seaside, 100%. <laughs> You know, um, you know what I love the most of everything being here with you. You know, it's the community responsibility and that sustainable movement. Mm -hmm. It's more than growing produce. It's also about growing the people in the community, mm -hmm. and that's beautiful. But the one thing I really want to experience mm -hmm. is your delivery service. You told me about the list of folks you have on your delivery. Mm -hmm. Let's go yeah. deliver to one of them. Yeah. That. What's yeah. it? Who are we going to see? We're going to Gossie, Gossie Clark. Gossie Clark. Another amazing thing about It's Cafe is their delivery service. So everyone in Kingston has access to their freshly picked organic produce. Viva! Gossie, you know? Since I was going forward to the city anyway, I offered to handle her next delivery myself. I got this. All right, let's go. <laughs> when we return, I'll take you to meet legendary recording producer Gussie Clark. Stay tuned. Since this morning, I drove up to the Blue Mountains to unveil some of the hidden beauties from my farm in Chepstow to Clifton Mount Estate and the grand finale at its cafe. Now I'm driving down to the city back to Kingston because like I promised on this trip, in this show, I make you discover the places, but also the people who have shaped and are still shaping Jamaica's culture. Let's meet one of them, recording producer, Gossie Clark, who has worked with everyone from Big U, Dennis Brown, to Gregory Isaac, and who happens to be on Robin's delivery list. You, ready? Check Gossie, come on. Ah! Run! <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'll do a long time in the same. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, thank you for inviting us to your place. I brought you fresh produce from It's Cafe. Robin, I went into the farm today and it was just beautiful. And she told me that you're one of her customers and yeah, she have a delivery system. So I said, why can't I do delivery? <laughs> So that I can get a VIP treatment. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's an honor though, because you don't know. Legendary status. Legendary oh, status. Oh, my brother, man. I was just on a jam rock cruise with my brothers. <laughs> and guess who spent hours and hours and hours? Big youth. It was the greatest experience. And now this, mm -hmm. yo, it's like, um, it's like a dream, you know what I mean? I'll introduce you to Big Youth later in this show. It's amazing to see that despite the legendary statues, they're still in Jamaica making music and doing what they love. Seeing? You know, seeing, seeing, seeing. But the beautiful thing is that all of us are here. Yeah, you know? that's true. And we still do what we love and we don't have to complain. Take right. too much energy yeah, yeah. to complain. Love man. That, love this that. is why for me, me think my juice something is important. You yeah. understand? Because it gets to a point in life worse when you pass 50, you know, where you realize that there are certain fundamental things you have to give priority to. And for me, is what may I eat, what may I drink. Yeah. So if something wrong and a delivery don't come from eat, me have a little problem. <laughs> because it's like, you know. Well, we pick this for you especially today. Why, well, brother, me appreciate it, man. <laughs> but I could just make some juice Please. now. <laughs> yeah, because watch it. No, you have to get a little wet too, you know. <laughs> a part of the process, man. Man, everything natural. Natural food from eat. Man, you don't get some butter. butter. When the original times when Sapata making, I was around, you know, when we give it to Steve, you know, I'm making it for you guys next door. I was always in the mix of getting the new juices and anything that was going to be tried, I was there in the beginning, you know? True. Yeah. Been there, Marlon been there a long time. You know Marlon? Marlon's my good friend. We went to school together. We, well, he's a little older than I am. You can see that. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but you know my youth to Billy. Billy. I'm a son, you know. Hold on there. Billy Clark, I'm a boy. No, no, no. I'm a son, man, I'm a son. No well, well, that's what my mother says still, you know. We want it. My mother says so. Yo, Billy. Billy, Billy, you want to know a funny story, bro? What, man? 
You know, I know your father was a big time producer, right? Yeah. But I just never put it together that it was Gussie. I never, yeah. I just. <laughs> that's the funniest thing ever in life, bro. So I'm sitting here with your dad. Hey, that's you know, Billy. I'm saying, yeah. I'm a boy, I'm a bro, stuff all right. <laughs> yo, 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 it's like tears coming in my eye. What a joy, man, to finally yeah, meet man. your pops after all these years. We Jamaicans take our juice seriously. It's a part of our culture, and every family has its own recipes. But we use nothing but the best ingredients, fresh from the farm, fresh from the mountain. Aital is vital. When I see Gussie green juice, it reminds me of my father's concoction. Oh man, I hope it doesn't taste the same though. <laughs> it's delicious. Mm. But can I tell you something? This takes me back to my youth days when my father would push this green thing in my face. Trust me. I didn't just sip it so easily then. Take me three hours to drink something like this. <laughs> fantastic, also fantastic. Bottom of bread, I'm hand. This type of living, mm. if humanity can really adapt to certain of these principles that we take care of ourselves through health and consciousness, planting our food, going back to sustainability, sufficing life. This is some of the things that the, the universe needs, man. And, and you're so eloquent with it, though. You're so, is it, you just know this thing, you man. You know what eloquent? We're every week. Magical. But drink up and come and go sure, to the sure. studio, yeah, man. People can't eat in the studio and drink, but we're going to make an exception. Sure. We broke the rule for you. Bring it come, man. We have a studio, see? All right, all right. I guess I'm bringing my juice into the studio, yes, then. Yes, yes, yes. No, not really yet. No, no, really? No, not really. Oh, no, no, no. uh, man, I'm your fan, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Frank Netty, man, the up and coming artist, man. Looking out for him. Uh, release coming out soon, very, very soon. Great voice, man. This is a unique chance to get into the mind of legendary, timeless music producer, Gussie Clark. I've been around music all my life, and with this juice in my hand, <laughs> entering the studio, it felt just like home. <laughs> At 64 years old, Gussie still has the flair and the passion to discover new talent and push their music forward. Yes, we are. Then, yeah, Kevin, the artist in me and the boy can sing. <laughs> I'd like to know the difference from the 70s mm -hmm. and the music of today because in the 70s, you know, my old man, all the musicians in the studio mm -hmm. live and, you know, sometimes there's a two track or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to know the difference between that music and today's music. Yeah, what happened now is that in those days, right, we all, it was a passion, we love it. Yeah. Something we are doing, we don't even show weight or anything, but we are going to go. We don't know what we'd have evolved to be where we are, to have created anything historical. We were just creative expressions and music. We are making, we love it. And, you know, we see like you could have make a living. People are buying records, sell records, ride up and down on your bike, baba, them look Shop tough gang on B Sand Street yeah. and Chancellor and Mirona B Sand Street and Lovely and we are going yeah. around to sell some record and yeah. KG. So it's just all love and passion. The game changed now where technology has made it a bit different. More accurate, but not necessarily better. Right. Because Feel you had musicians then, you have a guy who can program uh, software sure. and same as a musician. To me, the creativity that existed there is not here right now. One thing that made it, our music great was the collaboration of so much different creative people, you know, separate basements, separate, there's all creative sure. synergies coming sure. together, sure. create a unique product. Sure. That's what made our music unique and impacted the world. Right. I believe that yeah. we can do a lot better in terms of our creative um, structures. And one of the things that I do for example, my engineer, Mario, yes, he and I share about 75% the same creative spirit. So we're doing something and we're working on something and it just twists and turns another way because Mario said, let's try it this way. And I said, yeah, not a bad idea. And then we try it. So sometimes we don't even show we are the but we just said, no worry about Mario. I said, no worry about it. We'll work it out. It's cool. And it work out. I believe first and more than anything else, a song make it a singer. 
song come first, singer after. Because I don't care how you great. If 35 years after them death, Bob Marley has sell more record than everybody put together today, then something wrong no one did right, then they need to go find out what it is. Because you can't beat historical facts. A man I tell me I have a number one tune and I sell 5,000. A joke. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the quality of content <laughs> is king. So if you are not looking at what I'm going to involve and develop in it because, oh, me like it and me write it and that's good enough. That is not good enough. You have to make sure the song is great, it's going to impact, it's going to resonate, it's going to reach people. It's not just about you. Gossip found a way to reach generations of people from the 70s up to now with productions from Shabba Ranks, Akon and Rihanna. So people have to get back to that basic of understanding what made us unique and our music unique that it impacted the world. And that's just the reality of it. Wow. <laughs> One is the thing I like with him, love with him, his writing is different. Not necessarily better, but different. Sure. No, difference matters. Anybody can do anything you and I are doing, but you and I will do it differently, and the difference is what will bring success or failure. Sure. So I just love his writing skill. Let's hear the original reggae from Weird Talco. Mario. <laughs> What kind of life is this? I've been trying so long Just to find someone I can call my own All right, hold on, hold on. Nobody has sing out too much. Stop. Nobody has sing out too much, man. Yeah. I tell you, man, it's every time. So, you know, great. glad you guys came Thank in you. and it's and you all know good. And you want to know something? I'm hoping to see you at Eats Cafe later because... Robin had called and said something about it. It's a pleasure to be there, man. Yeah, so it's a pleasure, man. The senior How we can pick up on the whole crew and all of that and... I'm, we and jam I'm and sure you love lime. to chat to you some more because, <laughs> you know, you're full of info. <laughs> yeah. I, you was like my uncle, my father, everything. Yeah, it's marks from respect Extended and, family, and a legendary man. thing. Legendary. I'll definitely keep an eye out for Kevin's future project. And by the way, all the music from this episode is from Gussie's Black Foundation dub album. Go check it out. Ghana foreign, Ghana foreign, Ghana foreign, Ghana look living, Naya high. Said my mommy, go away, my papi, go into I don't know what to do, no, 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 no. You got to work so hard in the cold to make a living, why? You got to work so hard every day. Oh, I, you'd man you hear what I say. Hear this one. Gonna foreign, gonna foreign, gonna foreign, I look living. <laughs> As the night takes over in Jaland, it's time for the souls to come out and take over the city. There's two types of people in Jamaica, your typical nine to five day people, and then you have your night people, those that live for the good time. You know what? I'm both. <laughs> wow, that's why I love this place, man. Bali, you see this? this. What, what is this, bro? Huh? I wonder, I wonder if they'll ever sell this to me. No, wait. Robin, no is this your car? Robin, come on. No way. Robin, are you yeah. you up here? Daddy, yeah. Oh, I, I'm not good with driving so stick. I just drive automatic. Love so it. I have to learn so I can drive it. It's beautiful. What kind of car is it? Bug Eye Sprite. A uh, who? Bug Eye Sprite. <laughs> wow. This is the original taxi. Do not slam. Do well, not slam the door. <laughs> I could not think of a better place than its cafe to get together with my friends and celebrate the completion of my journey through the Blue Mountains. I stopped by the kitchen to ask Joy if she needed some assistance, but apparently she got everything under control. I guess she won't need my frying skills tonight. <laughs> you can definitely feel the energy of the Blue Mountains tonight and the love that our host Michael and Robin put into setting up this beautiful event. Back to the 
Seeing all my friends gathered here tonight makes me realize that my journey through the Blue Mountains actually started 19 years ago when I bought my farm and started Marley Coffee. After everything I've been through, I feel fulfilled knowing that I have finally found my way, creating a brighter path for my children and the children of our community. Called Bali, but Bali lives right there in Ochi. We're going to Ochi Ridge. We're going to see the Pudding Man. Marlon! <laughs> Joseph, let's go. We gotta go. Right. Bali, what's up, bro? I'm just now leaving Kingston on the way down. You want to meet us over by the Pudding Guy? Yep. On the road again with good old Marlon. So, yesterday we spent a day at a wedding. My good friend Roger got married. Roger Chang is a close friend of I and my brothers. His grandparents started Tasty, a restaurant chain serving traditional Jamaican food everywhere in and around Kingston, most famously for their amazing patties. Oh, this is all. Talk about, like, this is Tasty's patties. This is what we're talking about. Hey, you know what? You say it, it happens. There it is. Tasty's patties since 1966. Is there is someone eating patties? No way. Is that Tasty's patty? Oh my oh, word. word. Look at the, just, just look at your crust. Look at your crust, look at your flakes on that thing. <laughs> a patty is a pastry filled with anything from meat to fish to vegetables, cooked with spices, baked in a flaky shell. Patties and jerk chicken are some of the most popular dishes on the island and you can find them on every street corner. Oh, no, we're just stopping at the Bobman Museum real fast. This is original from six weeks. This is the home of my father that we turned into the Bob Marley Museum in 1987. Every time we hit the road, we stopped to grab a bite at One Love Cafe. Have a veggie burger? Sure. Yeah, give me a ride, Natty ride. Cinnamon, honey, nutmeg, flaxseed. Oh yeah, flaxseed is good for me. Yeah, man, rose water. Rose water as well? Yeah, man, just a tip. Tip of rose water. Don't, Don't put any rose water. No rose water. Vanilla. A little tip of vanilla. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just Beautiful. A tip. a tip of molasses. Just a tip. Great. Lovely. This looks good, brother. Okay. Mmm. Thank you. Marlon, ready? Thank you. No, Thank bro, you, man. Oh, you're not ready? I'm gonna order something. I ordered something also. No, I'm going. What are you talking about? You're not ready. We're leaving. Yeah, leave. I got the key. Bro. Love Marley's one love. Yeah, let's go. Oh, you park right by me. Good job, Marlon. Thanks, bro. You captured the smile. <laughs> <laughs> you <got> the smile. <laughs> yes, they did. All right. Oh, cheerios. Here oh, we come. Look at this road, man. I love this road. <laughs> oh, cheerios is located on the north coast of Jamaica in St. Anne's Parish, about 90 minutes from Kingston. Ochi, as we call it, was once a fishing village surrounded by waterfall. But now it's home to one of the biggest beach resort spots of the island. I'm sure you recognize Bali, one of my best friends and a partner in Molly Coffee. Here it is, just cool pudding. <laughs> this is a grocery store in the deli. Marketing the best pudding ever. People travel from all corners of the island to get a slice. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, oh that look good. Is there any milk in this pudding? Oh, oh, oh Rasta style. This is what I want to try. Oh. Ooh. Every time you cut it, I'm going to say, ooh and ow. It looks so good. I remember I used to bake pudding back in the day. But you didn't try this? No, I won't wait for the hot sweet oh, potato one around there. The hot one, the hot one. Oh, it's delicious. This one is hot. Oh, my God. This one is hot. A Rasta place, isn't it? Ah. And this is the pudding man, Mr. Wallace. You see that? The minute as a roster fire, Mr. Wallace up here. Come on. <laughs> nice meeting you guys. Yes, Mr. Wallace. Right, right. So tell us, how long you been baking pudding, man? Um, over 14 years. So I noticed like the cream and the crust and how rich it is. Where you get that recipe from? Yeah. Well, we have to kind of invent our own little style. Yeah. In the early days, nobody really understand how to get the pudding out the pot. <laughs> so we usually bake it the night before, and in the morning when it's cooled down, it's a, yeah. we take it off, take the knife and cut off because it usually burns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife, we had developed this new style, and we use the wax paper The now. wax paper. Oh. So everybody come here for the hot pudding. Hot pudding. Because in the early days, we it always get cold. cold. Never hot. <laughs> yeah. That's how we have three different type of pudding. We have potato, we have palmin, and we have toto. Toto, what is it? Okay. okay. Toto is really made out of um, coconut. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had pudding like this since I was maybe oh, four years all old. All over the world, you know. Really? It goes to Canada. Yes. It goes to England. Yes. And it goes to every state in America. Last week, the uh, week before last, mm -hmm. it was Shelly and Fraser here. Mm -hmm. You're right. You know, the week before that, Ziggy Marley's brother, um, um, Kimani. Kimani. Kimani, yeah. yeah. Uh, but but Kimani. So let me introduce myself properly. I am yeah. also Rohan Marley. Rohan Marley. <laughs> Rohan Marley. <laughs> I'm, so also Ziggy's, I'm also Ziggy's brother. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take you guys in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how we mix it. Oh, we're go that. guys, right. we're, we're going into the secret compartment. So here All we right. are. OK, so here we are. This is a little magical kitchen. Yes. The first thing we do is we put a little raisin. Add fresh coconut juice, natural vanilla extract, a pinch of salt, cinnamon. Give it a good stir then. Grate a piece of nutmeg. I used to do the same thing with coffee. Yeah. OK. When you I mix it up, bacon. I always teach them that you must taste to make sure everything is in there. Then you add the main ingredient, depending on the pudding. In this case, There's potato. No way we could grate this amount of potato. So we have a machine that shreds the potato. I used to have them grater, and I see people fall asleep on the grater. <laughs> so I said, no, this is not right. This looks like <laughs> the old, old time slavery days. So. I decided, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so I went to Miami, and I got me a machine that shreds the potato. Right. Then you blend everything together to get a smooth batter. And when it's ready, oh. sorry about that. mix it with flour, now then to the, the pot. pot. Okay. Oh, yes. And then you throw it out to your batter. Yeah. Take a look oh, at it. Wow, this amazing. is a complete pudding. And off to cooking, traditional yes. style this of coal is fire. The that you see we so mixed these up. are these are all your coal fires. All my coal fires, yes. I used one. to bake like this yeah. when I was a little boy too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is what it looks like when wow. it's complete. This is the original way. Yes, this is one of the potato. Beautiful. Okay, this is ready to serve. Yeah. This one here, you set in the fire to put on another one. Yeah, it's like... And another one. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and another one. And another one. <laughs> you get in the sample of our pudding? Yeah. What did we try, Balram? We tried the sweet potato. The sweet potato. Did you get in the cornmeal? I tried the cornmeal. get in the toto? No toto. All right, come inside. Thank you, brother. What is These, this? Those are the toto. Toto. This is going to take me back. Oh, yeah. Thank you for waiting. This is the best toto cake I ever had, though. So you got all you want to get out of the pudding, man, today? You know, except for some more pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Bally, check it out, Bally. Bally. It's a blessed. But look, it's not just I on the shirt. You got Beanie Man. This is a the, the famous camera. shirt. Miss Wallace is, what would, what would be the right terminology to say, Miss? A blind lady. Miss Wallace is a blind lady. <laughs> yes. Well, she, like, if I got somebody in the store and their hands are not theirs, I have eyes that don't see she see. Yeah. Don't ask me how. Yeah. She have her little ways of setting traps and always find out who is taking what. From yeah. Who yeah. I, <laughs> I went to the blind school in, in, in Southwest, so you know the blind school gonna teach you a lot of stuff. Yeah, the blind yes, school. Yes, 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 Respect. Yes, so, yes. Mr. Thank Wallace. Yes. Thank you, Rastafari. You're born up well. If you pass by Ochi, stop and say hi to the Wallaces and grab a slice of sweetness. The best pudding in the world. Yes. Where we find it? Right here at Joe's School, Main Street Priory. <laughs> Coming up, 
I'm tasting rum. Drink, <laughs> Today, my friends and I are taking you on a road trip around the island to meet amazing people and taste delicious Jamaican products. And we're about to do just that. Yeah, you know, the hills, you know? That's where the wild man love, the hills. Yeah, the wild land, all around. <laughs> Welcome to Jamaica, where the fun at, uh, where we party all times like non-stop. Uh, I'll take you on the beach on the sun hot uh, and give you a luxury guess uh, so you comfort. Uh, and if a high grade you want, uh, we run that, uh, or just burn as uh, like you can't done that. Uh. It's wild, man. <laughs> this is Hampton Estate, located 40 minutes east of Montego Bay, right at the limit of St. James and Trelawney parishes. And we're meeting with one of my good friends and owner, Christelle Harris. Welcome Please. to my home. <laughs> Where you? A beautiful place you have here. Thank you. Well, welcome to Hamden. Oh, beautiful. Thank you for coming. Hamden is one of the oldest sugar estates on the island, built in the mid 18th century. Crystal's family has transformed this place into a rum distillery, focusing on sustainability. Since Crystal and I go way back, she made her famous rum punch to welcome us. Cheers, then. Rastafari, love. Rastafari. Bless. This will not be your traditional tour. We're <laughs> driving. Bless so, pardon. Wildman. Well, well, oh, you feel you? Oh, sorry. Wildman's in his feelings. We get in our feelings once a day, one of us. Once a, oh, yeah? One, well, yesterday right. was Marlon. Yes. Today is, oh, here he comes. Oh. He's back, he's back. Ooh. Yesterday, Marlon was in his feelings because of his terrible driving. <laughs> and now it's right, this guy. Joseph. We're waiting for I'm Joseph. Wrong, yeah. Joseph's next. So what's this one called? This one is a rum fire rum punch. Rum fire rum, yo. I think um, I would say rum in Jamaica is a part of our culture, you know what I mean, right? Absolutely, Cause it, cause yeah. Because the estate's been around for, what, since the 1700s? Yeah. So it's crazy. I mean, we've made change now. That Crystal family is in charge. Right, <laughs> so right, a lot of changes, right, right. more sustainable. Right. Um, the community is more involved. Yes. On, on, on voluntarily. 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 <laughs> as far as work, the workforce. Right. But the prior owners here. Yes. Even the old church you pass by over there. Right. That church was built not with forced labor. Oh. So, so this region is a yes. different region. It's a different region. What would we call the region? Well, we're at the bottom of the cockpit country. Cockpit country is a land covered by rainforests, conical hills, and steep-sided hollows. Back in the 18th century, this landscape created a natural defense system used by the Maroons, the first Africans to escape slavery, to develop communities and free settlements. It's very strange to be sitting here with you, but very nice at the same time. I remember the days when I had first met you. We used to live in the same building, and I remember like it was yesterday when you'd sit at, around the pool at Palazzo, yeah. our complex, every yeah. day, and you were bossing your ass, working on your Marley coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy for you, Anna. And because a lot of people assume that people that have success or that have had success before them, You're right. they kind of just step into it and it doesn't sure. take any hard work. And for some people, that might be true. Sure. But for you and me, that's a different thing. Sure. And, and I can relate to yeah, that. Absolutely. And, and I admire that so much about you. And so it's really nice to be able to sit here with you I, I, and experience it. Yeah, the that's that's our label. that's our Jeep that Marlon left on the windows down and the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I remember also meeting you and um, I just watched you as an entrepreneur, you know. And then when you left LA and you told me, you know, I have to go to Jamaica now and really get involved with the family business. I like, all right. But when I came here and saw your foot in it and the turns and the changes that you've made to really make this. Your family's brand looks so beautiful now, and, and your commitment to excellence, I mean, really, dude, I mean, just the vibe of the place is beautiful. And build your family's legacy further on. I'm inspired by you also, madame. I feel so good chit-chatting with Christel while sipping that delicious fire punch that I almost forgot about rum. <laughs> but I give thanks that Mr. Wisdom is here to tell us everything about it. So, at the cane field, do we burn the cane before you chop the cane? Yeah. Okay, good. The cane is burnt to yes. get rid of the trash and stuff. It's cut. Yes. It's taken to the factory where it's milled. Now, what we're interested in is the juice, just the cane juice. Store it and allow the natural yeast present in the cane. So it first ferments to alcohol. 
then the bacteria, Acetobacter, takes over and it converts the alcohol into vinegar. Now that is what we are interested in. So we add that to our mix where we have molasses, which we would now get from a sugar factory. They have gone through the mm -hmm. entire process. Which is a byproduct of still the of cane. The, uh, yes. And we dilute the molasses down to with water. We have a dam special for years. It's up Very there, special. The York Dam. What makes it special? Function. Well, it's the flora and fauna that's present in that era. It's right under the foothills of Queen of Spain Valley. So there are some underground springs, and that has been dammed for from 70. It's about three miles feet. away from here. Right. Mm -hmm. That water comes down with certain microbes in it that. When they, when they, when, you know, you would have some amount of yeast, some amount of oh. bacteria in that water. Ah, I should have told it, you. It, it, no, no, no. It, it, you're supposed to smell. I wasn't supposed smell. to tell you. You weren't supposed to drink it so fast. That's 71.9% <laughs> alcohol by volume. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it is. So what you're used to is something at 40%. So that's we needed, we needed, that comes straight from the barrel. Well, I've had barrel rum. <laughs> Continue, sir. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Please, do not let me stop you. Oh, Lord. We also reuse our dunda, which is the residue from the distillation, the previous distillation. So we are reusing the waste. So, to, back, to so it ties into the sustainable right. movement. Right, we, beautiful. And, and um, we allow this mixture to sit in the vat and it ferment about two weeks. By that time, it sort of dying off or died off. But two weeks sounds uh, like not that impressive, but contextually, no, two weeks No, in terms of fermentation, I mean, a, a regular crazy. fermentation is like 24 hours. Sure. And it allows all of this character that you are supposed to be smelling, not tasting. Sure. Smelling. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, smelling. <laughs> oh, that see. smells so see. nice. But that. remember my instructions, though. Yes, ma'am. Hold it away from your nose first, and yeah. then allow it to Two. waft a little mm. bit. Oh, wow. You see, when you give me a direction, I can pick up. Yes, but then if I don't give you a direction, oh, you just disobey <laughs> everything I even haven't said. Butterscotch. <laughs> because so, it's like coffee, you know, and it's have notes. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, so you must understand that. I can still feel the barrel. <laughs> oh, so rather yeah. than looking at the distillery, I've asked Crystal just if we could just here. get this some fresh what? air, oh, walk around oh, the property like instead. This one was probably in use for how old is decades it? Decades and decades. A lot older than you and me. 50 plus years. Yep, 60 plus. 60, perhaps. yep. There and she insisted we pay no, tribute to her ancestors. Hmm, sure not really my I'm cup sorry, of tea. Ha! <laughs> is. I don't even do this stuff. A few headstones. Uh -huh. I actually, I really like it because 17, it's... 17, wait a minute. It's commemorative 1795? Of... Yes, exactly. Just picture, just yeah. picture Casper. Right, let's it's like go. It's Charlotte's This brother. is scary. Mm -hmm. Then a quick tour of the estate. You could stay here for the night. You would not be freaked out. I don't think I can do it. As the sun goes down, everything looks kind of spooky. Is that very creepy? Whoa, <laughs> Whoa that's creepy, Crystal. What, Where the donkey? There's a donkey? That used to be outside my dolly house when I was a baby. That's creepy. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us to your beautiful estate. I mean, your family has done such a great job as entrepreneurs, as helping our communities develop in all these beautiful things here, you know? And it's such a great place to come and experience. And even, like I said, wake up the ancestors to know that we have moved forward beyond those days and we're no longer anyone's anything. We're now the leaders of that movement, you know? So it's just a time and thing. So I respect and thank respect. you so much. Love and happiness. Thank you so and much. You After the break, I'm chilling with my little brother, <laughs> King Man. The boys and I left Kingston this morning for the first day of our road trip. After it's tasting delicious. the best pudding oh with Bali, God. drinking rum with Cristal, we're making a quick soup stop before reaching Montego Bay for the night. You know Jamaica is known for the street vendors. Of course, man. Let's go check out this great soup, man. The best soup in Jamaica. The best soup in the world, I hear. My man. It's the man? How are you doing, sir? <laughs> Pleasure, sir. Pleasure, sir. Good day, sir. What is the soup you have here, sir? It's a corn soup mixed with veg and nuts. Y'all want soup? Hey, but before y'all get y'all soup, it's some corn in the soup. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. Yes, sir. I'm good. Thank you, sir. That's a true ITEL spot. Oral Powell is known all over the island wow. for a sip. Yeah. You got some here, Oral. <laughs> Made with corn, vegetables, and peanuts, all from local farmers. Delicious. How's the soup? You sip? It's very equipped. You know, so I made my lip. Look, 
Mm -mm. Oh, you don't really drink soup now? I don't really drink soup a lot, but this soup is really magnificent. You know, Marlon? It's rich, rich, rich. It's rich. It reminds me of my youth. It's, it's nostalgic. <laughs> this is Jamaica, man. When you drink this soup, you're in Jamaica. Ita. Right, fire? Yes, fire. Well, well, you're not so much of a fire, cuz. <laughs> but you have it, though. You still have it. Thank you for the soup, man. You get a 10 from me. Sure. Time to forward to our last oh, destination of the day, Montego Bay. Located in the parish of St. James, on the west part of Jamaica's north coast. Mabe is the epicenter of tourism in Jamaica. My brother Kimani stopped by for a drink. I don't think many people know the love I have for you as my little brother, yeah. who I've raised you yeah, true. as a young man. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> we can't deny that. That is true. Yo, Joseph, who thinks I'm my brother, right? When you were like five years old, yeah. living in Falmouth, I took a minivan. <clears throat> Remember that, too? By myself. Remember from that. From Spanish Town to go see you. I came to your house, and now uh, Kimani's mother is the national tennis champion in Jamaica. But he also has an uncle called Bumpy, which is like the Jamaican at that time. Yeah, man. Most skillful soccer player I, I ever known <clears throat> in my life. So growing up, Kimani and I. I'm older than him. How old are you right now, today? 41? 41. Oh, wow. <laughs> 45. Four years. But Kimani, at six years old, was like the football god. <laughs> like, they, they, like, they talked about him as like the king of football. Like, at six years old, he was like a dream player. And I always, I'm always <laughs> in competition. I'm like, I can juggle more. No, you're not the dream. I'm the fucking dream guy. You're, you're not. Yeah. So years later, we moved to Miami, and we had the same problem. Kimani's better than you at soccer. <laughs> I said, how can my little brother be better than me at soccer? Let's juggle the ball now. Man, the man beat me juggling the football. I think I was 14, and he was 10. And he beat me juggling the ball, 10-year-old. So. All those years growing up with my little brother, I mean, I'm talking about watching him grow, like as far as going into <clears> music. I'm like, music? You do music now? <laughs> he just, I mean, he just surpassed me in everything. And then you had a beautiful song. This song you did for all of your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You had the courage <laughs> to do it. Like, we couldn't sing this word, we couldn't yeah. say this. Yeah, dear dad, yeah. Dear, yeah. dear dad, listen to the words. Come and so, um, dear God, I have a letter here from me to dad. And I want to let you know, might be a little sad. Dear God, a letter here from me to dad. And I want to let you know, here it goes. Dear dad, I really didn't get to know you. And sometimes I sit and wonder and it makes me blue. But there's one memory that stays on the back of my mind. And this memory got me thinking about you all the time. Whoa, I swear we miss you so. And I wish that you was here to see your boys grow. In case you're wondering, mommy, she's doing fine. And she tell me stories about you, papa, all the time. So when I'm down and out, lonely, or just feeling blue. All I do, dad, dad, is think of you. The thoughts alone erase my fears and dries my tears. I'm just writing to let you know we all care. I love you. Really, really love, love you, Daddy, you. I miss you, I miss you, and I know really my brothers and sisters do too. Yeah, I peace out, Dad. Really, really love you, oh. I miss you, I miss you, and my brothers and sisters do too. Oh, Ja, let me tell you. I'm gonna tell you all the time, too. You know what I mean? You know, say you, you is my foundation, my, you wasn't only my brother, but you was my friend. Uh, and you was still my is. father figure. Still is. Still is, still is, still is. Your friend, but not your and, father figure anymore, because you're not your father figure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? In that sense, we are in, you know, you instill the discipline and make sure that, you know what I mean, we stay focused on the task ahead and make sure we, you know, stay true to ourselves. Sure. And you're still someone who, if not the only person who I really idolize to a certain extent, you know what I mean? You, 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 everything. From the way I drive, everything. From the way I sit down in my car, from, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mr. Idol, well, you don't know already. Like, enough time, me remember them time, like sometime, 
when you're there at college and all, I left to go play all a weird game. As you left me read the closet, come no, on, no. look just like you. Oh, hold on. <laughs> no, let me tell you something, Joseph. Let me tell you what my brother yeah. right? So I live on the door where you am, right? <laughs> and of course, I go shopping, you know? But Kimani is my brother. I don't got to so shop. He shows up at my door. I shop when in his closet. <laughs> and take all my All the clothes. nice stuff. Not okay. all of it, the nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I come back like, where's all my stuff? But you know what? What am I going to argue with my little brother? I can't argue. That's what little brothers are for. Cheers to that. Little brothers are for taking all their brother's (laughs) stuff. What is most important to us as your bigger brothers, right? Because like you said in your your son, you never really get to grow with with daddy as as an older boy, you know? Yeah. Like we, as your older brothers, just four years older. Right, right. And five years and seven years older. But when you're five, we're 10 and and such. So we have a better understanding and we had the opportunity to go with daddy and to, to, to really understand some of the messaging, but to see our younger bloods, our younger brothers, yeah. to be able to accept this truth as young lads, yeah. man, it's impressive to us, man. It's, it's really beautiful, you know, to know that we all are aligned in the way through legacy, yeah. to the almighty, yeah. spirituality, the way we eat. There's seven b- brothers, and I tell you something, I can't tell us apart. Yeah. It's just a blessing that we get a chance to be together here in Montego Bay. And man, I love you, bro. And love thank you, you for like bro. stopping by the crib because oh, man, I know you got on, those man. boys in the family listen. waiting on you. Love, love you, you big bro. All day. Every day. All day. All day, every day. Tomorrow, as we continue our journey around Jaland, I'm taking you to James Bond Beach. So stay tuned. Good morning, Jamaica. After an amazing first day around the island, we're back on the road, and for our first stop, I'm taking you to Ochi, where we're gonna check out Bali's Kaya Herb House, the first Jamaican legal dispensary. Right after a quick walk on James Bond Beach, where the first movie, Dr. No, was filmed. Yeah, we're in St. Anne's, Jamaica. We're at Bali's place, Kaya Herb House. My friend Domingo Zapata flew all the way from New York City to bless us with some artwork. He's gonna do a nice mural piece for Bali right now. This is me, hermano, from Mallorca, Domingo Zapata. He's a multi-talented artist, most known as the next Warhol for his pop art paintings. Oh, I just thought about it right now. Okay, so it's like... <laughs> no, no, no. I had an idea I thought I would do because, you know, I think art is about composition, and when I look at this space, you know, it's, it's the same thing. There's a composition of different elements that will create the energy in this area, which I think is very spiritual and peaceful and, and loving, so I want to create something like that. Yeah, my dad was um, had a car shop, he painted cars, and, and I don't remember a day in my life without painting or drawing. Which at the beginning of when I was a kid, it was really annoying for everybody. Because I would like paint everywhere, no? But now they call me and when I go back to Mallorca, they're like, you want to come stay over? <laughs> Maybe paint something while you are? Do you get nervous when you see white walls? Uh, yeah, yeah, anxiety, <laughs> anxiety. You know the feeling is somebody like, you know, you get in a fight with your girlfriend, it's just like, you know, at your throat and you can sure. breathe. That's exactly how I feel when I see a white wall. <laughs> oh. I can breathe now. (laughs) In fact, I started painting these flowers because Picasso used to say that every child has an artist inside us. The problem is to keep the artist inside us as the child becomes a man, no? So I went and saw what I was doing when I was a child. What was I painting and drawing? And I was doing these flowers. So the reason I make them very naive like that is because I'm trying to replicate the spirit of the kid that was in me when I was growing up and I was trying to create something. You know, it's pure and it's very simple, but at the same time, it's finished. It gives you this vibe of, like I said, very positive and innocence. You know, the bird is because years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Michael Jackson Mm -hmm. and I was working on this project with him for some Spanish lyrics. He always used to say to me, I love pajaritos amarillos in Spanish. So, in his honor, I always put a yellow bird in my paintings. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so, the yellow bird is Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, wow. it's his spirit, yeah. Oh, 
it's, uh, it's the spirit, yeah. you know? And then the fish is representation of life. But also, fishes don't have much memory. And it represents that sometimes you have to forget and forgive and move on. Because there's so much more to life and, and it's so short. The weight is heavy. Exactly. Everybody's gonna die, but not everybody leaves. Mm -hmm. Go on and live and enjoy and, and try to appreciate those little details of beauty that happen to you every day. They might become more than in the long term, a big goal being achieved, no? Well, Gong had a quote, right? Live the life you love, love the life you live. Yeah, exactly. And you know something, bro? When you said you were coming to Jamaica, right? And you're like, I want to give something, I want to give my art, I want to do something for the kids. And being so that you just popped up out of nowhere, <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> and the only thing I can do, that's something I know will be here forever and everyone can actually see this. Enjoy. I have to call Bali. I'm like, yo, dude, the Mingo's coming in. <laughs> I need a wall. <laughs> I need a wall now. <laughs> so, Domingo, I guess you're going to have to come back and do another one. We're doing it. <laughs> We're going to do it. We're going to do it for the school. I want to do a yeah. workshop. Oh, yeah. And help the kids get some self esteem. You know, all these kids that are, you know, they need to believe in themselves. And art is a great way to do it because, like I said, and like Picasso said, every child has an artist inside, and we need to take advantage of that. It's beauty. Hey, voila. <laughs> and helping kids believe in themselves to achieve greatness is the mission of Lennox and Violet Lewis, League of Champions. I remember when we were looking at schools, we came in and there was a group of boys talking. And I just, you know, get into conversation and start talking. I said, well, what do you want to be? You know, what is your greatness? The child who was nine, I had to ask him his age, because he says, what is greatness? What do you mean? I don't have any greatness within. I said, yes, you do. I do not want to tell you what he told me he was going to be. And it was not something that I ever envisioned a child to say that he wanted to be. He's at camp. And well, when you ask him what's his greatness, he tells you, I want to be an artist. I can draw. Violet Lewis co-founded this association with her husband, Lennox. And I'm curious to know how everything got started. The foundation got started because of divine intervention. I'm Jamaican, as you are aware, and Lennox has a Jamaican background too. But I migrated at a very early age and had the opportunity of going to university and choosing psychology as my major. Mm -hmm. Coming back on vacation and seeing that children were on the street begging, I changed my major and I decided to go back to school and pursue a master's degree in social work. While I was pursuing that degree, I met Lennox, so I always knew I was coming home. I just didn't know when. when yeah. <laughs> I wanted to finish up my degrees. I wanted to have that doctorate. Yeah. Met this man, and my life turned completely. <laughs> Ended up coming back to Jamaica earlier than I anticipated. And that's what I mean by divine intervention. Sure. He has a platform. I have the background. We started talking, and I realized that he always says that he's a product of generosity. Sure. So generosity meaning that when he was in Canada, uh, you know, a man took him under his wing because he was getting into trouble, and he, that's how we ended up into boxing. So I remember when our son was 11 months old, we were sitting in the Trump Hotel, and we had a group, and he was explaining his vision of wanting to build from the ground up so that boys would have a place to go, particularly boys who are marginalized, who are forgotten about in society. And I remember the group there kept saying, why would you want to do that? You know, you can't do that. That's the hardest thing to do is to build from ground up. Our son was 11 months old. I'm there, and I remember looking at him and said, if that's what you want, we're going to get it. Because <laughs> as a Jamaican, I know that the place we need to start is in Jamaica. That was, our son is 13. Wow. So what you see here <laughs> has been planned yeah, sure. for years. Sure. The mission is that we inspire the next generation of champions, not just in the ring of boxing, but in life, so that they are self-sufficient, they are proud, they are confident, and that they're able to go back into their communities and be successful. So the boxing camp has become a safe haven for a lot of these boys that you see here. If more children had what we had, which was opportunity, then Jamaica and the world would not know what to do with these so-called boys that are marginalized. You see? <laughs> Usually it does. You, you know, I need to clarify yeah. something about the hierarchy. Let me tell you how serious he takes this. Yeah. So in the background, the administrative team pretty much are women. I don't want to be <laughs> sexist, but we're actually executing. But once camp starts, yeah. it's all men. Yeah. <laughs> it, and because he, he says only men can get these boys to be men. Uh -huh, well. I'm truly impressed by Violet. Enough respect. 
Coming up, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. <laughs> We're back at Hopewell High School in Lennox and Violet Lewis League of Champions. Time for me to introduce you to the big man. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, let me tell you. All yeah. these kids are great because they love to box. Yes. And they want to be champions. Yes. And uh, each one of them have, like, you know, desire to, like, do it. Some of them leave camp and they tell their friends and their friends want to come, so I love that. The main thing is they're learning the proper way to box. Well, you're teaching Lennox so. Lewis style. Lennox Lewis. <laughs> and me gets from Muhammad Ali, yeah, so yeah. see that? Straight up, upright. That's and the calm. movement and the feet. Yeah, show, uh, show me, show me. Show me. Yeah. It's all about the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox Lewis, AKA the pugilist specialist, is one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. He's a three-time world heavyweight champion and the last heavyweight to hold the undisputed title. He has been presented by both the Order of Canada and the most excellent order of the British Empire. They underestimate your size for your catness. Yes, <laughs> like, a, yes. like a cat. <laughs> That's true. On your toes. Always on your toes, always throwing that jab, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why I was amazed. You know, growing up watching you, I mean, I never had a chance to watch like Muhammad Ali live. So it's nice to see the greatness and to touch greatness. Yeah, you man. know what I mean? All those days, I mean, like I was telling the kids about watching you when I was in college, and how it inspired me to go out there and be a champion. Yeah, because man. first of all, you're going into chasing those crazy ballads. I tell you, you know, and, and, Giant, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's maximum love. No, you don't know how powerful that song is. You do know. Yeah, yeah, All but right. I mean, well, you you took it to another level where you incorporated the music into your, like... Persona. Your, 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 yeah, your energy is yeah. like... I used to get the goosebumps, bro, when you walked in the room. <laughs> like, I was like, yo! Like, uh, yo, watch this, watch <laughs> this! <laughs> yo, awesome. man, you don't know how powerful that song is, bro, believe me. It really helped me getting ready for the fight. Yeah. It's like, yo, yeah, this is what I'm gonna go do. Chasing all the crazy ballads around. Yeah. Chasing Man of the Ring. And the win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when you was fighting Mike Tyson. That was like. Yeah. See, I, was, I was watching Tyson after. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was obviously watching my fight over. And he knew the music. When the music started going, he knew I was coming. He went, yeah. <laughs> Lennox often used one of my dad's songs, Crazy Ballhead, for his ring entry. Me and Mike Tyson, we had to fight. Yeah. Because anytime you get any haircut, there's always that argument with the barbers. It, Who's going to win? Yeah. You know, they're always saying Mike Tyson was going to win. Uh, me, I, obviously, I felt I was going to win. Yeah. But. In order for us to prove that, we needed to get in the ring. So we finally got in the ring, <laughs> yeah. and that was it. That was, that was it. good. Even even if they would have called that fight a draw, a draw yeah. people would have still seen the matchup between me sure, and Sure, sure, because yeah. we wanted that. Yeah. And you gave us that. You didn't run from one fight. <laughs> you stepped away a champion. You didn't. It was yeah. very important. Yeah. It was important to do that because I just want to be a champion. I've accomplished all my goals. I've got rid of all the misfits in boxing. Became champion for a long while. It's time to put down the gloves, because as I was growing as a as a boxer, and I would tell people Muhammad Ali was my hero, they would say, "Oh yeah, but didn't you think he carried on a bit too much?" And that was always it, sticked in, right, in my right, mind. Right. And I said, "Okay, I got to retire at the right time." You know, I see see myself in some of the kids because I used to be naughty. I, I used to didn't want to listen. Yeah. You know, anybody used to bother me. I wanted to fight, yeah. so I didn't know about conflict resolution. <laughs> so. By coming to camp and seeing these different things that the kids are coming with, this is, gives me an opportunity to talk to them and be a father and a mother to them. Something that they don't get mm -hmm. or they don't have. Yes. And I think that's important. And they, they all they want to know is that you care about sure. them and that they respect you. Sure. And they want to hear the right thing. Sure. If you tell them the right thing, they'll listen because they want to be good. They want to be just like you. Right. And I tell them, you know, first it starts with respecting yourself. Yes and then respect others. Like say if two guys have a fight or just looking at each other, you know, it stumps it out by both of them going respect. That means yeah. I respect you, you respect me. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And there's no war. I really want these kids to learn yes. is um, just respect and the fact that they, they can do things that uh, maybe other people said they couldn't do. Uh, they don't really know themselves like they should. You know, this brings out dedication, hard work, sacrifice, yes. all these different traits. 
you need to learn and be aware of, these are traits that are going to help you in life. Sure. You know, not being late. You know, even that, just to learn that. When they come to camp and they're late, they have to do running. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is what happens when you're late. Yeah. Like, do more running. There's so they, Yeah, there's consequences on everything that you do, so you have to make the right choices. Choices. So if we partake a little something from us and they take it, if we teach them 10 things and they learn two, I'm still happy, because yeah, at least they learn too. Yeah, they're learning. Well, right now it's up to me to part partake yeah. all what I know sure. and give it to the youths. Sure. So that's what I'm doing, giving and it to the young kids, the future champions, our future. And you know, you've been talking about this a long time, about what you're going to do in Jamaica. And I mean, but who could have done a better job than you, the champion, coming to your country and setting up down here in Hanover? like some place for the youths to develop their craft, man. Yeah, let me tell you, it's gonna be all over Jamaica because right now, Jamaica's yeah. fiending for boxing. You, you, you know, you go anywhere, anywhere and talk about boxing, people love it. So they need an amateur system where each parish can try out for their, win their parish and all of a sudden become uh, champions of Jamaica, then go to the Olympics. So this is what I want to help Jamaica with and accomplish, doing that and create some young superstars, create some young champions. Because like I said, you know, we're fast in the running, <laughs> we're good in the swimming, yeah. boxing we're good in too. So yeah, yeah, we just have to, boxing. it's like, it's like we, we got a whole heap, it. yeah, we got a little whole heap of flowers that need to be nurtured over here in boxing. Sure. And uh, we're gonna have some champions, guaranteed. Oh man, amazing yeah, man. man. It's, it's like, it's a dream of mine to really have the opportunity to even hear some of the stories, you know, it's yeah, like, man. I wanted to share with the world, some of the things that you're doing in the community here in Jamaica. I appreciate that, my Not brother. that you're, yeah, yeah because man. everyone sees you, yeah. your after boxing career, everyone sees you commentating, everyone sees you out in the world, but they really don't get a chance to know what you're doing on the ground here in Jamaica. Right, okay. Yeah, lion on. Yes, the real lion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they give thanks, you know? Yeah, man. As I join, I'm so happy you give me a few moments of your time. Thank brother. you, thank you. Rastafari, thanks for visiting. Like, yes. That's you. And, and, and the League of Champions, the Lennox Lewis Boxing Camp. Looking forward to supporting it forever and ever because we have a lot of champs here, you know? Yeah. See? Lennox and Violet are true inspiration for I and our people. Seeing how committed they are to their mission, I know that our children will achieve greatness. <laughs> Blessed love. <laughs> what a fantastic journey around Jaland. On this road trip, I wanted to make you discover amazing people and amazing places. From delicious food, to wonderful art, to the strong rum, to international legends working for the future of our youth. And I hope this helped you to better understand our island. The sun is setting on our day, so it's time for I to build back and let Kimani run the road and talk about what he's doing for his community in Falma. Jaja. Um, you know, it's been a while now since the center here has been the Dilapidated and pretty much in ruins. I took it upon myself, being that I am from this place here, you know, and I remember my childhood leaving from my home, not too far away from the center, and walking here to the center and being able to enjoy, you know, football, being able to play some table tennis, being able to, to sit with friends and play domino. And for a while we didn't have that, so we find that a lot of these young men now ended up in the street doing everything that they're not supposed to be doing. I don't want to say it became my responsibility, but in, in, in so many words, I felt as though it being in a state of thing and me being in a position where I can help and make something better, that it was my duty, you know what I mean, to make sure that I helped to rebuild a community that was pretty much no longer there. There's nothing here. There's no movie theaters. There is no, you know, you, don't, you have a little party here and there, but there is no attraction, so we find that Sunday day time for us was the attraction, and the attraction has always been football, you know. And football is also my first passion before music. <laughs> we are a very proud set of people, and we truly believe that whatever we do, we do it the best. And so it's important for us to make sure that what we're saying actually comes to the forefront. You know, and we have never really been ones to, to settle for, for mediocre. You know, so you find that we are always trying to add something to what's already there. Um, and that goes for not just the athletes, but for, our, you know, the musicians, for our actors, for our, you know, just we as a people, we as, we, we as a culture. You know, I say it a lot of time that, for me, we in Jamaica, there's a, there's a vibration that we move to, you know what I mean? And 
everything to the sounds that you hear around from the cars passing on the street to the football, we have the ocean behind us. Everything plays a part in that melody. You know what I mean? So everything becomes, becomes one. Sun is shining, the weather is bright now. <laughs> yeah, this place is the lion's den. This is the Congo's headquarters, you know? And I am Ashanti Roy. One love, man. Roy Dell Johnson, <laughs> AKA Ashanti Roy, is a true reggae legend. He founded the Congos with Cedric Mighton in the 70s, but he has been around reggae since the early ages. Father Ashanti went to school with Lee Scratch Perry, and he was also a close friend of my dad. But we'll get to that later. I and your father used to be working in Scratch Studio, man. Right, right. Yes. From those early days. I give thanks and praises to this day, as it's a true honor to introduce you to Congo Ashanti. Yes, this is where I train you in the morning. I thought that the perfect way to start our day together was to follow Ashanti in his morning routine, walking up the hill in Christian Penn in Portmore. So you're leaving your house at 3 a.m. in the morning? Yes. What time do you take on? I rest early, 6 o'clock. In the evening. Six o'clock in the evening. I hardly watch news. We, Rastafari, I, I, consider that our body is our temple, along with the natural liberty. Training our mind and our body is a must. Early morning, get it. <laughs> Early morning, eagles. It's the food of life, exercise. If you don't train, then your muscle becomes lazy. What, Mr. Rowan? True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, yes. Fitness is a must. <laughs> Fitness is a must, the man say, yes. This, black, black. Chop for the years. <laughs> <laughs> Come here and meditate. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Let's catch our breath. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I'm 74, but I'm still, still a score. have it scoring, you know? <laughs> like. Uh, 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 yeah. Did I forget to mention that Ashanti is a black belt Shatokan Karateka? He's 74 and he climbs that hill back and forth four times a day, five days a week. This is, yeah, this is the workout, you so know? Let's try it down. Yeah. Uh, oh. try, no, not. Down, just chug along. Chug along, chug along, chug along. Let me tell you, even though I used to be an athlete, I still am. A shanty routine is tough, and after one rep, <laughs> we all needed some idle snack to refuel. See? <laughs> I want a June plum. Please. Why, man? Why, man, that chef, man? But why, man? You cannot feel my June plum, are you? Even... Yo, boss. Look at what, look at the June plum that he give I. And look at the one I chose for myself. Now who you think love you more? <laughs> the June plum is a tropical fruit that grows on a tree. When ripe, it has a yellowish skin and a delicious pineapple mango flavor. We use it often here in Jamaica, mixed with ginger to make some delicious juices. June plum, trim like green June plum. And these man train in the morning, man. Well, yes, brother. Yeah. What's the one thing, the training-wise, that you hated doing the most? It's not, I never hated training. But the one thing, though, like if the coach says I have to come in at 16 seconds, I want to make sure I come in at 13 seconds. So it wasn't really that I hated it. It was more like I never liked failure. So I'm always, you know, I'm, I'll, do, I'll do this while I come to Jamaica every morning. I do the hardest work. So when I go there, that stuff is baby work to me. It was nothing, you know? So it wasn't that I was... I hated it, but I just like to conquer it. This morning with Ashanti, training and eating natural fruits makes me think of the time I introduced my friend Ray Lewis to our Ita Liberty and how it impacted his football career. I went to the school at UM, yeah. and I played a guy named Ray Lewis. He was one of like, the best players in the world right now. Yeah. He was one of my roommates in college, you know? Yes. I didn't see him for a long time because I started moving into again Steve on tour yeah. and started touring my brothers. That's you know, just a roadie and thing. Yeah. So when I'd watch his game, I saw him one day as my roommate. I used to teach him about Rastafari. Yeah. I see him roasting a big pig on the TV. Oh, God. I said, yeah, <laughs> my brethren. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, <laughs> so one day, about a couple of years later, about 2002 or 2001 or something like that, 
I bridge and say, yo, bro, you know, Ray would love to see you. One of my friends would say that he'd love to see me. I go check him. The man tell me, say, boy, bro, I haven't seen you all these years and I just bought a new house. I'd love you to come to my house. I'm having my birthday party. I said, all right. So I go to his house now. Big, big party. He's drinking a nice bottle of champagne by himself. Mm. Everybody's getting drinking, you know? Yeah. So the next morning now, I need to use the bathroom because I stayed the night there, you know? Yeah. People that he had at this house had the place messy, messy, messy. Yeah. So I go on my hands and knees and I clean the bathroom so I could use it. Yes. So just after I finished using up the bathroom now, I saw him walking across on his banister. So I said, yo, man. I said, this is how you're living? He says, what you mean, bro? I said, I see you on TV, you're roasting this and that this and that and look at you, man. This is how you live? How are you going to make it? And, you know, he's the, he was at the time one of the greats. But, but he says, what do you mean? I say, you know what, come to Jamaica, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we come to Jamaica, go to Montego Bay, rent a little spot on the beach. So I brought a little rasta, one of my little rasta bread in them now. Start feeding them up with some ital food and, you know, some fish. Make them feel nice. And start running the beach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, after that now, return to the States. So I'm home here at, I'm at 56 at Oak Road. Yes. And I'm watching the game, you know. So, you know, Kodja. Yeah, man, yeah, man, Kodja. Kodja's son, man. Ozai. Yes, yes, yes. Ozai, you know, he used to cook some food for I and prepare some meal. Yeah. I sent Ozai for the deal with him, you know, line him up. So I'm in my living room, my, they always up saying in my room, I watch the game now. When I see the man, the man look lean and like trim up. I say, wow, the man can't look skinny. <laughs> like, <Yes. laughs> so they lose the game. But him look, you know, him run fast and thing. We call Ozai and say, Ozai. Now nah, I say something. Come next week, we have to start eating back meat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we said to him, we said, so what do you say? What do you say? Tell me what do say? He said, no, bro, that's all he want. He want the fish, pineapple juice, and veg. That's all he want to eat. We said, am I right? Yeah. After that season, MVP. Yes. So the next year, another brethren that was in the camp, same youth that came the first year, came back to Jamaica again. Same program, in the same following year, the next dude from the camp, MVP. Again. This is for the NFL, I tell you now. Yes. Defensive player here, yeah. So my youth, them uh, until this day, yeah. they knew they eat like how oh, we teach them to eat. Yes. Yeah, the, the healthness, you know? Yes. He can tell you about that himself, about his, his eating habits, how it changed, you know? My son, Nico, he was trying out for the Redskins, and I went to one of their games and the camp, and he's telling me that most of the players now are living more of a vegan life. They're getting away from meat. So remember the game was based on aggression. So the meat, they're really focusing on the skill now. Yeah. So these guys are not so more aggressive as they used to be. Now they're fast and skillful and thing. And a lot of these guys have stopped eating meat. It was a righteous morning with a shanty. Yes, Rasta Ruan. After the break, I'm taking you to a never seen before place, the lion's den. After following him in his morning workout routine, <laughs> I wanted to know more about Ashanti Roy. For the first time ever, Ashanti allowed a camera crew to step into Congo's headquarters, the Lion's Den. Located in Portmore, the Lion's Den is an historical place where the Congo is composed and records some of their biggest hits. The Congos are a reggae vocal harmony group formed as a duo by Ashanti and Cedric Mighton. Foundation. You know, this is the lion's yeah. den, you know? Oh, yes, this is. That's a hungry belly picnic day ashore. <laughs> yeah, man, this is where we meditate, you know? I'm 100% appreciative of I and Rowan is in the lion's den doing something, you know? Same. Yes, for I and Rowan's father is a very, 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 very good friend. We go a long way from a long time, you know? So be with Ruan right now. I'm, it, I'm grateful of that, you know? What must I say, Ruan? We give thanks. We give thanks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so this is where the group was set up. This is where the Congo is. Yes, this is where we rehearse. This is where we make great most songs. of those great songs, yes. Two albums right in the studio, back in the back arc, and swinging bridge, you know? So what year did the Congo start? Congo started out in the 60s. The 60s. 
And our first album releases in the 70s, 77, Heart of the Congos. When we started, it was two of us. Right, you were the high note. No, Cedric Mighton. You was not the high note. No, so I'm not. One, but I can sing all of them. I can sing all notes. I, I can sing all the notes. Ah, yeah, yes. man. Yeah, man. This is Cedric. He's the high note Seen one. In the original. Yes, Heart of the Congos. This is our first yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heart yeah. of the Congos. I was born in 72. Yes. So I had a little vibes. I used to be in the yard up there in Oakwood, so. Yes. But I want to know from your view, your perspective, what is the music scene like then and, and compar in comparison to now? How was it then? Oh, in my time, which is the time gone and this time still, <laughs> it was a little harder in music, you know? We have to be properly rehearsed. Nobody can make no mistake. So it, it was a harder way of making music those times. We didn't have no computers and things like that. But that part, I think that made the music much greater because... Yes, God, the hard work, what we have to put in to rehearse, you know? The two tracks. And then it was two tracks. Right. So the whole of the, the music, the bands, is on one track. Right. And the vocal. And the vocal <laughs> is on one track. One. So <laughs> we have to make one time. Ready? Yes. Go. Cut. And everybody has to be precise, you know? Right. You see, now it, it's easy because you have a computer where you can cut and splice and drop in this and drop in that, you know? Yeah, those days we don't have those things, so it was a kind of harder days, you know? But we go through it, your father go through that too. Yes, all of us go through that, and then we make great songs. Why is this little island so special? Why, why does the music always resonate with, whether it's dancehall, whether it's ska, whether it's the reggae, whether it's, you know, soul music. Why Jamaica? Why is the music so important? All right. Why this music is so powerful? In the days of slavery, the slave master liked to hear the people to sing and work in the field. So the music coming from down there, in the farm, you know? Yes, and it developed. Now why reggae is so powerful? Reggae is a heartbeat music. It's spiritual. You know, if you can listen, Bob songs what he sing, one love. One love means everybody to be loving and kind to each other, you know? Here's that what we preach as reggae, kind, loving, don't make no war with each other, you know? Yes, that's, that's the meaning of reggae. R, R, Rasta reggae. Reggae is Rasta, and Rasta is reggae, right? Were you Rastafari back then? I was, that come later? Yes, I was born a Rasta. Ashanti is a Bantan, a storyteller. He's the perfect person to unveil Rasta in reggae and the reggae in Rasta. So I always, 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 my entire journey, yes. I just wanted to, for someone in the eye and eyes, the elder eyes, yes. to tell us how that day was. In 1966, yes. His Majesty came to Jamaica. Well, 1966, when his majesty came to Jamaica, it was thousands and thousands of people. Those days, if the police in Jamaica catch you with one cliff of ganja, you would go to jail. That day when the majesty came to Jamaica, <laughs> all those things break up when the majesty come. <laughs> Rastaman have his chalice and asks him, the big police corporal, to light his chalice. Come on, light my chalice, man. God come, light my chalice. The rain was falling very, very hard before the emperor plane land. So when the majesty plane land, as the plane touched down, I am talking what I see with my two eyes. The rain just cut like this. No more rain. Sun start to shine, and the thunder start to roll, and the lightning start to flash. So the crowd get, the crowd get wild, wild, wild. The crowd get wild, everybody running to the majesty plane. So the majesty came out and, and his plane and stretched his hand like this. I don't know what he do, what he said, but he, the crowd just, just come quiet that if you drop a pin, you could <laughs> hear it. <laughs> the majesty come off the plane and then from there he went to, to the national arena, you know? Rastafari was born with the name Lij Tafari. When Rastafari was coronated in 1930, the name was given to him, Haile Selassie I, the Emperor of Ethiopia, King of Kings, Lords of Lords, conquering land of the tribe of Judah, ruling the country for over 40 plus years. 
Its internationalistic views led Ethiopia to become a chartered member of the United Nations, and there the movement began. The teachings of Haile Selassie I, the first, Aras Tafar I. But it was a great day, man. That was the greatest day. Amazing. It was an amazing day. I, I never see so much people in my life. <laughs> Like the whole Jamaica, from the airport, Norman Manley Airport, straight to stadium. People was waving like this. Majesty, majesty, majesty. Uh, you know? I see yes. the videos, I, I see them today, and I mean, I'm still fascinated. And man, I told him, man. It's a joy to really see that. In fact, it's so important to we that we name our movement Rastafar I. But those days was hard days, man. They treat Rasta, the government treat Rasta very bad. They say we are black heart men. We are people who will cut out people's heart and eat it and all type of funny saying about Rastas, you know? Rasta get no work in no department. We can walk on the street in peace. Rasta is not a religion, you know? Sure. Rasta is a way of life. Principles. His principles, you know? Right from wrong. Right from wrong, yes. You know, Rastafari is, is everything to me. <laughs> yes. Bob go out there and spread the message all around the world. And now we have Rasta all over the world right now. We have Chinese Rasta. We have Rasta in Europe. We have Rasta in Asia. We have Rasta all over the world right now. So this small little island named Jamaica, create a thing we are spread all over the world. Is it marvelous? So yes, Rowan, let's go, let's go, go over to the artwork in the, the yard. Artwork in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, so much yes. work. This is a very historical picture, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can see Bob right here. With the scroll right here. Yeah, the scroll, yeah. And you can see the majesty here. Yes. With his chalice right here. This is Marcus Garvey lighting his chalice right here. Yes. This is Nani. Nani, yes. This is Mandela. Yes, Mandela. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, this is one of the Congos, you know. Oh, one of the Congos. Yes. Okay. And this is Malcolm X right here. Yeah, yeah. Well, over here now. You have me right here. You that. And my son right here. See, see, see. Yes. He, he's, he passed out right now. That's the yes. So this is a very historical picture. You know, my artist did this, you know? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this picture. It's you can see Naya Bingi art. The art of Congo. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, the one, two. <laughs> yes, the one, two, three. <laughs> yes, Ruhal. Yes, Mr. Mali. You don't know. <laughs> Coming up, Congo Ashanti commemorates my father. Yes, brother Rowan. So give thanks. Give thanks again for everything, my brethren. What a blessed day it is with Ashanti. After training in the morning, exploring Rasta Reggae with him at the Congo's Lions Den, it's time to eat. Ashanti is taking me to his drummer's place. Although the place is famous for his tofu curry, he is cooking a traditional Jamaican breakfast, aki and saltfish, Ashanti's favorite a true idle spot where you can get fresh fruit and natural juices. Wow, all right, first of all, <laughs> this is pumpkin seed juice. <laughs> juice, yeah, with soya milk. But let me tell you something. What I'm gonna have here, and what I'm having here to drink, this is like what I used to get in the 70s at yes. Oak Road. Yes. Your father gave you, when you get a juice, a bottle like this, he tastes it. This is like baby food. Is baby it? food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why didn't we bring the bash? Oh, it's a... Uh, hey, fire. Go yeah. bash. Ruan want a bash. And I'm yeah. Ruan bash, we're supposed to walk yeah, it. The calabash is a flowering plant, and its fruits are emptied and dried to make idle recipients named after the tree. Right. Well, look here. Don't leave out nothing. Yeah. <laughs> if the bash can't hold... If the, if the bash can't hold... Put it anywhere. Yeah, yeah it all works. <laughs> <laughs> I thought food must eat out of Ital Bash. Yes, Bash strictly. Ah. Uh, now we're talking. No, we are talking. No, we're I'm talking, not. fire. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Mmm. Yeah. This is Ital Sip. Yeah. I'm Bash. Ital Sip in Bash. Yeah. Wow. 
called kalalu, breadfruit, and yellow yam, mm -hmm. and fried dumpling. Some people call them fried bakes, but we in Jamaica, <laughs> fat, what we call it fried dumpling. Or speak splin. Or speak splin. <laughs> <laughs> Now that our bellies are full, it's time to hit the studio. Yeah, we're <laughs> going into the studio <laughs> now. You can check out the music Let's section. Let's check out the music section right now. Yes, my brother. <laughs> and a rebel. Aye, <laughs> aye. This is my little lab where I, where I meditate, you know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Where tension builds, reality grows. Would make man to rule his destiny. Yes. <laughs> I wish you that. <laughs> um, gang, it never released it. Well, it's not my thing. I just like the <laughs> bumps. <around. laughs> See him there, the master? Yes. 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 <laughs> That's your dad right there, my man. <laughs> and the ball right there. I have him out about. Yeah. Yes, yes. I don't leave him my inch. Cause he set the pace, you know, for us to follow, you know. Yes. All right, the man, the mama ask you this now. Yes, sir. What you love most about touring or I said traveling? Meeting the people, spreading the message all over the world. That's what I like the most to spread the message. For we are messengers of Jah, and the vibes is spiritual vibes. That's what the world take on too. Right. You know. Right, just. I like to meet the people all over the world. And touch. And touch the people all over the world and tell them about this wonderful Rastafari sure. vibration. Sure. I'm going to do it until I'm not able to do it anymore. I'm going to just keep on doing it. I love it, you know? I can't do nothing more, uh, only music. Now we have a temple down in Scotch Pass where Roe and Father have a property down there in Scotch Pass. And mm -hmm. he, Bob Marley, the man who gave us that parcel of land there to make up our temple, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very sorry we couldn't be there to see. It's a mighty full place, very large place, you know? Yes, and we utilize it very good. So I appreciate that, you know? Yes. That's one good thing that the gang do for us. You know, give us that space so we could make up our temple, you know? Yes, I appreciate it a lot. Yes. And see, the blessing is going to, I mean, the blessing is going to be always on the Marlies. Yeah, the blessing is going to be following the Marlies right through. Yeah, Bobby's in Zion right now. Yeah, it's set like that. Yeah, man. So yeah. African unite. Sure. Africa unite for removing right out of Babylon <laughs> and we grew into our father's land. Whoa, how good and how pleasant it is before God and man to see the unification of all Rasta man. Unification, you know? Yes, I am. As it been said already, let it be done. We are the children of the I am man. Whoa. We are the children of the Rasta man. So, African unity. African United African United For we moving right out of Babylon And we grew into our fathers Yeah man, we are grooved to our fathers, you know Give thanks to the Iowa, you know Yeah Give thanks to the vibe, Rowan That's the fact Great Marvelous day, my brother so Give right. thanks for everything true, true. Yes, it's the love of Jarastafari Guide and protect I and I forever and forever more, you know? Sila. Yes, Sila, Rasta for I. <laughs> yes, I, Rasta. After the break, I'll introduce you to the reggae girls. 
We're on a long journey to discover the two inseparable gifts Jamaica has given to the world, reggae and Rasta. Spending the first part of our day with Ashanti was the best way to kick off our quest, but it's now time to speak about our favorite sport in Jamaica, football. If you go around the island on any given day, you'll find groups of all ages gathered on fields, on beaches, or even the street playing a game we love. Not even 10? 100. As you know, my father was an amazing football player. And he gave my brothers and I the love for the game when we were young. It's more important than a sport. It resonates with our principles. It's the perfect way to train one's mind and body and the perfect way to create unity between the people. Hi, Ray. I'm taking you to the University of the West Indies in Kingston, where I'll introduce you to the future of the sport, the under-20s reggae girls. Our national teams are called reggae boys and the reggae girls. Everything is connected, see? I want to know how to score. Don't worry, them can't speed it up. Yeah. I brought along my brethren, Damien Stupey Stewart, as a freshly retired professional football player. After Arborview FC, he went on to play in England's League One for a few years before joining Malaysian Premier League. He's also a former player of the Reggae Boys. This is my first love. I've always loved football, you know. I'm a yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come out. Just I watch again. it all the time on TV. I play a lot of FIFA. Yeah. Just turn with it. Just turn. Makes me a footballer. <laughs> all right, so it's going to be two groups. One group here, one group there. She's going to go first. All right, still, let's watch. Let's go. Ready. I have a quick story. Yeah. In my all of my college career, I lost three games. Not soccer, you know, football. But yeah. I lived here when I was 12 years old. I grew up playing football, so I always had football in my blood, you know. Then I came here after my football career, and I went and tried out. That's how I know Stupies. I went and tried out for Harborview. So the guy, um. What's his name again, Stupies, that used to help out the, the coach? Um, whatever. One day he said to me after practice, if I was coach, I wouldn't sign you. You know, I said, really? I said, well, all right. So one day I went to practice very early. I ran about 30 laps around the field. And after running my 30 laps before everybody started, I started to kick the ball to goal, you know? But I knew a new coach was watching. So I started at the outside the 18. Boom! Dress it back a little. Boom! This time I'm not taking any steps, just boom, you know? Till I ended up at the half line, you know the circle? I spot the ball outside the circle and take one step, boom, on goal. And then the coach told, I saw the coach tell the guy, I think his name was Donald. No, Donald. DV, DV. Donald Van Hill. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, his assistant to him. I saw DV tell the guy, go, he brought him a paper, say sign him. You know what I did to him? I went and ran another 15 laps. He had to beg me to sign. The guy that told me he'd never sign me. So I ended up playing my, some uh, practicing all my time with um, the national baller right here, Supies. So that's how we became good friends. So I actually played a little bit of Premier League. Never got in a game because I tore my hamstring. But I never got to play in a game, but I was signed to all of you. So that's my little football glory. <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory, right, about football, right? This is my theory about football. I'm no coach. I know nothing. But I know the game is played like this. If we keep the ball in front of us, and the other opponent, the opponents have, we can't lose. And when we do get the ball, if we keep possession, they can't win. <laughs> and if we support each other, meaning we always have a drop, a pass, a layoff, a layoff pass, always support on the outside, and always have a man up front. That little diamond shaped thing there, I mean, there's just six of us, you know? <laughs> That's also what I like to play, and I call it my Brazilian style. That means when we have the ball, we don't run up there and try and take the ball from them. We get back and we defend together, you know? We keep a wall around and drive them backwards, you know? And when we do have it, we keep it and we look for us. Support, the wingers, you know? But we play the game to support each other, right? That's just my little theory. Hey, play easy. Preserve yourselves. 
<laughs> I'll kill him. <laughs> I think it's the number one sport in Jamaica, especially at the schoolboy level. The women's is get, really getting there now, and um, that's good to know. Um, we have been Caribbean champions for a number of years. We just recently won the Caribbean championship at the under 20 level, which was held in St. Kitts, so it's getting there as well. The reggae girls don't get the same amount of coverage as, as the boys do. However, the Myler family, in, in, including Sedala Rowan, they came on board a few years ago and um, supported the program. And I think in the near future, we're going to be in the World Cup. Yeah, well done. As a player that played with, with like you guys, amateur, because college football is amateur, right? The most important thing is this, right? But you're, you're not only amateur, you represent the country. The most important thing is to master your craft. What you're doing out here is like eyes are on you, everyone is watching you, you carry the country. When you, when you, you represent the country, so you got to take it upon yourself. I know coach, train your heart, you know, but at home, it's almost like you go against someone and just play by yourself at home. You talk about being a professional at the game, but a professional, as two piece can tell you, a professional is someone that does a little bit of what they love every single day. It's not just because of practice. Oh, we have a good training. No, no, no. Training is like, that's nothing. When we come to training, we breathe through training. <laughs> Coach after one, they're always so fit because in our off time is what we love to do, you know? So I just want to share that as a, as a sportsman myself, you know what I mean? And being that I'm, I have kids older than you. My oldest daughter, she's 23 years old. So, <laughs> so you know, so thank you again, coach. Thank you so much, coach, respect. Come share, one, 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 one. Come touch it. Coming up, I'm taking you to Tough Gong International. Welcome to Tough Gong International. Tough Gong was originally based downtown Kingston on Orange Street, the neighborhood that shaped reggae culture. I'll show you around on the second part of our journey. It was then moved to my father's place at 56 Hope Road, which is now the Bob Marley Museum. This is my room, my dad sat right there. This is the studio. Lastly, it was moved here on 220 Marcus Garvey Drive. And besides the full recording studio where international artists come to record, Tough Gong International was the first and now the last vinyl pressing plant of Jamaica. My Bridging Yard Court joined me for a special tour given by the iconic figure of Tough Gong, Chow. He's been around since the beginning and he used to take me to Kung Fu movies when I was a little lad, Mr. Chow. <laughs> So yeah, I remember this one that you have to no, no, pull it and yeah. oh, it come out, that's all? Yeah, this will come, come out. out here. Yeah, okay, okay. To the two press, uh, well, you know, if you press the right button, it comes out. Right. <laughs> so this is the factory. Behind you right here, we have the process of making vinyl record. Right. We have the acetate, the stamper, the vinyl pebbles. <laughs> then we have the vinyl records. Yes. So the acetate is an aluminum disc. Right. It is placed inside a machine with a heated needle, uh -huh. creating all the grooves. Right. Right. The groove sure. is actually the music. Mm -hmm. It is then soaking nickel nitrate silver solution three and a half hours, creating a stamper. Mm -hmm. The stamper is what we place inside the machine. With the main ingredient, we have the vinyl pebbles. Right. So the vinyl pebbles with heated water, it form a paste or a dough. This is what we place inside the machine. With the stamper, we get the vinyl records. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to put the, the label underneath and the label on top, see that? You can see the pellet there. Right. That, that, that becomes a record. Yeah, yeah that's a lay petty. Yeah, oh, nice, yeah, record. <laughs> that's a record. That's, that's a, a record. <laughs> I think that's a 45, LB is a bit bigger. Yeah, yeah. When you put this on top, there's a label there already. You put this on there and you put this on there. And there's a stamp in there and the thing yeah. is, 
and bang. You know? So it's like you. Yeah. Oh, right. Is it? Oh, yeah, this is, this is Tough Gun. Tough Gun International. Your name is Shansang. Your name is Shansang, live in Pittsburgh. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. Pittsburgh is Bob's last concert yeah. ever. I know Damon was here. He pressed his record here, didn't he? His 45. Yes, yeah. a thousand record. A thousand, especially for Jay Z. Jay Z. <laughs> you know the song Bam Bam, Huata Bam Bam. You know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, you know I'm that. talking to Ron. <laughs> ah. You were Toots. Yeah. Toots. Toots. Yeah, yeah, and but, Sister Nancy too. Yeah. Well, actually, it's the only place here in Jamaica that still does the pressing of the vinyls, but as you can see, we're undergoing some renovation, so we're not gonna press until next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're very, very, very Sweet. proud to hear that, and even with the, the whole, Yarko can talk about this more than I, as, a, as you know, the one that plays music all over the world, but with the re resurgence of the vinyl movement now, because we have our own turntable that we, have, we made now, you know? Yeah. Now, Samarli, we make turntables. So, I mean, it's great that we're still pressing records. Sure. So, it's just nice, eh? Yeah, man, right now, the vinyl thing, as you say, are forward again. So, it's going be the only place in Jamaica where all the Ford same ways are blessing, you know? Yeah. We want some yeah. vinyl in a yard again, you see? <laughs> Yard Crew is a selector and a pioneer of reggae revival, a growing movement of young artists bringing their roots back into reggae. He's the first person to ever play music from the movement on Jamaican radio and is also a protege's DJ. The whole reggae revival vibration now start with, you know, protege, Nomad, Janine, and a lot of other artists going to Jamnesia, a place called Jamnesia, in which, you know, the live music was more appreciated. From this or no, it's like an energy start build because clearly the youth them have talent, so them a pull of energy and then now you had Kingston Dub Club, which was, you know, at, after that little time was the only place that you could go to hear straight conscious vibration in a dance right through the night. From this and now the artists them get the whole inspiration and people start gravitate as the artist fan base grow more. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is now, you know, more youths are being inspired to to, to hold a conscious vibe because it's different when the younger youths are, you know, holding a conscious vibe to inspire other younger youths. I don't know, Ro, taste a Mali with there. Yeah, yeah, that's A dub plate or a special is an exclusive version of a piece of music re-recorded to bring forward a sound system, an artist, or an upcoming album. Dub plate lyrics often include the name of the selector or the sound system that has commissioned the artist. You'll see that after the break. Big up yourself. Now you can... Mundes! You already know, every time there's a mic, Giac is always around. No, man, no, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, do You can go pop style show to my fr my father used to do sound too, you see me? So your pop style works same way. Oh, for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pop style. You see it? I'll come up with something for you. Play play it one more time then my um Mundus. But that's why that intro did then good. But that's why I hear the intro. Good and never wanted. Better with better, they know that we don't want it. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
special way. Yeah, yard corner one. We're not yard corner one team. You think of that, you say? Oh. If you're not special, then you yard corner one team. Want it. I want no. to regular, you see me? Yeah, I didn't want it. Yeah, cork would I never want it. Just touch down in a foreign. Uh huh. No for them a pop style. Make sure you take up your pop style. Uh huh. Okay, what's it? I'm a pop style. It works? Yeah, man, it works, man. Yeah, it works. Forward, right? Can't come round. Me and him foreign, me and him foreign, me and him foreign. Five feet nine, people are rocking down. There is a fly, there is a fly, them a pop style. Them a pop, 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 pop. I think I should be not wearing Tough Gun. Mm. It's only right that Tough Gun Heights get on with GR and Yardcore and do a little intro. True. Sure. Yardcore. G live, G live. Direct. All right, let's drop it. Let me try this. Yeah. Mr. Marley, Mr. Marley. Let me try this. All right, let me show them how it's done. <laughs> Mundes, you have it? Mundina. Yeah. Yo, Rick Marley. Yeah, yeah, man. Live and direct. Tough Gang original, Tough Gang studio. Yardcore, see? Big up yourself, g -Hawk. Live and direct, see? Rastafari Eye. Good. You like that? You like, like that? <laughs> yeah, man, it's up, man. Bad! <laughs> Are you near me? The one take one, that. What do you think, man? I eat that shit. A special, that's special. Aye, aye. Right we have to make sure it drop right. Proper. Yeah. I know. Yo, Rugamale. Yeah, 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 man. Live and direct. Top Kong original, Top Kong studio. Yeah, of course. See? Big up yourself, G.R. Yeah. Ross, so far, aye. Aye, aye. You got a little touch right there, you know? Tough girl. What an amazing first part of our journey. Stay tuned for the other half of our quest, as I have more Rasta and Reggae to show you. Yo, Rugamale, yeah, yeah, man. Live and direct. Tough Gang original, Tough Gang studio. Yeah, hardcore. See? Big up yourself, g -Hawk. Live and direct. See? Rasta for I. Good. You like that? Yeah, man, it's up, man. See? <laughs> Okay, now that I've shown you around Tough Gong and how to make a dub play with G-Hawk and Yardcore, next step is the record shop and the DJ. This is Orange Street. In the 60s and the 70s, this place was the headquarters of reggae. All the roots reggae artists have a special bond to this place. Everything is just for a while. Even my father started the original Tough Gong on this street. I'm taking you to a record shop, the last reggae vestige on the street, Rockers International. Yeah. Gang Heights. Gang <laughs> Yeah, this is the greater youth. Some say big youth, some say Jayu, but this is the greater youth. I, I, I. And I is say the Rohan. Rohan. Rohan Marley. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. I like to say brother. I like to say uncle, but mostly I love to say his father, you know? Yeah. Because from that time until now. As a gang I, I, as a gang I. <laughs> yeah. Hanley Augustus Buchanan, AKA Big Youth, a reggae artist and a DJ pioneer. His first album, Screaming Target, produced by Gussie Cloud and released in 1973, was an instant classic. Big Youth vocal skills, along with his inimitable style and love for music, made him a true reggae legend. The gang now, when we say we're gang the gang is a sound. Such as our father, he's tough gang, but he's also a gangite. The gong is a sound that resonates within oneself. So yeah. when you get that gongness, that resonance, right, you carry on that positive vibration. Vibration travels. Vibration just don't stay with you. It's not one gong. No, it's, it's not gong. a bong. It's a gong. <laughs> it's a gong. gong. It's not a bong. It's a gong. gong. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yes, to get that carriage together. Always. Oh, what a pleasure it is to be here with Rowan this morning. You know Rowan from him born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Molly, in daddy used to have a shop right up the street, <laughs> just a black over. Then Tough Gang was two blocks around. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Beast and Street. No matter what guy on the street. Come in, yeah. one at him. Yo, you know, you're late. If you're coming in, you're coming is this? Come in. What is this? I'm him. I'm the boss. I'm him. Richie, Richie, but you look young, I mean, you know, Richie. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep it up, man. <laughs> Mitchie. Tell, yeah. tell us about this place, man. Uh, you are a Pablo shop. You don't know as a Jay Ute. Augustus Pablo. That shop has started from about 1976, 77. Big up. Augustus Pablo was a roots reggae artist and one of the biggest dub producers. He founded Rockers International, a label and a record shop named after his brother's sound system. It's an ex one just thing now, because them run most people out of the business, you know. You understand? And through all the hurricanes and storms and weather, rock is still here. Sometimes I wonder how they do it, but <laughs> they are doing it, brother. And Big Youth is still here, too. <laughs> I want to know how was the vibe on Orange Street back then? Beat Street, oh, sweet beat. <laughs> shaking up Orange Street, oh, sweet beat. Prince Buster. It's creation right there, that, that, that's his headquarters. Remember right around the corner is where Monday upset of them was when they that's make all the stuff. Right in the next street, Beverly. Bundy Lee. <laughs> Beverly's was right there. <laughs> so this Beat Street yeah. is the old foundation of the whole of this music. But let me tell you something. My grandfather, he had a, he had a, a carpentry shop, must be Job's Lane or Beeston Street or one of these down, the down there. My mother, father. But I went to a school down in Windward Road, yeah. close to there. So I used to have to take the bus. So all these places, as a youth, I used Run to take, I used to take the bus and walk by the record shop there. Yeah. My father's record shop. I remember going in that as a youth. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah, you're talking like it is. Yeah, I speak. <laughs> <laughs> Rohan. You're talking like it is. Like it is. Hey, so the greatest thing, right? The reason we, we forward in the place today, you know, I'm gonna move around the island, right? Yeah. And I'm just expressing myself about our culture and our beginnings and what, what is it that Jamaica is to I and I and I. Big Youth puts the Rasta in reggae. He even has green, yellow, and red jewels inlaid in his teeth. Rastafari. First Nazi dreadlocks I am an ever see. Yeah. Per, not even first, the first man. I mean, I see with oh, you know, some updated for company. Look at this. Look at this. Get it close up. Anthony, get it close up yeah. on this. Because Rastafari is not religion, you know. Because religion is a division. Rastafari, the real Rasta is naturality. Like the tree where you see grow, I saw Rasta grow. Righteousness, exaltation, and sin is a reproach to man. No? Rastafari. You see? A spiritual, we get spiritual now, because Big Youth and Rowan Marley <laughs> and the film crew and the rockers bam, bam. crew. Yeah. Yeah. Rockers. Yeah? Because <laughs> we have a story where the mind. story is so long that it has no beginning or no, no end. ending. We have to just pick up and deliver. Yeah. Because <laughs> as, as it is written, so <laughs> shall it be. Yeah. Yeah. Aye, aye. Every man have a right to decide his, his own, own destiny. destiny. And watch this, we can't change destiny. You see, these powers that, that we great people give to these people, they make we come in like we wanted, but I don't care, I want it for righteousness, so what, <laughs> what else? And togetherness. I, I, yeah. yeah, hopefulness. And, and, and when Ruan Marley come and set it, because I'm far and they don't place it. Yeah. Guys, foundation is on a holy mountain, you know. Sure. Zion! Clean hands. <laughs> Only you have clean hands and pure heart can yes. enter. Yeah. You know, I would talk a lot of things and I can talk a lot of things, you know, but sometimes it gets controversial. Because we are the roots. Speak on, brother. Because the music let's stay away, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. The music let's stay away. They never uplift the people them to a level. So we take Rastafari to them now. Jamaica was so brutalized and colonialized <laughs> and oppressed. Yeah? Or downpressed. Because the amount of down pressure on the people and 
how them separate the people political and teach them to live. The people, the people go through a struggle way. Suffering is a poor man's cry. And out of that suffering, it give the people them strength when you have a teacher, you know. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. True. Yeah? So, in every culture, throughout this generation, this 2.3 million people, they have a piece of every culture within this island. Yeah? Yes. Because we, we uprise from oppression. Watch your uprising. See my, you my father wanted to uplift and free the people with music, and his will still resonates today with younger generations following his path uprising in the inner cities. We had the studio at Trail Party Records, you know? So we were just building music every day, trying to stay positive, you know? Positiveness is what, you know, we, we, we live off each and every day. You know, try to motivate each other to try to rise because we know we are the black ones and what? We're strong, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah man, we're strong, man. And unity come first. Yeah, man. So we, we try that every day, try to live in unity every day in Jamaica. And unity strength. Right across the board, you know? What really inspired you to make music still when I hold as get a youth in the Garris in Jamaica, J.A. Mm -hmm. Don't know, chair for the records. Music is life, so regardless of the violence or the inspiration we may get, regardless of the result, mm -hmm. our inspire in the inner city. You know what I mean? So just hit the music, hit the boat, hit the studio. Music just create of a life living. You know what I mean? The pain, the love, the depression. Everything. You know what I mean? Everything. Music is life. So system, just bring it to government the system, everything. Everything you know? It's a whole yeah. vibrational pool, you know what I mean? man. No matter what, it means a whole vibrational yeah. pool. I watch you know, music help you for free with mine as well, to mm. keep yeah. that beer. It make a release with the inside of it and make everybody can know what they know in mind. That's why Bob Paul like always live on, because Bob Paul is a music hit, but you know, feel no pain. Ah. Mm-mm, the money get loud. She gain all the money the ride, yeah. Let me chip in our way, cause that's the money done. She says she coaching us, yeah, yeah. for the records, Remerge, DJ Lava. The whole works, potential. Coming up, more reggae with Big Youth. I'm on a quest to make you discover how Rasta and reggae are forever linked. We're on Orange Street, the birthplace of reggae, talking music with legendary Big Youth. When we're joined by another reggae artist, our brother, Fantan Moja. Close the door. Yo, yo, yo. Singing yeah, glory yeah. to dry in the <laughs> Rasta for <laughs> This is the only friend of my father that I've come to Jamaica that I know on this journey that really love gang youths. His brethren, my father, our, our father, he stepped away when I was nine years old. I am 45 today, and here I am, Orange Street. This is where the sound, the origin, where you come to feed, as we are here in Rockers, this place here is where reggae like chunk, chunk, right on this block. So if you know your music, if you know the history of reggae music, here we are with Jayut. Hey, what is this? What is this is Bunga Ehrman, the Don percussionist on the island. Bunga grew up in Trenchtown with my dad. He was one of the drummers that performed with His Majesty visited Kingston in 1966. Oh, you see me? Why are you, are you passing here? Why are you passing down here? I got on your dad here. Give thanks, yeah? All right, Bongo. All right, man. Go ahead, go ahead, Bongo. You want me to This is, this is... Prince Buster. Ain't none of them, just that one, because techniques closed down. So does Pablo that really keep the thing jiggy and keep it going, right? Prince Buster is foundation. Born here on Orange Street, he is one of the pioneers of ska and reggae, shaping Jamaican music forever. Up to this day, his records still draw the youths to reconnect with the roots of music. I, I really have a preference for, like, vintage 1970s roots reggae. Anytime I can find them, the music, them, I play them, you know, because I even have a radio show in Florida now, and 
I like them extended version, roots, dub sound where we can have a meditation over and kind of share that vibration with people, you know? Dutty Bookman is one of the founding figures of Reggae Revival. Come from Kingston, Jamaica, Binion Town. 1982, come up in the dancehall period, you know, influenced as a youth by dancehall music and come up through life and realize, you know, at, at a certain point I, I came into a consciousness and um, I was working at the Bob Marley Museum, came across His Majesty's book and, you know, things changed from there, you know. Working at Bob Marley's, I discovered that there was a whole revolution going on during his time. I really like the revolutionary process and how people power make things work, you know what I mean? And to discover that reggae music was that before I was born. But we grew up in this culture and we don't even know. A lot of us don't even know today what is happening, you know? It just made me dig and, you know, listen to a lot of stories from people. At the same time, I was in the midst of a young crop coming up through an underground live scene. It was really important when we were coming up, like, say, 2009, going into 2010. That was when I started to notice that we were we were onto something, like we were reconnecting with that revolutionary spirit from back in the 70s, as I imagine it anyway. You know, I just express, you know, this is a revival. You know, it, it, I initially wanted to say it was a renaissance, but to me, the renaissance already happened. You know, the whole period of the 70s with Bam Marley and Dennis Brown and Jacob Miller. And... So anyway, it kind of just took off from there. The media started to catch on to this movement and recognize the name Reggae Revival. It took a life of its own from that point, you know. My youth g -Arc is a perfect expression of Reggae Revival. Bless up, you know that. They're speaking to me, the one called Black Boy G, g you know that. I'm a proud youth, I'm proud to be who I am. I'm the son of Bobby Digital, so it speaks for itself. His father, Bobby Digital, is one of the most influential reggae and dancehall producers of all time, leaving a massive rhythm collection for g to dig into. I mean, music is my art, music is my passion, music is my love. You know I mean, so it's all the music alone I can give and my love. Uh, a lot of old souls sang right here and in these walls where I can just go and pick up a tape out of the catalog and run it off on the, the 24 track and create something from the past that didn't use or did use and get that new sound or I wanted sound. So it's just one works and music is the works. Follow my footstep, I'm not follow it, I'm a walking on it. Yeah? <laughs> Me did the one and two music to sing to, you know, um, do, do the one and two DJ thing. So, yeah, man, I never take it on seriously. Me did just do it as uh, enjoyment. Shut everyone. So I'll go on. A genetic thing that. It's just the, it's just the power of music at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Every youth, as them say, them father's an artist and want to be an artist too. It's only few would end up going to be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> it's a different vein, you know, a different era, a different balance different view of the thing. He might hear the music in his likeness and love to the level of where he want to put it. Marketing-wise, he might have a different ears for that. So you want it? If you love the vibes, use your right hand, clap your left hand. I feel good to see the young artists pushing our culture forward. Yeah, yeah. Hi, bro. Come go, go and check up a lightning club. Hi, yeah. you. Some for this, dad. I'll be a bit too character and a coconut. I tell the lightning. Bring out the wall in you. 
Lightning. Spicy. Juicing is a part of our Ita liberty. And I know a real good juice man on the island. Viva. People, people drink my juices, they change up. A lot of people say they change when they drink certain juices of mine. Because apparently it's natural. And when natural, natural going to your body, you gotta change it. Viva has been making juice for a long time. He learned to make juice back in the 60s from his good friend Alan Skilko, a professional football player in Jamaica. My father and Alan shared a love for the game and they became really close friends back in the 70s. With the whole energy with the juice business now, I used to live down at Alan Cole Gates and thing. In them times in the 80s, them and thing. And Skill used to make juices for, for, for Bob, while well, I used to make juices for Alan in those days is because Alan had to move fast every morning, come to early, going to play ball, gun. Just make juices. Just make juice. When me, me have the time to make his juices, while he has the time to make Bob juices. So that was the circle. That's what's going on. Very good at that. Anything that you deal with naturality, it's make you change. From the day I start to drink juices, I'm a very changed person. Changes why make me feel younger, make me, me even look younger right now. Because I'm looking at my 60 right around the corner, about 1961. And I look so fresh because of the juices that I've been drinking. A lot of people want to know what I've been doing. This is the only thing I've been doing, eating good and making good juices and drinking and loving people because it's loving you guys and others while I'm making juices right now. Because I love people, so I try to make good things for them. Cut off them around the belt there. What them there? None of that. What them there? Give him some, give him a touch of fight. We can't drink that my phone, man, I drink that. Ah! Those guys screaming target is our tail. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I. I, I. I, I. I, I. I, I. Iron Street is a blessed place, and we couldn't leave without some music. Survival. Play that tune. Look at your foot good. No scratches. Where's the fountain? No, man. It's okay there. After the break, I'm taking you to the Rasta village of Mobe. Now that I've made you discover Rasta through Ashanti's history, it's time to go deeper in the culture and its foundation. To do so, let's forward to Montego River Gardens, 30 minutes from Montego Bay, to the Rastafari indigenous village where Micah Tafari. Micah the Great. Yes, Rastafari. One of the founding members will give us a tour of our history and its community. <laughs> As we step into the village with the boys, Micah invites us to the museum to speak about our history and further understand the link between Rastafari, Jamaica, and Africa. Yes, so, when you, so when you hear the music, that's Naya Kum. Yeah, that's Naya, Naya Kum. And Kumina, Kumina. Yeah, original German from the ancients yes, of the city sir. of Jamaica. <laughs> hey, what's your name, party? Una in the army. He says that you are all in the army. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Rastafari yes, army. Yes, right. Ja army. Yes, right. <laughs> Yeah. Marcus Gavin. Marcus Gavin. <laughs> Ross Ross <laughs> and talk about the I and I who has never even stepped foot on Africa and how we can accept Africa as our birthplace or we sight up Isla Slassa as our teacher, our father, our God, our king, you know? So it's important that ones know that man. Not we don't have to really we don't have to really live in Ethiopia to say Ethiopia. Yeah. You know? <laughs> because Africa is born in Iron Island. We didn't inborn thing. Yes, yeah, sir. Spiritual DNA. Rastafari. It's in the great. Yes, man. <laughs> Watch out now. Yes, you look for the great. I'm, I'm great. about. I'm at yeah, this see, they know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm close to this stage. <laughs> I'm good. <getting>. Check out that. <laughs> hey, yes, man. Yes, man. I know, so this initiative started now from a group of families. Right. Yeah, where we were all living and, and working separately from each other. Right. And it's like we really look into ourselves because at, at a certain time we were feeling unfulfilled. You know, feeling like, like we wanted more. Right. You know? One of the things that we thought that we were missing was a sense of collective security. We were developing and building something that was for us uh -huh. and, and by us and yes. something that we could represent right. you know, and something that we could use to represent ourselves right. as well you know, and speak of ourselves because 
in a lot of places in the world, a lot of books about Rastafari, a lot of documentaries. However, it is not our voice, you know, sure. it is someone else's interpretation. So we created this space now to, to have our own voice. Absolutely. And to have our own interpretation that can host people and, you know, explain to them what it is we're what doing is Rastafari? and Rastafari See, and the fullness and thing, you know what I mean? Yes, so that is the whole vibration of why it is that we are here, you know, and, and this is a part of our redemption too as well. Maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you could come to Jamaica and say, oh, you're coming to some Rasta, Rasta village. That, that, feel this that, positive vibration. Yes, that wouldn't be there, you know? To be at this point now, where it is now, that we could develop something like this, to, to speak our own words, you know, and, and change our words if we feel our mind, you know, because we said that yesterday, but what was right yesterday, today could be wrong, sure. you know? So this, this allows us to be a living reality. Yes, Absolutely. because we can mold and, and, and design our destiny now, how it is that, that, that we want it to go. And the best way to fulfill our destiny is to fully overstand our roots. Starting in one of the first Rasta teachers, the gong, Leonard Howell. This was, is, is the vision of the gong in our sure, space. Sure. Thank you, Marlon. Now, Leonard Howell now is, is one of the first interpreters of Rastafari, you know, to come out with a clear philosophy of what uh, Rastafari is. After Marcus Garvey. Yeah, yeah. So, so he started around in the early 1930s, yeah, and started to, to teach the people about his majesty and the fact that his majesty is the true and living king. I'm sure that you have already noticed that we, Rastafari, use I instead of me to emphasize the subjectivity of each and every one. I and I totalize the oneness of Jah in every human. I and I means that the Most High dwell within us all and we are one people. It was mainly about all the practices of what we call modern sustainability. Yes, and this was in the 1930s and 40s. They're planting their own food. They're not on the grid. They collect their water. They're selling their own produce to get money. Mm -hmm. They're building their own clothes. They're, you know, creating a whole in, um, nation out of their, their living, you know, and taking care of their own needs, mm -hmm. you know. So in this space, as I'm saying, it's about the redemption of all of those initiatives and all of those energies and all of those people that really had a vision of Rastafari and wanted to see this vision manifest. People. The fullness is that we see people, everyone beings. as Rastafari, you know. Everyone. We see everyone as potentially Rastafari. True. It's just that they don't know it once, as once yet. You have, once yeah. you have love inside, is Rastafari. Exactly. Car. Rastafari is really the God within oneself, you know what I mean? Really recognizing I and I as the living beings that have the right and the, crea the creation within oneself to make the change and be the change. So Rastafari is really owning one's dominion. So it's the God that this, right? That's what it really truly means. Coolness, man. So I'm done by the Check Don't it. Don't listen now, it's a river. River? <laughs> At least I gotta wash my face or something. <laughs> Let's go check the river, bro. <laughs> wow, my brother. <laughs> Talk about living, my G. <laughs> like to live like this. Yes, yeah, man, let me go down a little bit more. Yeah. We choose to live in the earth and even acclimatize ourselves to the environments that we're in. You know, learn about the trees, learn about the herbs, learn about the birds and the, the, the flora and the fauna, and how it is that we can find a way to create a, a symbiotic relationship out of this interaction. And this is why we choose to be here, you know. We also look into the trinity of all things. We look at yesterday, and we look at today, and sure. we look at tomorrow. Sure. This is about now too as well. Absolutely. The fact that honoring the ones who were here before sure. us and the work that they have done, and the fact that we are here right now, and we must secure the future for the ones who are to come. You, you see, I which you don't really know, I. Yeah, yeah. In that yeah. way, but I journey now started as a youth, as gang youth, you know. But I'm not going to go too far into that. Raised by Rastafari, the principles. Then from there now leave Jamaica and go live in Miami with my grandmother, who is Rastafari. So mm. she raised I and I about the principles of love and how to be caring and still holding that order of the truth, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. That's a youth, people telling me, you know, and I went on to that and started playing football. So now while I'm playing football, this is football. American football, football yes. Yeah. <laughs> so always getting my ear cut and thing and eating a little burger to put on the muscle, you know? And then my second year now, I start saying to myself, when am I going to say Rastafari, like, from a fullness, you know? <laughs> so I start asking myself. So I say, I, run, I come to Jamaica, check with my brothers, Ziggy and Steve, you know, the, the leaders, you know, because mm -hmm. I was our father step in when I was nine years old. He's my brothers who teach I and I. Mm -hmm. So when I return to UM now, 
I stop eating meat, stop eating this, stop eating that. I was one of the first guys to start really growing my hair, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm learning. Mm -hmm. I'm learning the journey. You look today, I pull my socks up and I write on one leg, Ja. Then the other one, Rastafari. Right. <laughs> so the coach, yes. the coach one day says to me, Rohan, Nike wants to know what's on your socks. Because all the other guys, they write, God bless on their, you know, God no. bless. So, <laughs> He says, Nike wants to know, what are you writing on your socks? Oh, God bless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, boy, right right. Same so, you know, thing, yeah. same thing. So, so after that, now, I went to Canada, right? So I'm playing the football, and I'm reading my Bible every evening. I'm playing the football, you know, it's a contact sport. So I find myself removing from the aggression and really taking on the principle of giving love mm -hmm. and not, not through aggression, like mm -hmm. destruction way of man, you know, mm -hmm. the bones and the liberty, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, remove myself from football. And the next step to my spiritual journey was to go back to Zion, to connect with Africa and our history. When I went to Ethiopia, right, and understand that the nature of man is not only through words, but through spirituality and the way we live, and that is kind of how I really got my groove. Rastafari is I and I and I, but yet still, it begins with the I. Yes, sir. It begins with oneself. Mm -hmm. So if oneself cannot find one's own foundation, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and, and no, no, no one can. So no, and through Mali, you know, which is my foundation, I follow that teaching because my father set the way, my brother set the way. Coming up, the leaf of life. We are in the Rasta village of Mobe with Micah Tafari, one of the founding members speaking about Rastafari, our roots and our history. After that, Michael will give I and I a tour of his land. Rastafari is a way of life. And as his majesty say, you know, I and I should find balance. It's spiritual and a material balance. So not everyone who say Rastafari live in Jamaica, live next to a river. Yeah. You know, we have ones that say Rastafari live in the city, yeah. Kingston City, Manhattan, Manhattan yeah. like I, <laughs> you know. Yeah. We live amongst our universal brothers and sisters and Rastafari is for each and every one. So it's not, a, it's not this way old thing where you have to live in the forest, no. But you have ones that live in the forest and they hold an order for the ones like I and I who can come in now and hold our meds and come to these places and remove ourselves from that type of way and still come find our brothers in the midst of the jungle as well as in the city. Exactly. So it's a brotherhood throughout universe. Yeah, iPhones included, cameras included, yeah, cars yeah, included, yeah, planes, man. palace, yes, man. Yes, man. huts, yes, every, rivers, yeah, yeah, ocean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole thing, huh? Yeah, and the thing about it too, as well, is that Rastafari is not a cult, yes? No. So we're not looking for more followers to say, hey, everyone <laughs> has to come and be Rastafari. No, we're, we're looking at people and their hearts. We are all about love. <laughs> now that we overstand our history, it's time to learn more about the village liberty. So, so tell me about this, so. Leaf of life. Leaf of life, yeah. So, no. This is all natural. Yeah, man, this is all, all natural. This is one of the greatest plants. Leaf of life. Yeah, man, I to say. Like just one leaf like this. Yes. If you put it anywhere at all, it will just start growing roots out of the leaf. Okay. And just start multiplying. So we also use this as a rooting agent too as well, you know, for, for plants that we're trying to, to root. Right. We, we make a, a serum out of this. This is the leaf of life, a species of suckling herb growing widely on the island. This plant is an amazing remedy. It's either chewed, brewed as a tea, or applied on the body to cure, well, pretty much everything. <laughs> this now, big superstar, this. <laughs> Endemic to Jamaica. Yeah. Search my heart. Search my heart. Yeah, man. Only okay. found in Jamaica. Yeah? Powerful towards the heart. Make you only sing of one love. You know what I mean? Many rivers to cross. <laughs> yeah, man, but to have the same way. Yeah. So this now make one of the toughest tea you can find anywhere. Right, love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we grew up on these things. No and this is what we call Kaya, nice. but I'm pretty sure you know its other name, marijuana. <laughs> Strain is it? All right, so we were talking about that, you know, starting to explain some of the, 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 the scientific parts of it and things too as well. Um, we like that, you know, because we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to also remember that it's just ideas. Sure. And next year or the year after, you might hear them say, oh, no, no, it wasn't that. Too. It is something We made else. a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just have to start over a while ago. <laughs> right. You know, so it's like 
we kind of get a more awareness now, mm -hmm. you know, and a more documenting our observances. A greater part of what we're doing now is to observe the, the plant's intelligence sure. and how it is that it has the ability to acclimatize and adapt to the environment that it is in and make use of the Sorry. material right. that is available to it That's and right. the best right. that it can do out of it right. in in any climate. Exactly. Sure. And in terms of now how resistant it naturally is to bugs and pests and these kind of things. Sure. But this, you know, we see it's a very good formation, grow right. big and strong. So with a, a lot of them, this is one a, a winning one. Right. What we, we say now we exposed to the elements, everything it not touch, we know water it no special way. Right. Not not all. We just get the ability now for just go. And you have some are dead and you have to watch them to make sure they're them dead because they will revive. Right. When you think they dead, you see it Sprout it's again. come again. The best way to seal up our tour is to sit down with our host and eat some goodies from the garden. And we're about to do just that. Eitel is vital. All right, so there's a steamed veg and it's done with carrots, seasonings. That's our ackee and that's our national fruit. Ackee has the consistency of scrambled eggs and grows everywhere on the island. When it's ripe, it turns from green to a bright red to a yellow orange, and it splits open to reveal three large shiny black seeds. Trust me, I and I love our ackee in the morning. <laughs> this is a breadfruit, it's roasted. This one is our cassava. The flour is used to make a cake, which is fried. That's the bami. And this, my friends, it's a part of our culture, a true Jamaican delight. The bami is a flatbread and its tradition descends from the natives of our land. It's made from cassava or a manioc, a long tuberous starchy root similar to yam. Bami can be either steamed or fried. I like mine fried. Compliments to the chef. Bless, bless. <laughs> yes, man. I so. Everything is going on the farm, brother? Yeah, man. If you know your farm, you can't go hungry. Yeah, no, you're mad, man. <laughs> That's why everything is good. Yeah, man. Everything is everything good. Everything is good. It's just about how you use it and how, how you, you flex and motion around it. Like you said, application is key. Yeah, man. <laughs> is it being applied to sustain humanity or is it just being applied for one's wealth? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I give thanks and praises to the fullness of this experience. The Rasta village is truly an amazing, inspiring place. So are Mike and his people. I'm gonna feel good that my father's vision perpetuates in the eyes of the younger generations. Ja bless. You have to love today. Yeah, and we're to looking love. forward to yeah, loving to tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> That's the fire I love, see? Ja love. Mike, I told I that I cannot leave without meeting life. <laughs> yeah. Iron, like a lion. <laughs> In Zion. Mm. <laughs> aye, aye. Rowan. Rastafari. Come on. So that is, that is full name? Uh, well, I name Valen Edley. The name that we get from my parents. Yes. Birth name. Yes. But, but my, my real name. Yes. Yeah, uh, is Iron. I is the nigga, Iron. Iron. Yes, I. Seen Iron. I know how long the eye tried in now. It's not how long, you know, it's how long. <laughs> you know, long start somewhere and pop up somewhere, you know. But wrong now. I have no know. beginning or no ending. Serve the like rotation. It's all, it's all round. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I tell a one now, say, I don't really know. I only know of my presence. Sure. I don't know of my absence. So the only thing I know about is life. And that's why I speak about. So that's the yeah. Truly. <laughs> Rastafari. I, I... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we return, we'll speak reggae and Rasta with Junior Reed. We started the day at Rockers International on Beat Street, speaking reggae with the legend himself, Big Youth. Then we discovered the Rasta village of Bombay, where Micah took us on a tour of his community and the Rastafari history. I'm taking you to Kingston, to the nexus of our reggae and Rasta quest, to Junior Reed's place. So which one? Irish mash and oats? But I'm magnum. And peanut. Irish mash. Peanut. Irish mash, oats and them things. <laughs> oh, may I drink this then? I, I breed that thing. I breed that thing. All right, that thing. All right. All right. I shot this. Children, children. So, at uh, what age you start music? When we start music at 13, you know. Wow. In the street, you know. 
Yeah. I'm um, buck up in a U Monday. Um, me and U Monday starts spiraling. Mm. It starts from this one. So I say, in a youth named Laxa Castell and it's start, eh? Junior Reed is a reggae and dancehall singer and producer. He's a real living legend. He released his first single, Speak the Truth, on Augustus Pablo's Rockers when he was only 13. He then became the singer of reggae band Black Uhuru, who won the first ever Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album. Junior has been shaping the music culture of Jamaica, making his music reach far beyond the limits of our island and reggae, inspiring generations and generations of new artists along the way. I only bless say, say? His Majesty yeah. Lord. I, I. My Lord. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> Go on yeah. the fire. <laughs> yeah. huh? What was that first record? First record produced by Umonel was Speak the Truth. Speak the Truth. You know, and you come out on Augustus Pablo label, Rockers label and thing, you know? Wow. I'm all time, you know. I'm going to sing another song, you know. You never know where the song will go, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not about you, you know. Mm -hmm. And the song, I'll tell you where it'll go, you know. Right. Yeah. right. You just do your work right and it just go out there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, fish? The... No, fry, fry, bro. Fry and steam. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, you know? you go first, I'll eat as well. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> the hand is kicking on the, I mean, well, yeah. The hand is kicking on the eye, you know? <laughs> Wait, the hand is kicking on the eye. <laughs> then, cause, that's why I have even have all, my, my son, Jojo. Cause them wanna represent a Jojo. Jojo. <laughs> I'm named Junior Reed, you know, Jojo Reed. Them youth I represent just like how they represent the gang, see me, you understand me? The future, cause of the youth of the future, you know? Teach them well and them lead the way, you know? You understand me, cause, a child shall lead the way, you understand me? Never too old for learn, and never too young for learn. It's a mess of my lad, so it's a balance, so we just there as one, as a, you understand me? Yeah. Junior is bigger than music. He's a spiritual guy, teacher of principles and the ways of Rastafari. <laughs> I, I. We talk about Rastafari. True life and true journey, right? M my own self, my own journey, learning about life, the teachings of His Majesty, learning how to love each other, learning how to become one within oneself, you know? So your old man now, the great Junior Reed, I like an honorable Junior Reed to I, is the one I look up to as a teacher, an inspirator, a leader, father, a head figure, king, all those vibes, you know? Because, you know, as I learned from myself, you look up to elders and not that your old man is that much older than I am, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so, you feel any pressure as a son to, to live up to a certain thing? No, I'm not. Aye, aye. See? You're not feeling no pressure. I, 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 no pressure. It's an honor. You're a greater, you're a greater father, a greater son in my life. Yeah, so it is. So that means say, the gang come great, you have to come yeah. greater, greater. You know? So greater father, greater son, you know, never later son. You would have glad to see your father, right? You can't hack it or nothing, you know, it's just an inborn concept, an inborn thing. It's a DNA, it's a bloodline. We are still in Kingston with Junior Reed, talking RR, Rasta and Reggae. Rasta, Rasta Farai. You know, it's a, it's a blessing to you know, yeah. to see Kingston with Junior Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and I'm singing to myself, one blood, you know? Sure. That's <laughs> a journal. The mystic, you know, you, you, you ball, you cry, you beg, you, you pray, you do everything for others to see a light, you know? To see the oneness, you know? You know? Yeah. Messenger. Right. It's like, I want to know why. Why inspiring? Yeah. Inspiring. Yeah, because we know why, but some of the generation to know why too. You see the reason why I'm writing that song there still? It's because uh, we made a gut show at the time, because at 80 election, and we, we come from a place called Waterhouse, and the whole place is under tension. We so check it out and check in America again. We find out, say, you have some youth, the Crips and the Bloods um, up there, and it's a next tension again. I yeah, say, no. You know, me, me I drive through the streets in Kingston, because he's a man where we just free. 87. 87, yeah. <laughs> the music alone, that free me still, you know, as a youth, because there was a time where the tension, how politicians set it, 
you couldn't go east, west, north and south. And at the end of the day, it's the music. Music not no friend, and music not no enemy. We need to stand up for love and unity, and, and for unite people. It's a serious thing. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, the world, I that the world want, you know. But more time, it's not the world, you know, it's a fraternity. Love is reggae and Rasta is unity, each feeding off of each other. <laughs> and I is a togetherness. My father's dream to make the world a better place through love, peace, and unity, kept alive by amazing people of this journey. One love. You could have come from Rima, I or come from Jungle. Could have come from Fire House, I or come from Tawail. One blood, one blood, one blood. You could have come from Libya, I or come from. Hobbies and Prince Jamis destroy the space invader. <laughs> I just picked up my brethren, international selector, Futa Hype from the airport. We both travel around the world. So every time we're in Jamaica together, we drive down to Elisha Beach to eat some screecher. And trust me, it's the best roast fish on the island. My famous screecher. Best fried fish, best type of fish on the seaside. We've been coming here a long time. Screech is legendary. Man, I love this place so much. Maybe because Screech is the only chef in Jamaica I can call in at 2 a.m. to roast some fish. <laughs> Just the way I like it, fresh and natural. Yeah, we're doing some roast fish right now, OK? This is the most natural way to roast your fish, right? No file paper, as natural as you can get it. These are doctor fish, strong, tasty, you know, when you come to Squeechy, you can expect the best. Yeah, we'll catch them. We'll catch them from the sea straight to the pot. So you get something fresh, 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 fresh. We'll season it. We'll make sure this thing get really hot. Every three minutes, we'll flip it. And yeah, when it comes to run, we have to make sure it's a run thing. Well done. You will steam run fish, you have to make sure we don't put no pumpkin, no farmer, powder seasoning. You know, he's a, just this natural guy. You know, and that's what we love about him. You know, he's real, not a cotton reel. I know Rowan over 25 years now. I've been cooking for the Marlins for over 25 years. Steve, you know, gang, the whole world. What do you think they keep coming back? Huh? Car? Yeah, it's good, man. It's good. So, you know, when you do something good, people keep coming, man. And it's real. So when you come and get something like that, you got to keep coming, man. And this is strong stuff, man. This is the dip. This is what we use for the roast fish. Cucumber, pepper, onion, pimento seed, and we squeeze a little lime juice inside it. So you have a good digesting after you finish. Great seasoning. So we are at Screeches, my favorite place to eat fish, fried fish, steamed fish, festival bombing. Festival is like a dumpling, dumpling, fried dough. Not everyone can do this. The flavor is different. Yeah, when you come to Hellshire Beach, you get the festival a special way, you know. You can survive off of this. <laughs> you have That's to try right, this way and come here. Crazy. This fish we are having today came from one of those boats. And here he is. Not only himself. is he the greatest, but the number one fish specialist in Jamaica, King Screeching. Wow. wow. And what is this, Sir Screeching? Uh, this is the natural roast. The special zinc roast? Yeah. Ah. Why you had to treat me so good? This is the original Dr. Fish, unopened zinc, roast, just like I like it. You can do this anywhere in the world. No. Oh, man. It's on top. Ah, oh, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it. Thank right. you. Thank you, Squeak. Oh. Yeah. Screech it. Yeah. Every time I'm here, I gotta come see my brother. You treat me with so much love and respect. The best roast fish in the world. Screech. I love you, my brother. Thank you. 
respect. And you know, say, you're welcome all the time. Always, you, know. you know, you, you put me on it, your wall. It's from morning and This is the only people I have in the world. Zero <laughs> screeches. <laughs> and when you come to Jamaica, it's a must. You stop at Screechy and taste the fish. Before digging into what makes a true Jamaican party with footer, although you rarely see them in the series, I had to invite the crew to sit with us and full jaw the experience. Easy now, boys. Me hardcore. You have some DJs that I'm like, okay, he's a Calypso DJ. And I'm saying, all right, he's for uptown, me at the street. Yeah. Hardcore, ragga muffin. So you're a street? Yeah, we are gangites, man. Gang you know what it is? We are rebelling at the music. Street. This is my brethren for the hype. He started spinning records when he was just a teenager and has become one of the most famous selectors in Jamaica. So I could not think of a better person than Futa to speak about the fundamentals of the party and the sound system. What is a sound system? Sound system is basically equipment. It's boxes and speakers and amplifiers. The sound system DJs create the entertainment. Right. But it's the way how we do it in Jamaica. Right. Across the world, they set up PA systems. We don't do it like that. <laughs> we set it up like walls, like columns. They call the bass box scoops. They're cut in a C, half a C. Right. It's different from having a PA sound system that the speaker is just doing that. Sure, sure. So the, the scoop, it grabs the bass and it throws it out at you. It's like baseball. like. You know what I mean? Right. So the sound system has a distinctive sound. Yes, it was the creative skill and minecraft of carpenters and engineers in Jamaica that decided that, okay, we are going to make speaker boxes different from the rest of the world. We, we set it up in a triangular spec. It has to be like this. So the party will be within that triangular okay, motion. Okay. So when the music come like this, you're caught in the triangle of it. So you can't escape it. OK, OK, OK. <laughs> So, as an entertainer, a selector, what is it that you do to make everyone vibes up? How do you get the crowd going? Well, honestly, for me, I'm different from other DJs. I am um, connected spiritually with the music. <laughs> like, I can have a set thing in my head, like, OK, I'm going to try to do this at the party. But when I walk into the party, I was given a gift to feel energy, feel vibration. So I like look at the crowd and uh, the crowd in a not so good mood tonight. <laughs> so I'm gonna play me some Lucian and some Sizzler and some Baba or some, you know, Garnet to lift them spirit before I go into it. Or I can go into the party and say everybody in a party mood. I'm gonna play some Ding Dang or some Elephant Man or, you know what I mean? So I kind of feel the energy of the people. I can't just get up and say, all right. Make a play of souls, and then when we go in there, I now nah, feel a souls vibe. Right. I still go play. That's right. why you become a, a boring DJ. Because <laughs> you have to fight the emotion of the people. Right, so you have to be in tune with your audience. Yes, the Almighty has to be a part of your set. <laughs> yeah. and, and the next thing when some Love DJs don't know yeah. Ron, right? Yeah, yeah. Watch this. If Ron Marley walks into a party, right. and I'm there five minutes now, while going to the bar, forget your liquor. Yeah. You don't get no vibe yet. See. I can't play your biggest favorite song yet. I have to watch the crowd, watch the emotion, and watch the drinking, look at the cups and the bottles and see the measurement. Then I look at your pores, like how much sweat is coming from your face, how much that's, sweat is coming from your neck, that's how technical. much sweat in your hand. That's deep. That's a lot deep. of DJs don't do that. That's so they, they just play the right wow. song at the wrong time. Wow. So then you don't get the forward. Wow. I watch the crowd. I watch the measurement. Wow. So you watch my pores. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I can see if Ron is like this. Yeah. I can see if Ron is like this. And if I'm yeah. like that, what do yeah. you do? If I'm doing that? I know that you're ready for the song. Because <laughs> the, the, the alcohol is in your system. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's getting there. Fun yeah, time. so you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be like, cool, just come in from <laughs> downstairs. You walk up the step. You're trying to find your spot. You're trying to look, OK, let me see what's going on. And I'm going to play the biggest fucking song. Right, you're not, you're not ready. No, nah, I don't nah, I'm not sense. positioned. I'm nah. not, not set so up. You're not going to do this. Bop, bop, bop. Because you're not ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your table don't look good yet. You're Ron Marley. Your table got to look good. So <laughs> while he's at the bar, how am I going to play Ron's <laughs> biggest song while, while he's at the bar? I, I have no drinks here. <laughs> yeah. Dance hall is just a, a fun place, a dramatic place where you can't expect anything. Sim, sim, sim. Yeah. What you like most about being a selector? What I love most of all yes. is traveling. 
meeting people from different cultures, different genres. Traveling exposes you to how powerful what you're doing is. Because I can go to a country that nobody understands my language, <laughs> but when I play music, we are connected as one. One's dancing. So that's very powerful. Jamaican music is mainly social commentary, girls, weed, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff like that. Herbs. Yeah, herbs. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about what we live. It's not like we're doing anything fake. Yeah. So to see my lifestyle and my culture taking me to other places in other world, yeah. that's the best thing. I like traveling. I like winning over people <laughs> to, to my culture, you know what I mean? I'm a missionary, I'm a gang. The gangites. <laughs> gangite. Coming up. Yeah. I'm taking you to the core of the sound system culture. I'll introduce you to the fat man and some very special guests. Today, I want to make you discover what a true Jamaican party is about. Futa and I are driving to Lover's Choice HQ in Portmore to meet the legends behind the sound system culture. The problem is how our culture is not about clubs. We like outdoor parties, street dances, sound system. We like seeing that. We like feeling that energy, you know what I mean? I don't think Jamaica really accepts club as the ultimate party spot. They really want to be in a dance hall. Because in a dance hall, they know you can't burn your little spliff. You yeah, get fresh air. Jamaican music is based off a German bass. You know, that's what we go off of, you know what I mean? It's not African from reggae to dance hall. It's, it's just, it's unexplainable. This is car, right? This is the light of a sound man. Now we're ready to work. He strings the sound, he connects the wires, he tunes the sound. He's like a, an engineer. He does everything. Man of the moment, see ya. Yeah, man. This is Fat Man. This is Ron Marley. Yes, bless her, bless her, bless her, bless her. Fat Man yeah. is a legendary operator and owner of Lover's Choice. In Jamaica, a sound system is not only a loud set of speakers, it's also a group composed of engineers who built the system, DJs and selectors. Each system has a crew name that allows you to pick your party depending on the selector or the loudness you're looking for. Sin? The operator of Lover's Choice. No, Fat Man. Lover's Choice. Ras you have a little Ras bit. Gang Hikes. Gang Hikes. Yeah. So, Turn inside yes, so. sound system. <laughs> <laughs> have a care of fat man. Meanwhile, you tell them from whence you evolve in a business car, you had to do this from before me, born. So you have to give them your yeah, piece of born in the night, we start with Lover's Child like 79. Yeah. So we're gone 38 years. 38 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Hope I would pass with different, different select and thing, and you know? We got all about, we got to play and thing. Yeah. But we're going to get up for international work, but yeah. You know? How did the sound system phenomenon begin? Like, what was it like then compared to now? Right to where I light post, I used to have a look at the radio. I kind of come, you I'll change, change channel and get to the, the rockers. So we get to the reggae you now. We play and never find it at sea, and we can get to the reggae. So I'm 79, that. We used to follow up Michael Campbell, get at the control. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Every Friday night, so when film program done, we just have to find another reggae I play, rockers yeah. and things. So from 79, and thing there. So we can buy one and two equipment and. <laughs> Years ago, you know? Yeah. From nothing to something. We still fall out. Because we have a younger one in the night, and yeah. we have a theme song already now. Yeah. <laughs> You're a son, really? Yeah, my son. We have a theme song already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a grandson. Yeah. You're a DJ, you're a Q. DJ. No, I assure you, because the people out of the world hear a sound system, and they know really the selector, they don't know what the sound system is. Why the selector is known. So a sound system consists of not just the DJ or the MC, but it consists of the equipment. So most places overseas, you go to a club. This is not. These are street equipment. So, so let me ask you something, now, fat man. It depends on how big your sound is, make it become popular. Is that is, it that is, that is one. Idea? That is one. Fans so certain the vibration. Right. But the select have nothing to do with it. You see, see, there. You have to have a real big yeah, sound. Yeah, you have to have big sound with a certain work. Right, right. But we are from small sound to big sound. You know? Right. See, you know, we have whole papier here, Bridget. So if it's too big, then we will just call them in. Yeah, see, see. You have to have clear sound. You have two tone, and you have green. Grizzly and enough of them. All right, so yeah. this is where See, I'm up as one, Bridget. If you come to the church, come gang it up as one. Yeah. Because we have tone, we have hug and they love the dust. Top of the sound. Yeah, when that's all the way, I have to sound rise up now. We are going to go near. Near my CD fans, we have press comics. Yeah. Oh, Make sure all pass over, but all I just want to link travelers. They come to chase, we just come as one. Yeah. Yeah. They keep on a big no, show in arena, you want it. I just steal them. I find you coming there. Right. And lock it down, wicked. Yeah. Come in, sir. Come back here, sure. DJ, sure. Yeah. 
and the one and two, the That's son and the grandson. Right. Lover's child, so the generation never stops. Yeah, yeah, Joe. Sunday vibes. Oh, wicked yeah, man, man delete. Man. I went. Yo! The Linja Man! Guys, this is the Linja, legendary reggae artist and toaster, with enough records including one of his biggest hits, Cornbread. He really impacted Jamaican culture. A long time in the game, man, and thing, man. One of my biggest show, no, man. The Linja, the first dance hall, reggae dance hall DJ. Yeah, the Linja. Yeah, the Linja. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, original DJ. Probably hey. time. Yo, yo, remember when we said Cornbread, Earl and me? Yeah. So this is the Linja, that's his song. Yeah, yeah. Cornbread, Earl and me, Earl and me, Earl. Early me, he was shot by a cop for a soda pop. So, Rowan, so So, that's the sound system style right there. You see, yeah. the ninja lived there, so yeah. my father passed through this yard sometime. Yeah. Come check yeah. the ninja. Yeah, see, he's our brethren from yeah, way, 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 way back when. The whole family, you the whole man. The ninja know me from my little man. I know him from my baby. Yeah, big man. That's the father. So, we see him on the way. Yeah, man, yeah, man. 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 Yeah, Today is a great day. Yeah. For the people in the house. Are you ready for this? Girl, shake your body if you're ready for this. Just move that body if you're ready for this. Boom, bam, bam. You can be at the party. You can bring your shorty. Mad, mad day. So much culture in one place. Up, up. After the break, we're going to talk about dance moves with my friend Saroy. I've seen you dance, and you have one move. <laughs> in this episode, I want to make you experience a real Jamaican party. And to do so, I'm taking you on a trip throughout every aspect of this culture. Now that we have discussed sound system with Futa Ibe and Fat Man, it's time to talk about dance hall. And since the gals are the real star of the party, I invited over my good friend from Canada, Soraya Sabi, international model and TV host, to learn about dance hall. As a matter of fact, Soraya, why don't you host this part of the show? I got you, Ro. We're now back in Kingston to meet the girls from Dance Expressions. And I can't wait to know more about dance hall. I can't tell you the truth, though. I brought Sarai here. Well, I didn't bring her here. You know, she wanted to take a journey. So I said, come to Jamaica, because she lives in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show her the dance hall culture and how crazy and free spirit. Hey, so Sarai. I've seen you dance, and you have one move. <laughs> Sarai, <huh? laughs> First time you're in Kingston. <laughs> yeah, when you talk about dancing, who would you say is the pioneer of that? Well, everybody what? might agree to say really like Bogle because, yeah. because of the Bogle dance, yeah. you know, the first international recognized dancer step is Bogle. So really? yeah. international. Okay. Yeah, the other ones before. Dela right. move and yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. right. Yeah. Now, but you know you say. Sin, sin, sin. Everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody know it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys did this move. So what is that move? No, no. <laughs> well no, they stylized Bogle, you know, because when Bogle doing the Bogle, there's no form with the hands. It's just there. Uh -huh. Okay. But because I can't get the groove, he like give you a gun finger. I can't get the groove. I can give you this one. Uh, but yeah. So wait it's a minute. Really so this it's free flow. Oh mm -hmm. wow. See, All you my... didn't know that either. No. <laughs> and you from here. All my life, I thought if he said to the Boga dance, it's like. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Which um, but, but, in most con most countries, people still execute Bogle like this. But but when you look at Bogle, he's like this though. Tell you the truth, like party, yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. Oh, wow. Amazing. Gerald Levy, aka Bogle, was one of the founding fathers of dance hall culture. <laughs> He's a true icon that created more moves than anyone else, paving the way for new generation of professional dancers, such as dance expressions. Professionals. This is their livelihood. Yeah, well, 17 years. They take it very, very serious. You have to, because once you're in the field of dance hall, um, you can take dance hall so much and no further. You have to stop and look at it and say, how much further can I go? I mean, we teach dancing. We, we have dance hall classes. You know, we do these things. Uh, you know what? What I'm trying to get at, right, is that even dance expression 
support communities, mm -hmm. like the like young ladies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know our passion starts early, so we feel like this is what we want to do, and we know it now. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't want to go that way. We are, we are Jamaicans. We are free-spirited people. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful to know that dance expression is also a community movement, you know? Mm -hmm. So tell me about that. It takes training in a row, and most of the time, it is, it is about you, the person, what you want, whether it be dance or any area of the arts, music, drum, whatever it is. It is really about the person you want to become at the end of the day. In today's society, in today's world, currently, for woman empowerment, you know, it's it's very provocative, very revealing, a lot of skin showing and thing. But it's a thing, though. I love the respect that the community give to the dancers. It's no different than being on the beach in a bathing suit. It shouldn't be a problem. I just want to know how you get that confidence to be able to. Wear what you wear, yeah. and move while you move. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's over time. Yeah. It's over time, and I mean, it's the growth. We are public figures now, so it's like we, we can't really go around with certain things. things. Right. So, like what? Um, like when you were younger, and I was younger, you could probably say, my dad is my role model, and think, but society has changed now. Mm -hmm. So these young ones are coming up, and their role models are some of the dancers who are scantily clad, they don't wear clothes, so they look up to them. Wait one so second, it's... scantily clad. Rastafari. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost in translation right now. Scantily clad. Barely wearing clothes. Clad. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. might have on a, a top, mm -hmm. but it's see-through. Okay. You might just have on nipple covers, and that's it. Have and a the shorts that looks like, like underwear. Like underwear, right. Okay. okay. So those are their role models now, so it's kind of hard to say. This is not the right way, this is that, but because of social media, everything is acceptable now, so it's like, if we come out in that, it still won't look anyway, because it's like it's the norm, mm -hmm. basically. International recognition, yeah. which is, I mean, Jamaica, how many people live here? 2.6 million. 2.6 million. The yes. influence that it had internationally around the world is insane. Yes. I mean, from yeah. the music, even the from the so civil the right, if you uh, look sports. back in, in, in time, yes. the sport. <laughs> the international recognition is, it's dance. Dance is getting, which I'm happy to say, dance is getting the international recognition that it should have gotten a long time. After lunch, we joined the dancers for some steps. You know, just enough to keep our party vibe going. Today we're on a quest to unveil all the elements of a true Jamaican party. After learning about the dance culture with the girls of Dance Expressions, I wanted to jump in the subject and master some moves for tonight. I'm with the queen of dance hall, Kimiko Versatile, choreographer and leader of the Versatile's Ones. I want to learn about the classic steps, her inspiration as an artist, and hopefully some of her signature moves. Tell me about the evolution of dance hall, like starting from the 80s to now. Wow, I mean, dance hall came about from the late 70s, brought by like Yellow Man, Ika Mouse, and it started with her music. Remember, say, Ska was before that, you know, live instrument, and then they add the boombox to it. And then that changed the whole aura of Ska into reggae. Doing that now, people were skanking. I remember yeah, skanking so like, <laughs> like some easy something, bad man vibes, rock and, you know, yeah. that thing, like things like that. During that time, I remember in the music, especially reggae, they were talking about the oppression of the country, the government, the crisis, corruption. With those lyrics, that's how moves were created. So if they're singing about the government, shooting and polluting and thing, you will probably see some gun movement. It's not necessarily picked in badness, yeah. but it's, it's not an aggressive thing. It's right. more of a telling the story. Yeah, through dance, yeah. it's a language. I noticed yesterday that there was what we call selecta. The selecta now is the person that vibes up the party. It's kind of boring in Jamaica when you go and you just hear the music. You know, I hear, but it's all right. I mean, the music is fun, yeah. but he's a vibe master. So if the girls are dancing, he draws up people. 
Is it always like that, where you know different one would step in? Yes, yes. Because remember, so the party starts like all uh, 10, 11, and set up, and but people don't start rolling into like two, three o'clock based on the aura of the dance. But what's the response of all of these people that you meet in different countries? Wow, they're so interested in our culture. They're so interested that some of them want to take it for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so I really have to be careful with the, the amount of information we put out there because at the end of the day, we want to make Jamaica the incubator yeah. for a dance hall. You understand? Who's your inspiration? Where do you get your creativity from? My creativity? Um, I get it from just my surroundings. There's a few person that I look up to in the dance hall industry as females like Kiva the Diva she was one of the first females that really was doing male moves in the dance hall scene and Mad Michelle. Mad Michelle had a certain energy a certain drive when she danced she just captivates you and I was like wow I want to be like her when I grow up you know I have that same energy like it's as equal as a male because the dance hall is dominated by males yeah. so how she performed and how she moved is like the males would have to step aside and give her space so she showed woman power where that is yes. concerned for me. She That's what I've noticed strength. that is that a lot of men would start dancing yes. in earlier right. and then after that the women right. would they play the females last and some parties sometimes they play one female song and the females like so what why happened is to the that? females I think because the culture is so dominated by males, the DJs are males, the selectors are males, most of the dancers are males. So it's just that male ego thing. Yeah. So more time the female have to really fight for that little limelight. <laughs> choreography like almost dancing together and doing it all together. right but it's not choreography it's, it's freestyle we have something that you call social dances and social dances like basically dances that everybody can do so the lyrics would tell you what to do and you just do the steps you know so it's like with the ball and him say walk it dip walk it dip and dip so everybody know what's coming next so that's why you think it's choreographed oh. but it's more instructional so why do you think dance hall is so popular around the world I think it's very popular because it's so expressive. A lot of the people, like even Russians, they live in a cold country, it's really cold. I find that the people are really like reserved, maybe strict. So it's like a getaway from that for them. Dance hall is so warm, expressive, wow. You can actually feel good winding up your bump and don't feel like pe persons are judging you. So I think that's why they gravitate to this so much because for the females you can dance and express yourself how you want and people don't look on you a certain way and in a negative way you feel more empowered too right because when you're there and you're dancing all the men looking on the camera light and you're just going out with yourself it gives you a boost of confidence you created moves definitely and name them yes of that course. is amazing yes Yes. Can we know some of them? Sure. One of the popular dances I did is Watch the Pums. And Watch the Pums means like if you have a man that's always watching you, he doesn't give you any space. In Jamaica, we call them Watch the Pums. Oh, and what's it's the like, poom? Watch the Pums. And the Pums is shortened for vagina. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the moment is like, and you point on the man. Point on the man. And the females in Jamaica, they're not afraid to touch their vaginas, yeah. you know? I remember I went to Germany and I was teaching this movement and some of the females didn't want to touch here, they touch here. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> guys, this is dance hall. And we're not afraid, to, it's ours. Yeah. You know, so touch it, touch it. And they were laughing and she like, <laughs> touch it. And she felt good, she felt more open at the end, you know, so. Yeah, man, so Watch a Poem is one of the popular ones. I can't promise you I'll hit any of these moves correctly, yes. but I'd love to learn something. Sure, you will. I can make you do this. All right, time to go to the studio and guys, watch the poons. <laughs> Let's start with watch the poons. Right, so let's just look in the mirror. All right, so you're riding. You're riding your leg like you're riding a bicycle. You touch your forehead, right? You touch your poons. You fold the arms. Can you say what that man watching me? And you point on it. Walk around, walk around, Saraya. Watch your poons. What impact does it have on you so far? I love 
it. I feel it, like, you know, being Moroccan, our uh, whole body, when we dance, moves in such a different way. You know, like you were saying, yeah. the Russians are like, no, they can't eat. But yeah. the same thing, you know, about being Moroccan. So it's, yeah. it's just nice, you, yeah. you know, you just yeah, feel free. Exactly, right? exactly. So that's why a lot of people gravitate to dancing oh, so much. But I would I'm really love to see you really, like, perform and do all your I choreography. So. I would right. really, really love it. So. I had a blast with Kimiko and the girls. And now that I have a secret move for tonight, it's time for me to get my beauty rest. While I do so, Rohan will introduce you to King Jammy to cover the final part of our quest, the music. All right, so now that you have discovered what sound systems and dance halls is all about, the last but not least stop of our journey, the music, with the legend himself, King Jammy. This place here, this foundation, is created by this man here, legendary mm -hmm. King Jammies. They talk about dub and sound and records upon right. records upon record volumes. Sure. That's <laughs> right. Well, this one is a new pre-release by Juno Reed. It's called Jello Track, produced by Prince Jammy. Go in and start. <laughs> Jammy is one of the most influential dancehall producers in Jamaican history. He shaped music culture by pioneering its evolution from analog to digital. He started in the 70s working for the Don of Dub, the original King Tubby. This is the king before me, King Tubby. King Tubby. Yeah. This is Dennis Brown and myself here. This is the man who inspired me to produce record, Bonnie Lee. Yeah, Jammy's and Bonnie Lee. Yeah. These are some of the artists who I recorded back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, some. Yeah, some, some. Like all. <laughs> some, 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 some of them. Check out the studio now. Up and running. Yeah. yeah. Camera man. Yeah. Take, take a shot of this. This is where production was at one point. Everybody used to come to studio with that, these. Yeah. yeah, you understand? Hit songs, legacy. And there's one, two, three, four. King Yago. Oh, right. Enough more inside. <laughs> More here. <laughs> he has to organize them These so he can find the them. Analog stuffs. Yeah. Also, those are 24 tracks. Yeah. We have 16, 8 tracks, 2 tracks in here. When I came here, my studio, I started recording on 2 tracks with a sling thing, quarter inch 2 track. The sling thing we did, yeah. yeah. Noel Davy and Wayne Smith and myself. I meet one musician for the sling thing. <laughs> I'm going to play percussion for it. <laughs> It's a lyrical catchy him sing lyrics Them keeping a dance Say hand on the dirt Big tune! The slang tang rhythm produced by King Jammy is the first fully digital reggae opening the door to the modern era of dancehall. I knew that he first played it at one of his sound system party but I wanted to hear it from the man himself. You're perfectly right, sir. I would like to and know. The, 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 the dancehall was at, I don't remember if it's 37 Walton Park Road, but the place was named Eagle's Nest. Black Scorpio and myself clashed that night. Right. He played some wicked songs on me that night. And when I said to Toops, Toops, we're going to draw the sling thing now, because I knew that rhythm was going to do damage. <laughs> I want me to draw it on my sling thing. That done the dance tonight. Soldier shoot up the place, everything. No more Scorpio couldn't play. So, King. Eh? Before taking that rhythm outside the studio, like, did it give you that vibe that it's a hit before you even played it for somebody else? That is the first song I ever recorded and I know it's a hit. When him created Yeah, man, in other studio, I know it's a hit. Okay, so that gave you the confidence to carry it. Yes. As, as you, that a true instinct of know. greatness. Yeah, you know me know. Yeah. Everybody in the studio when that a make. Mm -hmm. Everybody went to the yard when they hear that. <laughs> Them skin out, them why the man them just get excited. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, me know sell them, that, that tune they got. Yeah, so, and yes, it proved man. itself. Yeah, man, it did prove itself, itself. man. Yes, yes, definitely. Man. Nice. How do you identify a hit? What's your go-to thing that you know that, okay, this is a hit song? Well, I'm going, I'm going to give you a little magic. Yeah. What I use most of the time to know that a song not necessarily going to be a hit song, but it's going to be a good song. Mm -hmm. I played for all my grandkids, them, all the little children in the area. And when you see them know it quick and start recite it, it's something that them yes. gravitate to it. So I know that it's going to move. From the kids can love it. Yeah, yeah man. Love it. You know what I'm saying? It will work its way through, yeah. It start from Ziggy and Steve. Yeah. yeah. Every morning, yeah. every day, 10 o'clock studio. They're the only people I know that wake up for music, like, just, just like this, just you're in your house. Everyone, let me tell you this. 
You see where I took you in the first studio? Yes. That was my bedroom. <laughs> the studio was in the other room voice behind that. Right? Voice right? Yeah. It was our bedroom. Right. Yeah. Brothers. Wow. So when yeah. Steele and Cleve used to come here, I just wake up out my bed and just jump through the door and go in the studio. See, see, those are the things <laughs> why, as you know, in a musical family, and you see that now and you understand where this family come from, that is uh, the legacy building. Yeah, you, you don't. Yeah, it didn't man. start from because a guy give you a thing and you say you want to start. No, that start from your passion, just, yeah, no, no. and want that, you have so much passion that you share your bed yeah, with the studio. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and you know what? It's two family in this music business that are alike, twins. Sin. And it's the Mali and the King Jammies family. You know? Sin, sin, Because I'm take a sack, you know. I saw me used to deal with my youth, I mean, I saw Bobby used to deal with youth, you know. I see him thing, I see him yeah, thing, you know. Yeah, the music. Come right up, you know. Sure, yeah, sure. So, well, it's evident, because you say, Baby G is our brother, and yeah, he's our father, so. Yeah. And it's true love yeah. for the, the same mission, yeah, which is to man. uplift youths. Yeah, man. Just no different than we were talking about. The youths that were in the studio before we walked in, they're just young producers wanting a studio to express themselves. Right. And you give them a doorway. So right, right. It, it, it. It's about the generation, not just our direct blood, but the blood of love. Yeah. You know, so yeah, we love that. Yeah. You're opening a doorway for them. Yeah. Back in the days, you know, most of these the youths, know. they wanted to do something in music. All of them couldn't DJ, all of them couldn't sing. Mm -hmm. So I invited some of them to be engineers. Engineer. Right. Teach you know, so I teach them a trade and bust them out. Some as become a famous, you know? some fade. Some, yeah, man. some love it, some yeah, didn't that love it that much. Right. Bobby like Digital, Bobby Digital, Mikey Bennett, the whole of them. Bennett. Seal and Cleave, all of them. You know what I mean? The vote yourself. You gotta, you gotta love it. Like enough it. time. So Father, Father yes, King Jammy. How you feel to, <laughs> to know that your young prince <laughs> that used to tag along with you really got it. Yeah. Now he, he, he tuned in. Well, I'm feeling great because I don't think they could do anything else but do what I'm doing. Because them eat music, them sleep music, them do everything music. Because it was right there in their bedroom. It's no different, right, than like when you see these great athletes or great musicians or great whomever and their seed carry on the work, the legacy. Man, as a Jamaican youth, I'm proud because it's nice to know that you, you, you take onto it at a high level, mm -hmm. and a level of love, you know? It's nice to know from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, G. Now, I have to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have the same pressure <laughs> yeah. like yeah, you. Yeah, because you're a thing. <laughs> because I'm business. not. I'm, not <laughs> I'm music. But I'm, yeah, as yeah. far as sound and quality, yeah. you know? But from the perspective of having a perfectionist as a old man, as a father, and the commitment to excellence and yeah. the work that you have to put into it, mm -hmm. I, I overstand that. And, and I love that, and I honor my family for showing it I away. I would like to know how you feel about that. To have a role model like my father, King James, is something superb, it's something that, I, trust me, it's unexplainable, but at the end of the day, it's something to look up to and know that I have this <laughs> footstep to follow. Right. So sure. it's just different, and it's a feeling where I have to respect and, 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 and honor it and carry it to where it should be. It's a wonderful feeling. This man here, this superhero, Seen. you know, he, he instills so much Stuffing us is like, <laughs> believe me. Good. Stern on us and yo, be of yourself, make sure you focus in school, make sure yeah. you, it's not only music, it's not, yeah. his roots. We can go to him with yeah. a problem and say, boy, dad, you know, say, me have a little girlfriend and really, I'm can yeah, reason with you and say, here, son, <laughs> go about it this way, yeah. you know, anything we can talk to him about. So he's yeah. a super dad. See him, see him. You know what I'm saying? My children are my best friends. Yeah, man, we talk a, like, like real friends. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. Call him, dad, how you feel? Everything good? Yeah. Yeah, all right, cool. We'll link up later. The greatest thing we love about our fathers is the experience that came before us. Yeah. Right. So it's because you done Charlie already. True. It's a great overstanding. Pass, yeah, it's like this. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're a brother too. Yeah, what you mean? A brother and a brother. brother. <laughs> All right. Now that you know everything there is to know about the true Jamaican party, <laughs> it's time to touch the road and make you feel the vibes. We're getting close to our goal, and we're about to find out why Jamaican parties are so special. As the night falls on Kingston, I'm meeting with Rohan and the boys at JoJo's, one of their favorite restaurants. Give thanks to Roya. 
We're going to need energy for tonight, and JoJo's is a perfect spot for that. Although they're famous for their jerk pit, Marlon always gets his special lobster curry. <laughs> and for the rest of us, I tell dish and I tell feast with a little bit of fish, red snapper. Watch this. If Ron Marley walks into a party, right. while he's gone to the bar, forget your liquor. Yeah. You're not getting a vibe yet. See. I can't play your biggest favorite song yet. Pirates, yes, they robbed. So night to the merchant ship. I'm the song I'm stuck on. I'm the song I'm stuck on. I'm the song I'm stuck on. I'm the song I'm stuck That is one pants in the vibration. Right. But well, you still have to have enough to do with it. You see, you see, you have to have a real big Yeah, you have to have a big song for the sort of work. Right, right. Remember, say, Ska was before that, you know, live instrument, and then they add the boombox to it. Now people were skanking, I remember, like some easy something, bad man vibes, rock and, you know? So we're gonna draw the sling thing now because I knew that rhythm was gonna do damage. I want me to draw the hand of my sling thing. That done the dance tonight. Soldiers shoot up the place, everything. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep my thing up. No, going back, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love the life when me live and me no one this stop ya yeah, man So me keep Remember when me tell us if you're right all night Look who is the pain in the right all night Because I feel like an island vibe Yeah, yes I say you're nice and tight Remember when me tell us if you're right all night Look who is the pain in the right all night Tell us if you're right all night Jump in a Gucci, jump in a Versace. Have about 100 grand, no problem about it. All of me girl, I'm a come out for the party. Miss her so much, girl, I'm a do for life. They have the daddy, bro. Swabby, swabby, me out to me, I'm a. Just know the sky clear, look how the weather gets to me. If me ever hurt you, baby, I'm sorry. Some of the time I disappear, but I be back, so don't worry, yeah. Go through my rough times and all of my glory. Probably go heaven in all of my jewelry. Swabby, swabby, we'll just get started. Oh, shit. Plan for making enough money, stupid, rich, retarded. I smoke the weed like a tonic, meds spun another planet. Feel like sad, be every time I sprinkle, grab a panic. Drop a bomb with atomic, me haters, them a panic. None of them can keep up with my speed, my super sonic. Me and change my top ball game changer. Six foot two, me a dance all me and danger. Them you take queer till them can't get no stranger. Boy, you a minor, now do no major. Lock down, your girl in my bed and she no stop come. Me keep back and watch them just a drop down. Two crank up the shotgun, now go ever hear when they tap back down. Race out everything, them life flat down. Circle the club when that done. They ain't the club, I me a pop style. Deep in my pocket, if I Located in the Blue Mountains, Moortown is an historic part of our country, and it's the first free black settlement. 
It was founded in 1740, around 100 years after the British colonization. Today's a blessing. I have been waiting for this long, long time. <laughs> Oh, finally, we're here in Nortown. You know, it's my dream as a child to always want to visit Nanny's place, you know? So here we are in Nortown. Wow, happy to be here. Another time, Aquaba. Another time, Aquaba. Welcome. Aquaba is welcome. See. Aquaba, Bakka River. Welcome to Nortown. This community is amongst the most independent on the island. It's a sovereignty. The colonel is the head of the state, so I give thanks for his invitation. Asuma, Waka. Rastafari. And what I just did is show my respect unto the ancestors of this great, great, great region. The untouchables, I call it. <laughs> Such as it is here, so. I must also be. So from here now, we can proceed to, to the waterfall, Nanny Fall. Aquaba upon the river. This is like a job spheres plant. We use it for making beads like necklaces and bracelets and things like that. Oh, these are the ones you made the beads with. We are children, you know, you grow up around here, you learn to do everything for yourself. Meaning that you didn't grow up as any kind of handicap way. Everybody has to go out there as children and you learn to do your parents and the elders will have teach you how to do these things. But I mean, since, you know, you have this era of what you call information technology, right? <laughs> you know, a lot of children can, you can go to the store any day of the week and you can buy a, a piece of toy. Right. In my business, it wasn't like that. Right. You just have to just make your things and you work with them and, and it works well. And you enjoy doing it, you know? And you have a great appreciation for it. Right. But, you know, we try our best to inculcate these things in the children, knowing pretty well the time that we are living in and how, how you know, things do evolve. Right. So that is why we have the cultural center where we, you know, we can sit them down and we can teach them how to do all the various things that, that, that is required. I want to know about like, oh, the okay. history of Nani and the so, movement, how it began. So, all right. Nani came to Jamaica. Right. One thing we know, she wasn't really a slave on a plantation. She came in on a ship. She was not a, a slave, slave on, on a, a pla plantation. Right. Granny Nani is a national hero, and she's the first queen of the Maroons. The boat that took her from Africa to America wrecked around Port Antonio and she managed to escape in the Blue Mountains, where she fought for many years. She's now on the Jamaican $500 bill. Her ship yeah, wrecked. Yeah, and they made their way off the ship up into the Rio Grande Valley to Goldenville. They established the first free black settlement at a place that we call Pumpkin Hill. Right. Right, that is where they were living first. Nanny was a very powerful woman. She was the priestess, communicating with the spirits of her ancestors, but also chiefness, military leader of the free people. She was also the queen yeah. of the community, and so she was our mother. She's everything. So that is why today, <laughs> if we say we are Granny Nanny Yo-Yo, we mean that we are all children of Granny Nanny. The fact that you were living in the community and your poor parents were living there and you come from there, she was a mother, then we are our children. So we are, we are Granny, Granny Nanny Yo-Yo. So but, but one of my questions also I wanted to tie into that was, so where is Nani where, where, where is where, Nani from? Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. The songs that we sing, the Cromantic songs, right? They're like the keepers of our history. Mm -hmm. The songs might sound to the casual listener, it might sound a little bit outlawish, it might sound, hey, these things that these people are singing don't make no sense. Right. <laughs> but when we say, okay, Granny Nani Komo, Yahweh, Yanemi. Granny Nani Komo, Yahweh, Yanemi. She be na Hanabo, Yahweh, Yanemi. She bring boy, she bring girl, Yahweh, Yanemi. It's a piece of chromantic, country chromantic. And I, I know you never listened keenly, I never understand what I said, but I told her where Granny Nani came from in the song. Say it again, no, no, tell me, say I can't catch it. Say, try <laughs> yeah. me, try me, try me. Yeah, okay. Granny Nani Komo, Yahweh, Yanemi. Granny Nani Komo. So if I am singing, right, and I say, Granny Nani Komo, the, the adults are going to say, Yahweh, Yanemi. That's, that, that's the chorus. Yanemi. That's all they have to say. And the lead singer is going to say, Granny Nani Komo. And the other one is going to say, Yahweh, Yanemi. Maybe not Anabo, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yanemi. So I told you that she came from Hanabo in Africa. Hanabo. <laughs> Hanabo. 
Anubu is in Ghana, where his granny nanny comes from. The colonel tells me that everybody calls them Maroons, but they refer to themselves as Yankunkunu, which means unity. Yankunkunu. Yeah, so Yankunkunu, right? If you go back to Ghana today, it really means people who live together. Sure. People who fight together. You see, kind of brotherhood, right? Unity. Unity, right? That is what it is. That is what it is. Free people, independent people. That is what it means, right? All right. Stop. As a matter of fact, this is the best scenery we can ever use because yeah. in a short while, we are going to be recreating a maroon village here. Right. Original maroon village. Yes. To depict the original nanny town that was in the Blue Mountain. Because many times when people come to the community, they expect to find a community as it was 250 years ago. And we are saying, no, it can't work like that. So therefore, we have allotted this amount of land, and we're going to be putting like maybe about 10 huts, right? Traditional as much as we can. The only thing is that one of them will be used for exhibition purpose, and the others will be used um, for living accommodation where people can come and stay overnight for a week or whatever. And we can, we can do that as a part of our ecotourism project, as a part of our heritage tourism project. We are now on our way to Nanny Fall, the gem of Moortown. So the, 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 this, this here, carcoon, right? Carcoon. And this is a bean, right? And it goes on a vine. And this is the vine of the carcoon that they use for making the camouflage in most instances, right? This is, this is food? This is food. No, uh, all my life. Yeah. I never, no way. Wait a sec. I knew the cocoon bead was used to make jewelry, like necklaces, but I never thought it could be eaten. I can't wait to cook with the colonel and find out how it tastes. Uh, busy? Yeah, busy. So busy is the original cola? Yeah, busy is the original cola. Wow. Be because they call it cola nut, right? Yeah. This is what they had used originally until, you know, everything taken over by chemicals. Right. But you keep it when it dry properly, it becomes dark in color. You can grate it, you make a tea with it. The Busy Nut is Jamaica's go-to remedy. You can find Busy Tea in every shop on the island. So, is this the beautiful fall you're telling me This is the beautiful about? fall we have. Nani fall, we can Nani take fall. Here, right? Can we go down there too? Yeah, we're gonna go down there. Okay. We're gonna go, we're gonna go down. Wow, beautiful. It took me four to five years before I finally met Nani. As I'm full joy in this spiritual moment, I will let you do the same. Full joy. When we return, we'll cook the original jerk recipe. Okay, so we're going, we're going to see what... Okay. This is where I live. Nice. Victor! You bring the, the carcoon thing? Yes, it's coming, right? Yeah, all right, okay. The jerk is a style of cooking created in Jamaica. The meat is dry rubbed or marinated with a mixture of herbs and spices. Jerk seasoning principally relies on two items, pimento and scotch bonnet pepper. So this is, it. This is the seasoning, is that ready prepared? This is all purpose. All purpose seasoning, pimento. Fresh um, bonnet pepper. Fresh bonnet. We have some onion, we have a little olive oil, some jerk seasoning. These, these, are, these are like, you know, the fresh water fish. Yeah. This is the next one, like this. The jerk was invented in the mountains by the Maroons, but it's now everywhere around the island, on every corner, in every town, and it became the most famous Jamaican dish in the world. There are many techniques, in the barrels, under the earth, over charcoal. The idea is to cook the meat or the fish long enough to give it a delicious, smoky, spicy taste. Since I don't eat meat, though, they were kind enough to prepare a jerk fish. <laughs> Normally, you would put it in the hurt, but it's too wet. Yes, it's too wet. So you just make it up. How did jerk come about? The jerk come about in the same, the same manner, because when you would have gone hunting, right, or pins, and you are, like, far away from your base camp, right? Maybe you are more than, like, a day walk. It's going to take you more than a day. So when you kill an animal, you want to preserve it. So you will prepare it. Because in the forest, there are many spice, right? They're, like, the wild cinnamon, is like, that one is, like, you know, it, it looks like, but it's actually a bay leaf, right? Mm -hmm. Make good seasoning. And there are other things like pepper heller and stuff like that that you have in the bush, right? Mm -hmm. And you use them. You season up your thing, you cook it. it one, it makes, it takes a lot of the water out of the meat. 
So it makes it lighter mm -hmm. and it preserves it. Right. It can stay for longer. Then you can take it back to, to, your, to your, your base camp. Then there was no refrigerator, you know. <laughs> so you have to work with you, you, you have to work with what what was available for you at this point in time. So so the so the jerk the jerk is a technique that was really started from hiding the smoke. Right. You have to cook, and you don't want your smoke going too far, so that you the enemies can see. You have to improvise. So you come up with a lot of you mean innovative way of doing things. So if I, if I if I go out in the, in the, in the field and I want to cook something, right? I don't have any pot. But I have to cook. So I will dig a hole in the ground and I will line it off with leaves. And then I pour the, the water in there. I peel my food and I put the food inside there and I make the fire on top of it. At the end of the day, it's cooked. <laughs> Only thing that the fire is on top. <laughs> the fish is ready. The smell is amazing. I can't wait to dip and dab into it. Ah. Mmm. Yeah, man. Mm. Mm. Yeah, hold on. Put some of this pan. Yeah. Wow. You know, we travel with our own sauce. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, you know? Yeah, because we combine our, yeah. our heritage. Yeah. Yen Kung Kuno. Yen Kung Kuno. Yen Kung Kuno. In the spirit of Yen Kung Kuno, we shared this fish together. It's tasty. I love it, right? It's kind of like. Different from those farm fishes when it's a fresh fish, so it's good. Let me have a piece of that, yes, Chef. You know me, it was my first time having freshwater fish ever. Yeah, all right? Yeah, man. Ethiopia. Not true. I had it in Ethiopia on top of the Nile. Oh. Right. The Blue Nile? Yeah. So that's why, yeah, that's why I like it. After this amazing fish, I remembered about a cocoon bead the promise from the colonel to teach me how to cook it. So this is cocoon. This is cocoon, right? So on my farm in Chepstow, I have a lot of this, but I always saw this as like a jewelry. <laughs> I never knew carcoon was food. So we're gonna try the carcoon rundown. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what I want to show you now, right? Yes. Okay, fine. So this is the coconut. Uh -huh. This is the carcoon, right? Oh, that looks like meat, though. Once it's done, you can start eating from now. Okay. So, yo, where has that? You want jerk carcoon? <laughs> That's the first time I ever taste that thing. Need some hot sauce on that one. Right now, yeah. Colonel's preparing the onion for the cocoon. Yeah. I'm going to put the cocoon in the coconut milk with yeah. some onion. We're going to season it up right now. We're going to be doing the garlic now. Add some, add some onions. Yeah, add some yeah. garlic. This is for the color, right? Mm -hmm. This one is the anato. Anato. So, yeah, you're going to use the anato seeds. You put them in the strainer. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to leave the seeds in the pot, right? Right. Ginger root. Right. And then the secret spice. Secret spice, <laughs> secret spice. Wow, it looks secret for real. Wait. Look, it's boiling, look. You don't put the anato seed directly into your preparation because it's super strong and flavorful like turmeric. So you only use it to give color and flavor to the coconut milk. You don't want the beans to go in the pan, right? My part now. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, so I gotta stir a little, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this looks good. I can't wait on this. Right now, <laughs> we're waiting for the special carcoon rundown, which I've yeah. never had in my life. I never knew I could eat this thing. It's amazing. Here we go. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, it smells delicious. You know, in our custom, we don't normally smell the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once the cocoon was ready, Victor serves it with boiled banana, white yam, a true Ital dish straight from the earth. Nice. Ital classic. So it's a, tell you. strictly vegetarian meal. Yeah. I mean, it's something you can you eat from the land. Mm -hmm. Everything is there. You go out and you, and you get that. Doing. Well, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Delicious meal. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> So, Colonel, I mean, I had a beautiful time getting to see the land and understanding the culture as far as the journey from the ancient days, from what I learned as a schoolboy. So, for myself as a Jamaican youth, being here is empowering. This is like being in Africa. 
This is where, this is Freetown. <laughs> right here, is, you're in Freetown right now. the way of natural causes during the 18th century. This is her monument here in Moortown. Monument to the great, the indomitable. So, bump. so Nani is resting here? Not necessarily under this monument here because there's nobody buried under here, but she's resting behind the monument. Oh, she's here. resting behind the monument. Yeah. So all around. This is the cemetery, and that's, that's the river that we went to a while ago, right? Yes, yes. So Nanny was buried right in this one here. No, no, no stones, right? No, with no, no stones right no there, but, but, but we're not putting no concrete on them because they never had any concrete. We tried to keep them as much as they were in our original way. The traditional music and dance of the Maroons is called the Cromante. It's their spiritual language. I was blessed to finish my journey here, invited to play the drum, dance and celebrate Nani with her other children, Yahweh Yaneme. After the break, I'll make you discover injera, a traditional Ethiopian dish. We're now driving back to Kingston. After meeting Nanny and the Colonel, I wanted to take you deeper into our African roots, all the way back to Ethiopia. Can you see the majesty here? Yes. With his chalice right here. This is Marcus Yavi like his chalice right here. Yes. This is Nani. Nani. For us Rastafari, Ethiopia is Zion, the promised land, a sacred place of freedom, peace, and unity. And there's no better place in Jamaica to experience the Ethiopian cuisine than in Cafe Africa. I'm going to cook an Ethiopian dish, the traditional injera, with the help of my brethren, Stephen. Hello. <laughs> Asia. So Roy's gonna try and make one of these. Boy, I tell you, this is a guarded tradition. Because even at Cafe Africa, you know, we gotta we gotta find the Ethiopians who are here to come and help us make sure, this. Sure, sure. No, let's wash your hands for you, bro. We'll do the traditional way. Yes. All right. So this is a hundred percent tef or is a mixture? This is teff mixed with a little wheat. Teff is a lovegrass species native of Ethiopia. The seeds are used to make flour. It's the African buckwheat, isn't it? <laughs> Jamaicans aren't so familiar with the sour taste. Of the teff? Yeah, so we gotta, we gotta okay. stretch it out a little bit. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Let's do it. Right. So, Stephen, tell us about the name of this and how would it be eaten or this is injera. This is the, the main staple in Ethiopia. They've been eating this for, for centuries, you know? Um, and, and, and it's quite a, a cultural experience. It's manna. We would, we would say, you know, and, and the way we eat in Ethiopia, we, 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 we share, you know? So that's why, it's, that's why the injera is, is so big, because <laughs> it has a lot of toppings, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things that goes with that. I'm looking forward to that. What, one of the amazing things, some people, some Jamaicans find it a culture shock, but I remember Abuna Yishak used to do this because it's a big compliment in Ethiopia for someone to take up the Gorsha. food and put it in your mouth. Well, Gorsha, you know? Gorsha. And huh? Jamaican people tend to be a little bit more conservative on certain things, so you know, we're like, whoa, what are you doing? But it's a big, it's a big compliment, and Abuna right. Yishak I, used to do it all the time. But with, the compliment would come from, like, it, the tradition starts in the house, so it's your grandfather, <laughs> your grandfather, your father, and then also the priest. 
So it's like a priest thing or a batawe yeah. that, you know. This is a special part for making injera because it's not like a pancake that you can flip. Right. You know, you got to bake it on one side so it has to be covered so that the heat bounces off of the cover and bakes the, the, the side that's up too. Right, right. And then you take it up one time, you know. Sure. The, trick is, the trick is to know when to take it up. You take it, you try to take it up too early, it's all over. Right. I've never really had Ethiopian food in Jamaica from a cuisine yeah. uh, uh, prepared like what I'm seeing here. Are you, how, how is it, how, what's the culture of the Ethiopian movement here as far as food goes and what you're doing here in Jamaica? Well, Cafe Africa, we started in 2011 and the idea was to bring authentic African cuisine here. We wanted to take advantage of the fact that Africa is a continent. So there are 54 different countries, 54 cultures, 54 cuisines. Here we do Ethiopian food 13 times a year, symbolic of the 13 months of the Ethiopian calendar. So Ethiopia is the heart of Africa to us. You know what I mean? It is, it's, it's the pharaoh, it's the lighthouse. Even the tricolors of Ethiopia, the green, yellow, and red, which a lot of African countries fly, is a salute to Ethiopia, which is the only country that maintained their independence continuously um, um, from time eternal, you know? So what I know Ro likes is injera, so we have to do this specially for him today, you know? And we got some Ethiopian food coming up, so let's see this, let's see him do his injera. So, I should pour around the rim, huh? Gotcha. And try to kind of move fast with it, because it might end on you. Slow down. Oh, okay. man. Keep no, going. keep going, keep yeah. going. Don't give up, don't give up. <laughs> it teaches you patience. It teaches you patience. Yeah. It teaches you patience. Perfect. Uh, it teaches you might run out on you. It teaches you patience. You might run out on you. <laughs> He's a pro, man. He's a pro. <laughs> well, I didn't make up, because you know, in Abbe, Abbe Shower, you have to make a perfect We're going to make sure you eat that yeah. specific one. <laughs> right. I did spill a little, but guess what? That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty perfect. <laughs> 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 well, we got to tell them the story about when the Bahata we were making the at the house. The Bahatawis are hermit monks, holy men of Ethiopia. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> So, I have a story for you, Stephen. So while I'm in Ethiopia, right, and I, every day I eat injera. Mm -hmm. But when I first got to Ethiopia, I needed to um, find somewhere to live. I, I got I got should I cover the pot? Yes, yeah. yes. That's the real sign of good um, injera, when you get, they call it the eyes. Yeah. The <laughs> eyes are open. <laughs> so, so I'm in Ethiopia, right? So my first thing is I'm decided to have my own house. I get a house, I rent a house. This is a really nice house, but I couldn't furnish the house. So only place we had furniture was in in my bedroom, and Joseph had a, his bedroom, and I had the batawe. He, the priest, he had his own room upstairs because he'll teach us how to pray and fast and all these things. Right, right. So then, so one day I was like, you know what? I need to make my own injera because I want my injera to, to taste like the traditional injera. You know? <laughs> so I went to the market, Joseph and I, and found an old stove, an old injera stove that you have to use to cook with coal. <laughs> so then, the first thing is, I came, I came there and the, the stove had like a little vent. Mm -hmm. So it was like kind of, when I cooked the injera, it was like darkening up the place. Right. So the Batawi, the, you know, the, the monk, <laughs> he doesn't even, he lives in a hut. He comes to the place, he's like, Rohan, Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Rohan. You have this nice house. What kind of backyard stove is that? <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? I'm like, by the way, I like the flavor. I need the real deal. He says, no, get a gas stove. <laughs> uh, it's my, wow, no. Nice no, job, wow. nice but job. But you forgot what the bata, we, what, what y'all said. He said, right. he said uh, Rohan, it's not the stove, it's the woman's heart <laughs> right? Because yes. he, he loves a wood stove yeah. and yes. and injera. In, in, in Ethiopia, you rarely see the men making the injera. Right, right, right. Yes, yeah, so it's a knife. It you yes. want to kind of pick it up and slide that underneath okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's push this on then. You can, yeah. Coming up, 
Will I ever get that injera off the pan? <laughs> you don't want to move that. I'm excited to eat this. If this is the first time you hear about injera, or if you never tasted Zion's food, cook it at home or go to your local Ethiopian restaurant. Welcome again. Can't wait to taste what I just made, bro. Injera <laughs> shinin. Injera shinin. Injera is traditionally served with a variety of toppings called wat or stew. And you use torn pieces of injera to eat them. Since I don't eat meat, this one is Bayanato. The Ital injera. It comes with Misura Wat, a spicy, delicious red lentil stew. Akialicha, a split pea dish cooked in turmeric sauce. Beet salad. Atakiwolt, a spicy vegetable stew with cabbage, carrot, potato, and green beans. Shiro is a stew made from ground chickpea cooked with oil and a blend of spices, onion, garlic, and ginger. Timatim salad, a refreshing mix of tomatoes, garlic, and onions. Last but not least, Abishago men, sauteed kalalu with spices, Ethiopian style. Is in there, man. Okay, is in this mix. It's in, it's in the rolls on the side. Oh, great. So, Ethiopian food is, is, is eaten communally. You know, we wash our hands, we break bread together, we eat together. You use the injera to pick up the food, and everybody shares from the same plate. So, Fascinating culture and something Jamaicans need to do more of. Let's add a little bit of this right here. This right, this one needs, this one. This guy's Ethiopian in his heart, but he's Jamaican in his palate. <laughs> Walk with his pepper. <laughs> so, brother, thank you for preparing this excellent meal for us, you know? But here's what I want to get into with you because. As nice as you are, as simple as you present yourself, you're a man of great knowledge, and a man come from a, a, a lovely family that has been, you know, leading this country for many, many moons, and been in not only leadership role but supporting role also. Tell me something. What's it like to be the son of the former Prime Minister Bruce Golden? <laughs> People always ask me that question, you know, and I've always honestly said I don't really know how to answer the question because I've that's my father, you know, that's oh, the person I've known. <laughs> my, I, I don't know what it's like to be somebody else's you know, son. I say the same thing, so, I wouldn't hear. So, but even though... But I'll tell you this. Wait, wait, Stephen. I gotta chime in. Even though I say the same thing, I have an answer, just like you're gonna tell us now. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, Stephen. I mean... Their expectations, their perceptions. I lived for 12 years in the United States when I was studying. And uh, I used to say to myself, one thing I appreciated about living in America is that I could be Joe Schmo Negro, you know? <laughs> in Jamaica, it's such a small island. We all know each other, everybody knows somebody. So for, for a young man growing up who wanted to experiment with life and get into different things, you always had to be conscious of the family that you're from and, 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 <coughs> and what you're representing out there, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that was a hang up for me as a kid. Um, but you, then you, 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 you grow to appreciate the good with the bad, you know? Family brings a, a lot of connections, a lot of network, a lot of opportunities, so you know, you just gotta pay the piper, you know? Sure, sure. But for the period I lived away from this country, where mm -hmm. nobody knew who my father was or who I was, I think those were the years that I really um, experienced life without any sort of um, apprehensiveness, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And I right. experienced life. Go out and live life, people. You know? You, know, you know something? To add to your point, it's the same situation with myself at the University of Miami playing football. They didn't care who my dad was. They, they actually thought I wasn't Bob's son. Because, <laughs> so, you know, he had no relation to music, you know? So, not only are you of 
great status as far as your father and, and your yourself, but you've taken on the responsibility of the, being the president of the UNIA. Can you tell me, what is UNIA? The UNIA is the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, which is the organization that Marcus Garvey founded here in 1914. It was the organization that he took to the United States and launched a global platform which made him really the first black icon in the Western Hemisphere. And the influence that he had in terms of Pan-Africanism and, and, and subsequent historical figures like Bob Marley, you know, like Leonard Howell and others. I felt Marcus Garvey was really the person who put forward the best plan in terms of improvement for our race to empower us, but it's based on our collectivity. You know, Haile Selassie called it collective security. Um, that smaller nations who had fallen behind due to whatever, colonialism, slavery, etc., um, their best way to leapfrog, if I can use that term, I got a five-year-old, um, <laughs> was to combine their energies and work together. And so while we have individual black families who have been successful now, as a, as a collective, we're still not successful enough. But on a bigger level, we need to get governments of independent black nations to be more Afro-conscious and Afro-centered. And we have to recognize that in this country, Jamaica, we are 90, over 90% 90 African descendant. Can't deny it. Some of my father's songs like Exodus, Africa Unite, and Redemption Song are inspired by Marcus Garvey's ideas. He also believed in unity of African people throughout the world. After the break, I'll introduce you to Jamaica's next track and field superstar. Brenna Liston is a 100 and 200 meter sprinter from San Diego High School. At 12 years old, she broke the 200 meter record at Jamaica's legendary champs. Brenna Liston responds to her brilliantly and covers the Edwin Allen athlete in blue. Brianna Liston runs a fantastic curve and transitions beautifully in the straightaway. Will she go for the record? Tina Clayton has been blown away. So is the rest of the field. This is a superb effort coming in from Brianna Liston. Look at the clock. It's a wonderful performance. She With a 23.47 seconds race, it was the first time ever a girl her age ran under 24 seconds since the creation of champs in 1972. She is Jamaica's track and field future. Mark my words. So listen, today is track and field day, and we're gonna go support Brianna, our next super, superstar track, track girl. So I got shirts for everybody. Joseph? Wow, man. Yeah. Wow, man. Bro, I'm in full support of Brianna myself, and I will cheer for her, but I can't wear St. Diego colors, bro. Why? I'm original Jamaica College. Wait, hold on a second. So you're telling me, you're telling me you can't support our next creed? It's not about the colors. We're supporting her. No. The first thing I said was, I'm going to support Brianna 100%. But to be wearing St. Jago's colors at a track meet, I just can't do that, my brother. Go Jago, go Brianna, but I can't wear your colors on Jamaica College. I just don't do that. That's, that's ridiculous. What happens when JC and yeah. Brianna is in the same race? JC and Brianna cannot be in the same race. Why? We, we don't have another boys school. Oh, school. you went to all boys school? Yeah. I no did. wonder you can't support the career. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> JC. Right, Brianna, go. Now, Marlon says, scrap that. Let's go, San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. Beautiful opportunity. I had a chance to. I was kind of racing her a little bit. <laughs> she was warming up. <laughs> I can try to jog up with you if you want me to jog up. Sure, you can get, can get one repetition. I want to try. Yeah, man, cool. I started off like my first five steps. It's, we got it recorded, so you can't like see I'm lying. My first five steps, I was right with her, you know? Mm -hmm. I felt good. I felt good. But at one point, I was trying to like say I'm gonna like challenge her a little bit. Mm -hmm. And of course she's not gonna let that. Big mistake, big mistake. At one point, <laughs> she just turned into another gear and I was I was like really running yeah. to say I'm gonna try and catch up to her. It was mm -hmm. like, I mean, no way. She ran like a cheetah, bro. Rihanna is like a cheetah. Jump, jump, jump. Man, that was great. And then when I was running, right, I I, I only ran up to where we were. <laughs> 
<laughs> the coach is like, no, you need to finish. I'm like, what? <laughs> there he goes. This is the opportunity right now. Go ahead, Marlon. This place was founded in 1931. <laughs> I recognize you. And I think I recognize this man here too. This, this is the great. Marla Stewart. Come on. Master. Winner in 1970. Running is a part of our culture. The youth stem start running as soon as they start walking. Growing up competing in high stakes situations with sometimes a crowd up to 30,000 people, they're made for the Olympics. Come on, Alisa! Come on, Alisa! Irvin Watts, Excelsior, Trevon Irvin, Irvin of Boys Class 2, Kevon Lamy, Jay Adams, and most of Jamaican's high school offer rigorous athletic programs, producing some of the best sprinters in the world. Legends such as Asafa Powell, Shelley and Fraser Price, and Usain Bolt inspired the youths of our country to reach out to international success. <laughs> My son Nico is an athlete, and since he's in Kingston, I told him to come to the race with us. <laughs> You did too. <laughs> and the final Celsius. <laughs> Class 3 girls, 150 meters. Presentation being made by Rohan Marley. In first place. Now for the gold medal for the champion. Congratulations, you're doing a great job. Perfect. Ah. It's a Jamaican trap in the fields all the time. See that? <laughs> Joseph I. Yeah, well, this, this is better we bring out the food. Hey, yo, what are you guys talking about? I know you've been to Africa. I know Ruth, exactly. Africa. Exactly. Yeah. Stop, this stop. This is an African restaurant. Yeah. It would be rude if we wash hands before okay, we so eat. No problem. Ethiopian yeah. style. Okay. Yeah, Joe. Hey, you say, Joe. Yeah, King Man still. The greatest of kings was yeah. once the greatest of servants. You're right. Brother Joe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're going to bring it to Marlin. Nice. Very good. Wow. Thank, Thank you so much ah, for bringing yes, brother. Respect, Joe. Mr. Mara. Respect and all. Uh, telling you I need something to drink. All right, so you guys have masala and Ndizi with kachumbari and a loco. Kachumbari. A loco is, you know, spice planting. It have a little chili on it. Loco, yeah. That's fried fish with fried green bananas. Yeah. This is an Egyptian vegetarian dish, kosheri. It has lentils, rice, pasta, spicy tomato no, vinaigrette. Any butter, anything like that? No butter. Okay, great. And fried onions on top. Sure. Vegan? Except for the fish. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Joe. Ah, uh, if that's. Wait, Joe, you really serve it today, huh? Yeah, so if you can't learn to serve, then you can never be a king. The service is pretty good. Joe was good, but why am I not an attitude, bro? Yeah, I mean, think was getting a break, you know? At least he has on his St. Jago shirt. <laughs> 
You know, I learned from Bob Marley one time. He said, if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say anything. <laughs> I am thankful for this historical journey, humbled by Nanny and her free people, uplifted by Marcus's idea of unity, and hopeful for Jamaica's future. Family is the most important thing to us. Our father left us at a young age, but when I look at my brothers and sisters, Sharon, Sedella, Ziggy, Stephen, Robert, Karen, Stephanie, Julian, Kimani, and Damien, I see my father, I see his purpose and his principles alive in each and every one of us. His music is a blessing. My father's words relieve me all stress, all pain, all worry, all loneliness. All the all weary sound, anything to do with weakness, negativity. My father's words empowers me empowers me every day of my life. So he's always around. Ever present. And that ever presence is the foundation that allows I to share his teachings, my teachings, with my children. I look at my children, I look at Nico, Eden, Sailor, Joshua, John, Zion, Sarah. I see a better me, a greater me. I'm on my way to pick up one of them, my first son, Nico, a talented football player and a skillful entrepreneur. So, of course, he's the one that will continue to learn. I don't need to work anymore after he gets a certain age. I want to go live on a farm or do something like that. I want to be more stable, you know, stationary. You know, I can eat from the land and just provide for myself, like farm to table vibes. In this great future, you can't forget your past. So, I'm taking Nico to the place where. The little boy that he doesn't know of. Because my children they see me as a lion. They see me as strong all the time. But strength doesn't come from just, you don't bond strong, you know? You have to grow strong. So it's important for them to uh, understand the beginnings. Understand the beginnings, the back of their roots, too. You must you have to know your roots because you have to know the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How was it flying? Oh, like flying. A little bumpy, but you know, it's cool, though. This road from the airport to Kingston is what I miss most about Jamaica when I travel. The sun, the air, the sea. Everything makes me feel like home. And I wonder how Nico feels when he returns home. Natural, you know? It's like you couldn't be anything, but there's everything, you know what I mean? You come in, you feel the culture already so as you land, you know? No fake. It's Jamaica. It's home. You get a different vibe when you reach. It's like when you got home for a while. You get home, you close the door, you feel... You know, you're in your sanctuary. That's the whole country, you know? Irie. <laughs> so we'll be on our way to Spanish Town right after making a quick stop for an idle breakfast at the House of Dread. Some idle food and blah. A place where my father used to eat after playing soccer. This is where all the master footballers played. This is Alan Skilkul. Pay me, I'll play. <laughs> Original day. This is our Sajred side. Pierre Astaman. Yeah, the gang support this side. It's still Jersey. Line of Judah. No dairy. Nothing with eyes. 
Before Bigger existed, Aital was here. And Aital is still here. Come to us at Janikan by Aital Food Sandwich. Spanish Town, here we come. First stop, the open land. I'll show you where I play soccer. I hope it's still there. And now we cut through this walkway to get to the train line. They used to tell me, long cut draw sweat, short cut draw blood. <laughs> Oh man, look at it. The feel is still there. <laughs> Every single day was just like this. Hasn't changed one bit. I play football here. And you know what I used to play here? Cricket. I, mean, <laughs> cricket. So, I was the only one with a ball, a cricket ball. Mm. Cause my grandmother, her friend played cricket for metal box. So they'd give me a ball. But when we didn't have a ball, we used to use green limes. <laughs> so we have to have a lot of them because you swat it. Fuck! And then again, we play soccer right here. Everything, when it wasn't a lot of us, we play solid kick. Dangerous, man, chick in your body. Your chick, you want to push the ball, chick in your ass, and this thing. <laughs> hey, this is where it started, man. I used to think about the Black Lions, the Spanish Town soccer team. Actually, I never had any concept of sports playing professional level at all. I never knew there was money involved in sports at that time. I used to just play because I loved it and I wanted to play. <laughs> Instead of walking around, <laughs> right? Yeah. But why they used to say shortcut? Um, yeah, because oh, yeah. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is called a maca, and these used to live in my feet because I'm walking barefoot. So this is the blood they used to tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> So you end up walking around like, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Too much blood. I got in a lot of trouble around here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got in a lot of trouble around here. So this is across from my yard here. It wasn't like this before. This space used to be a garage. And I used to come over here and try to work on trucks. <laughs> I thought I was gonna work in the garage. <laughs> Hello. I born in your house anyway. Ruan, who's a Janet's son. <laughs> oh, gosh! It's good to see you. Oh, you're strong, you. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ruan, how would that? Is this your first time here? Yeah. Only your friend is, yeah, yeah. Why are you only tell me, though? Yeah, we are Janet, big boy. I should have told me, man. Just a pass to my mom. I'm just passing my. And just healing up with my good neighbors. <laughs> All right, Mama. Take care. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no. I'm so glad to see you all. When you're about to me show you. <laughs> Rowan. Yes, brother. I noticed something here in Spanish town. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you're Bob's son, but when you hear you're Janet's son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They really know me. After the break, childhood memory. Come inside. Today is a special day, the last one of our journey. We're in Spanish Town, and for the first time ever, I'm giving my son Nico a tour of my childhood. After showing him where I used to play ball... Welcome to your daddy's home. I'm taking him to my mother's house. This is... This is where I... I grew up most of my Jamaican life. Yes, yeah, sonny boy. It's more built up now, as you can see. It was just one half, this, the first half. This was added later on. So this is the first car I ever bought my mother. We had some money. And the first money I ever had, I bought this car. This is my mother's car. The first money I ever received. Let me show you my room, where I used to sleep. This, uh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 good. Yeah. And then this thing, this thing here, this used to be a full glass. And because I got in a fight with an old man, not an older man, an older guy than me, he was messing with my girlfriend. He threw a stone from outside and he broke the glass. And my grandfather is a carpenter. He never replaced the glass, so he put this board, which that's been there. You know? Let me show you my little room. Oh, yes. Well, the place changed up a little bit. Come inside. So this has always been here. It's an old picture. This is my granny's room. And this is where I used to live. This little room here. Oh, hey there. <laughs> All right. This is my little cousin. This is Nico. Your cousin, too. <laughs> so, of course, some rooms have been added. But this was it. It was that room and this room was the whole house. Two rooms. This was my room with, with um, four people. 
Yeah. So this room, one bed on this side, one bed on that side. I still have my little guitar in there. So this is my little room here. Not my room, but this is where I share with my cousins. This was not here. This is all added on. Kitchen was here. So the house stopped here when I live here. Two rooms. Right, Tony? Yeah, man, that's right. Yes. So all these uh, old pictures you see here, my, it's been here since I was a child. Like, this picture was here since I was a child. That picture was there. These pictures here, since I was a child. All these crazy people, I don't know who they are. But I used to always wonder who these people were. This is my granny. It's Mrs. Doreen Hunt. This is her house where she lived. And this is my, this is my auntie and my mother. Yeah. yeah. So you know, son? Mm. <laughs> you know? I said, God. Yeah, man. Yeah. Last time you came here? Last time I came here, maybe... I don't remember. I haven't been in a long, long time. It's been a long time since I came here. A lot of souvenirs, eh? Yeah, I don't have any. What is... whatever. It is a part of my existence, you know? Mm. Part of my life. Mm -hmm. I live. Uh, still here. Still exists. You know? Still mother, still alone in the place, family. Mother's side. This is my mother's side. Mm. Yeah. Mother's side don't have much. No, I need to on me. So, this is it. Come on, sunny boy. Daniel? I'll see you later. I don't can you really describe it, you know what I mean? It's like you you see you see how you see how he move, he moves like that for a reason. You know what I mean? Come here and kinda show that where he come from and and why he, why he, you know what I mean, just in the stories here, you know what I mean? Just, you put them in, it's just reality now, you know? It's like, it ain't nothing, it's something I always heard about, ain't nothing I ever been, ever seen. So it's real. Hello. <laughs> Walk on, auntie. Walk on. <laughs> Stop true. <laughs> yeah, auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you're grand auntie. <laughs> Still young. Still young and fiery. You're <laughs> mine, black dog. All right, auntie. All right? Yeah. All right, Ratty. All right, yeah, all right, everyone. Nice to see you. Yeah, all. good, good. Well, that was something. I think we need a drink to cheer up this moment. Let's stop by the store my mom used to own. Enjoy the vibe a little and see if any of my childhood friends are around. Come on, boss. Come on, are you son? Yeah, we're son. Okay, brother. Good man. man. Yeah, man, run. Blood, man, them youths are run up and down. Be a foot. And kick, be a fall over JC Pass and Light. Come on. 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 Yeah. You see how slow the train going? I hop this and hop off. <laughs> As a little boy. On it. 
Yeah, come on to the way there. Out the road. Come on to the road. Yes, you know, yeah. I don't yeah. 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 This is my friend from day one. Yeah, right. man. I'm a son that to me. Nika, men and man have fight every day. Yeah. <laughs> every day we fight. Not just him. I'm gonna show you me a fight. Oh, I'm not far away, man. Three, one time. I, I gotta fight three of them one time. <laughs> Normally, Sheldon is the only friend I have that doesn't give trouble. Yeah, I'll, I'll this one is a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> they all, they all of my friends, they from trouble, all of them troublemakers, yeah. and I'm a troublemaker too. Yeah. <laughs> it was a blessed morning in Spanish Town. I give thanks that my son got to share this experience with me. Yes, when we return, we're taking you to the Touchdown Project, so stay tuned. After revisiting my past in Spanish Town, we're back in Kingston to play football with the kids from the Touchdown Project, and we have a couple of surprises for them. The first one, a little something to eat. You know, after football, they're gonna get hungry, so came to Sugar and Spice, my guy's Roger's place, to get them some Jamaican patties. Hi, I want to order some patties. 200. <laughs> 200 beef patties? Um, can you do half and half? 100 beef and 100 chicken? Yes, ma'am. Sure. And you know what? I'm going to play some football. I'm going to do the rest of this. See? <laughs> hey, brother. Thank you. Hooking us up. You always come through for us. <laughs> you know that. See? Thank you, brother. Yes, okay. Sugar and spice make it feel nice. <laughs> now that Roger is taking care of the patties, let's go to Jamaica College. Giving back to the community and helping kids build and achieve their dreams is an absolute must. Nico and I were both professional football players, so it was important for us to visit the Touchdown Project, one of the charities for which I am an ambassador. So while we're setting up the field to run some drills, we're just setting up for drills. Nicole and Zachary will tell you more about the vision and the mission behind this project. All right. My name is Nicole Burge. I'm the founder and executive director for the Touchdown Project. Uh, my role is essentially to, to be the visionary and the one that puts forth all the pieces in place to roll out the project on the island. My name is Zachary Harding. I'm a director of the Touchdown Project. And my role is to make sure that everything that Nicole wants gets done in Jamaica. <laughs> hey, run through it, don't stop. Run, just run, just Let's run. Let's keep running. Ball. Quarterback gonna uh, get you the what? ball. Who's this guy? All right, really, come, come, quick, quick. What? So first and foremost, I am a cancer survivor 11 years ago, and that really is the genesis of why we are here today. Um, so in going through cancer, I decided that I would accelerate what God had put in my heart to do, which was to give back to, to the world. And the first stop would be Jamaica, since I was born here, and to kids in particular. So when I looked to Jamaica, I said, what do Jamaican kids have to offer that the rest of the world would want to create opportunities for them? And naturally, I think we've earned some currency in that we're known as the fastest people in the world. They're supremely athletic, but the reality is that there are just not enough avenues of opportunities for them to use their athleticism to get off the island. And so, as I looked on one hand to Jamaica and I say, here's this pool of athletes, naturally, without enough opportunities, how do I create an avenue that would want that athleticism? And so a marriage with American football in particular, who's the largest beneficiary of scholarships in the U.S., just seemed to make sense to me. My goal was just to break the barrier, to allow the sport to come to the island and to really create opportunities for young kids on the island to better themselves. Can you see my leg? Just one step. Nicole contacted me and told me about this ridiculously crazy idea to bring American football to Jamaica. I thought she was a little bit nuts, but when she explained everything, it made total sense. So I wanted to be able to help, being from Jamaica, having played sports in Jamaica at the high school level, to do anything that I could to be able to allow kids the opportunity to further their education through sports. So we've worked very closely with the Ministry of Education and with the Ministry of Sport and directly with the Prime Minister to try and bring this game to Jamaica. We selected schools that we thought would be a good fit for the game, that we thought had both the athletic ability in the boys as well as they were still good students because it is a student-athlete program. So the whole idea is to give the kids a chance to get scholarships 
to go away to school to further their education. It's not like a pro league that we're starting. It's about getting them opportunities to further themselves. Just to give you an example of the excitement, when we announced in March, we came to Jamaica and we announced with the government our partnership to the island, there was this one kid who had traveled to South Carolina and saw a game on TV and fell in love with the sport. And he just heard that the Touch On Project, American football, was coming to Jamaican schools. And he prayed that we would select his school. He wrote to his principal, he wrote to the Minister of Education, all in the hopes that we would select his school. So as luck would have it, we did select his school. And he galvanized 30-something boys, and they've been training since March on their own until we get here, until the program starts. They get up every morning and they work out. So I want to just shout out to Daniel, who is a phenomenal example of what prayer and determination and passion for something, he's a great leader. I think we get a treat and the boys get a treat because they actually get to see Rowan Marley and Nico. Rowan, by the way, is uh, an ambassador for the program. We consider him to be our um, poster boy for the program because he's someone who learned the sport late as a Jamaican kid, moving to America, and did exceptionally well. Uh, we're excited. And I think if more people gave back and got involved, it would make a really big difference for the kids in Jamaica. But keep me in front of you, but... Don't stay in your back, but when I turn, you turn and run with me, okay? Aren't you guys football players talking about? I didn't know I was you. Are you coming like that? I was slowing down. You know he's a little bit. My eyes on No, no, no. Oh, my watch must have cut you. Oh, okay. okay. So you coming to play for real? <laughs> We're real football players. You go over there and you're on, you're Oh, we on offense? <laughs> now we have the same scar. Coming up, I got the yellow team. Nika got the green team. Now let's see who's the best. Break. Hut, hut. We're back in Kingston with the youths of the Touchdown Project. Nico and I ran some drills with the kids, but before the big game, we got one more surprise for them. So Nicole and myself, along with the Marleys, have gotten you some gears today as a bit of a surprise. So I want to see you actually suit up. <laughs> Everybody got their gear? This is very, very important. Let me tell you something about football. You look good, you play good. Go get yourself looking good right now. Go on. I look good, look good, look good. All right, two teams. Nico will be the captain of the green team, and I'll lead the yellow team. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. I'm rusty. Go yellow. And speaking about looking good in your uniform. Ready. There you go. I might be just a bit rusty. Hey, <laughs> They're going to send you back in the locker room like that. Put your look pants up. <laughs> yeah, look, 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 they all unorganized, we organized, we play as a team, we all won. Professional, professional, we got uniforms now. Yeah, watch it. What do you say, Capo? Tails, tails. Please be tails. Tails. Yeah! Ah! It's game time! Three, nine, two, hazard! Set! Job. Green 18! Hit! Hit! Oh! Oh! Picked up! Yeah! 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 Well done! Oh! Unlucky! Was a lot of fun, and of course you won. <laughs> He's had a career day in one day. <laughs> very good, very good. That was what we call a tip drill. So <laughs> put your right hands in the middle here. Hands in the middle. We'll go one, two, three, JC. One, two, three, JC. After sharing some moves with the kids, time to share our stories with our teams. So my son and I, Nico, is born in Haiti. I'm born here in Jamaica. I left here when I was 12 years old, right? And when I was here in Jamaica, I never knew anything about football. Never saw a game in my life. I got to America. And I started to play the game by playing video games, like learning from video games. I started taking a liking to the game. I started to want it to play every day. And obviously, every day, we don't have a, the, the facility, right? So at home, I play in the streets. I play with my friends because I love it and I want to become greater, right? We started the same, what grade? 
Baseball. Right, we started the same age as you guys, right? You don't have to play the game from your young boy or young, no. But what you have to do, you have to have passion for the game and want to learn the game. When you have that desire now, you take the time and then you become determined to become a great athlete because this is a sport, right? And just like track and field, just like you have your Usain Bowls, just like you have your great reggae boys. What the key though in to become a great athlete, right, is repetition, right? Repetition and practice and focus. It's all about skills. Learning to run a route, learning how to line up, learn how to move off the ball, learn how to get in your stance. Just learning the game, getting familiar with the game, and start to develop the passion for the game. Then you come out here, you take the quarterback, Quarter, let's throw around, throw around the ball. Every day, you gotta play. Every day, you gotta play. So what you're doing now, you're giving yourself an opportunity, right? To, to take yourself to another level, get a scholarship. You can go abroad and help your family, you know, education, you know what I mean? What works well together is your books and your sports, right? Studying because it's not just running around. You got to learn plays because it's a team sport, right? 11 on each side and each man has a responsibility. So that's when you learn in the classroom about being responsible, being responsible for your teammates. So you got to put the two together, right? It may look a long way, but it's really not that far away. But right now, y'all good, man. Just keep learning. And if you, you like it, though, you know what I'm saying? Don't, do, don't never do anything you don't like. No. Only if you like it. If you love, love it, it. something else, too. Yeah. To be it, you got to live it, you know what I mean? Just when you, like I tell you, walking down the hallway, you see somebody coming, you put a move on them. <laughs> That's in your mind, you know? It's like you're walking down the hallway and there's somebody walking next to you. Catch a ball over him. That's in your mind. <laughs> you know? So that's the game. And then you start seeing that translate on the field. You know what I'm saying? So thank you, man. And, and anything you need from myself, I'm always going to be available to you guys. See? Because I'm an ambassador. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to help you because I played the game, right? So let's break one time. Let's go, everybody. Always so we're going to line order. One, two, three, line order, right? One, two, three. Line order! All right. So wait a second. One more thing, though. I know y'all hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got some lunch. Let's go some lunch. Come on. You know, today what happened was um, I had a chance to return to my youth. How I started the game, I started playing something like this. It was like a PE exercise, and I started to understand the game. So I feel like these guys, you know. So I was having that much fun because we were once like these guys, and I noticed that they were getting better and better as we play. Like if they did this every day, they'll be great because they can fly, they can jump, and they're, I mean, they can play the game. It just inspired me just seeing how driven they were and how excited they were and happy they were to be a part of this. And I see them taking full advantage of it. Everybody was having fun, but it was more than just fun to them. I think they understood the capabilities of what has potential sure. to be. Oh, it's amazing because um, I always thought that we had great athletes. I mean, there's a lot of Jamaicans playing in the league, you know, myself, Nico, footballers in America, a lot of Jamaican descendants, a lot of island Caribbean descendants. So it's just great to see that our, here in Jamaica, which we have never had in organized football, anything, to see that with Zachary and Nicole, what they're doing, is just a beautiful thing with the Touchdown Project. And I'm glad to be a part of it, you know what I mean? It's just it's exciting for me because I know how strong Jamaicans are and how fast they are and the determination that we have as Jamaicans. <laughs> I see a lot of champions. Well, actually, I'm glad it's over because I think I've pulled a muscle in my back. <laughs> I haven't thrown a football in maybe 30 years. <laughs> and you know what the end result is? The W. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was a good time. Um, you know what I mean? The green team should have won. I think there was a little biased refereeing you over there. Me? Coach it wasn't about Big. It wasn't, no, no. For him, <laughs> but I definitely wanted no, to win. No, no, no. No, we wanted to win, like I said. Oh, yeah, I haven't thrown a football in here. I'm not going to do this. He's jumping up and swinging his arms. So hey, what are you doing? Like, why no, are you no, 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 no. I'm trying to trying to assist you on the way down. I'm but telling you, you I'm trying to why? catch you. Why are you trying to catch you? Well, old? I mean, I, you was just in the air, I have and ability. I was gonna, you know what? I was gonna come make a play on the ball, but you I know what? A, I have I ability. Said, I said, you know what? Let me save him. He doesn't. Let he doesn't let need me save he don't, him. You know, he want this pressure from me right now. So I wanted to save him, assist him on the way down. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? Like you say, back pull and all that. Oh, you know, yeah. it's a, a, little, a little fragile at this moment. So I wanted to assist him. You know what I get? I bust the nose, a little eye thing. And I was oh, like, all right, cool. All right, that's how we moving. Truth. <laughs> excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> After the break, farewell party at the house. It's the final day of our trip around Jamaica. 
This morning, I picked up my son from the airport. We went to Spanish Town. We played football. And now it's time for us to have a little party. Blues away. I give thanks to Nico for being with I on this special day. All night and all day, Rasta takes I blues away. I want to big up all my extended family. We have been living this journey together, and it was a blessing to have them around, starting with my brethren, Marlon. My highlight in this trip, I would have to say, it was Stush in the Bush. I really enjoyed the food there, the whole ambiance of, you know, that farm-to-table situation. That was really my highlight, because the food was excellent. Just being out there in the bush, going into the farm, seeing where the things were planted, actually digging up and that was really my highlight you know I, I really enjoyed that a lot Dwight is really an outstanding person for what he's doing and how he's moving forward I really really love what he's doing at Source Farm but he's not only doing it at Source Farm but he's bringing it out more to the general public by having this farmers market where you can get all of these great vegetables and stuff to buy also another highlight was Ruan dancing in a dance because you know you've never ever seen Ruan dancing in the dance, or dancing anywhere like that, and really getting into it, learning dance moves, moving with the crowd, and you know, just being himself, Ruan. That was another highlight for me. <laughs> well, oh my gosh, man, Jeez. Driving is another thing, because you know, Ruan and I don't say eye to eye at all times about the driving. Marlon, why would you speed up in the corner? There's something. Always. Mother, you use this judge. Shifting the gear, right? Or something. Watch this hole. But that's Ro, and that's me, and we just. You're following GPS. <laughs> we'll go back and forth forever about the same thing because. Not only did where you get your license, why are you following a GPS in Jamaica anyway? Who does that? You're Jamaican. I think I'm a great driver, and he thinks he's a great driver. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You couldn't do <laughs> You really couldn't turn around. <laughs> go, Marlon, go, go, go. Where's Wildman? Where's Wildman? Taking care of the wild and fire, as usual. First of all, skillfully, all are ill fully. Yeah, and you should know a wild man from wild land. Yeah, man, up a Sherry's farm, and yes, saw the river there. Really great. And the jumping. <laughs> you see, on the fire. Yeah, so I was diving. Yeah, we never want to stop here. Yeah? I didn't need to go to the next bigger water. But what happened? The rain and the place gets so chilly. I gotta change and yeah, I couldn't go. <laughs> you see me, but you see, you wear the pudding cell fast, innit? You can't get it cold. You get it at all, I stick up in your top. I am hot. Yeah, man, pudding layout, so brother. Yes, man, old fashioned style. The light in the sky, oh, it's open wide. The presence is great. Does all the fit life goes on? Black fire, always blessing us up with fresh fish. Giac, big up yourself, my brother. You didn't see much in the series, but Comrade was always there all the time in the shadows, <laughs> watching over the crew. Ah, the moment I'm talking about, it's a moment I have my son around you guys. We're having a good time, and he was like, Daddy, it's the first time I've been on camera. First time I seen all these things happening. Uh, I felt so good for him. And it was good time spending around all you guys, working together. So hope you guys have a good time around me. I may be giving a little trouble now and then. <laughs> it is, it's not fucking funny. I hope it's not anything to bother anyone away. But good time. Love it. Love you guys. And of course, there's no party without Bali. <laughs> you never know, I mean, like, the Blue Mountains, the stories, the hardship, I mean, like, the pain, the sorrow, bro. I mean, as cheesy as they would say, I mean, I was just a fucking natural mystic blowing through the hill. You, you can't pay for that shit. Sorry, no, did you? This is what this is what we live for. This is where our heart resonates. This is where love resonates. Every tree, every plant. This is what this is what it's all about. It's not really like that thing. You know, we have a relationship between all of us, you know. It's Roy, it's Steve, it's Kim, it's Sida, it's Z. you know. We all have our own integral relationship. It's our own ecosystem, and we like who we like around us. 
who I bring is comfort in. The one just like who they bring around. You can never really explain that. Those things are, you know, they play themselves out. I love the vibration of creating. Every day we're on, it's not a set. Yeah, it's not like, you know, like we're not thinking, we're like, that one falls into the next one. This one, it's not really a thinking like that. It's like, how do we all flow together? <laughs> And now, Josephi. What's the name of the track again? Should I? Joe, here's the song, bro. My spiritual brother, master of ceremony. My greatest highlight was the persecution of my character. They set me up. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, hey. Nobody go up, man. Nobody go up. Joe, Joe. Breathe. Were you at yoga today, Joe? <laughs> they set me up. They got the fat man Buddha god over here. Going against athletes, ex athletes. I mean, I'm an ex athlete, but I'm 60 pounds heavy, so give them 40. I'll give them 30, and I bet you I get them. Not half of what I am. Sound fair? But that was a great highlight moment. People were waiting, my friends that told them about it. They were like, yo, when is the episode? I gotta see it. You guys were doing a contest against. I said, they got me. Yeah. The Buddha God was out there, the fat man. Scoop was doing the splash. They had me. Wobbly on my leg, but it was it was a moment for me and you know just being in the ocean I miss being able to just surf. Stay tuned for the grand finale. Let's go run the trip. Yay. Let's resume our program and enjoy our final party. Shall we? In Tough Gang live now. I will say the original Dennis Brown. Now we have Naomi Cohen. See? Cohen. I did hey. say, yes, indeed. Should I have faith in you? Should I put my trust in you? Yes, and should you let me down? Uh -huh. Should I flirt around? Uh -huh. Why should I think this way? Thinking that you're going away. There ain't no way we'll stay That's right. together anymore. Am I, I to go on, on now, now living this way? way. Acting like a child so young and gay. Watch it now. <laughs> so you, you don't you know why would this to be wrong? <laughs> so you, you don't you know. know how it feels to be rogue. <laughs> oh, whoa, no. whoa, 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 boy. Listen, by the way, just so you don't know, it's not all the time she do this, but for Lion G Earthstrong. Well, that night was just a regular yard vibes night, a Jamaican night where we just hang out with friends and we try to just enjoy the moment and not worrying about our stress and problems, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I saw you guys and I was like, yo, I have to make you full joy the whole moment. Because that's memories, you know? It was a magical moment, you know, because Ron, son of Bob Marley, you know? Him visiting my place is like, you know, Prince visiting the other Prince's place, you know. It's a wonderful moment, and um, Ron is a fun-loving guy, you know. You have to love him. His vibes and energy, everything is just up. Big up, baby G. Thank you. Now, back to regular program, Nomi. Put on some other Everybody has to give it up for Ron. Ah, oh, fuck that. <laughs> No, no, no. Can I say something no, nice? I, I'm no, gonna say something nice. No, no, no. Nobody's gonna give it up to me because at the next minute they give it up to me, I'm gonna fucking roar. Okay, well, <laughs> don't. Well, no, I'm gonna say something. No, I'm right? Right. No, I, say say so. So. I just moved back to Jamaica from Toronto in May. And the reason why I moved back was because of legacy. Legacy. That was a word in my mind and in my heart. Sure. So I was like, reggae is my legacy, and Jamaica is part of that. See, one thing I admire about you is that. The work you've done, and I've seen that you've done. I'm doing, doing not done. I doing, not continuing done. to do, yeah, sure. is Go not ahead. only carrying on legacy, but diversifying that. That's very remarkable, because a lot of people will stay in a comfort but zone. But guess what? It's no comfort zone for me, because I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined my moment. I you know. No, but you know Yeah, what? you know what I mean? No, no true, but seriously, true. no, no yes, it's, it's legit, legit. Rastafari, right. It's true ones and ones, you know what I mean, through my brethren and thing where I learned certain discipline, right? The thing I love about what you talk about determination and legacy 
you must know the root of what is it that you're doing. You're right. seeing? So like you come to your root again, you tap into your soul. I'm gonna give thanks to my brethren then because you know, my brethren, my son, my friends, all my friends and loved ones, brothers and sisters, you know, I'm just trying, said we, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. We're Gongites and we forever go upward. upward. <laughs> that's him, that's his roots. That's why he is who he is and it helped him. And you see it in, every, in everything he does, everywhere he moves, how he treats people and how real he is because he come from real beginnings, humble beginnings. When you go back there, they see the real love. I was happy for him to go back and see it and talk to the people. And, you know, I hope, hope we go more, I hope we see more. And as for me, the experience was just, it was magical. And that's and that's what it is, it's real life. That's what he did, you know what I'm saying? So it, he, he was always, he was always, he was always wrong mind, never changed. So I ain't go back, people really see it. Just like we went, and we just pulled up. It wasn't like we telling them, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we just pulled up on him. And that's how, and that's how, oh, the Rowan's here talk, you know what I'm saying? Kind of something you see in the movie. But it's real life. It's on TV, but it's real life, bro. <laughs> it's bittersweet, but the endings lead to new beginnings, and their journey never really ends. But we have ever living life. I feel blessed for every single minute I got to spend traveling around this beautiful island, meeting new people, learning, laughing, feeling the vibe, the music, and I'll cherish these memories for a long, long time. There's a natural vibration in Jamaica, something you can't really explain, but you can definitely feel. I hope the world will get to see Jamaica for what it really is. The natural beauty, the sustainability, the land, the culture. We Jamaicans are proud people, competitive people, but we're also passionate and we love to love. So I give thanks to the most high, Ja Rastafari. Respect. And thank you, man. You guys have been excellent. I mean, it is bittersweet. And I, and I just want to see it keep building, you know, because a great, I mean, I get, we get the goosebumps talking. <laughs> but it's a good thing and we're happy. We're happy with, to work with you guys. You know what I mean? And thank you. Thank see? you. Respect, man. <laughs> Respect. Oh, man, it should have been the last day for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Joseph, take a picture of us. Brothers, can we take a team picture together?